Types of teachers in school. Teachers, man. A societal role that is granted to those who want to help educate and shape the future of every child around the world. Now, I'm gonna be honest here. There are a lot of good teachers out there, and there are some teachers that just got me questioning about how they even got hired in the first place. So today, we're gonna be discussing the different types of teachers that you may encounter in your academic career and my personal experiences with them. All right, first, let's start off with a nice teacher. Now, the nice teacher, there is literally nothing to hate about them. They are just an absolute kind soul. Like, you can tell by the way that they teach that they actually enjoy their job and have a great passion for educating and guiding the youth. Like, I remember like way, way, way back in kindergarten, I had a teacher, let's call her Miss Sandy. Now, Miss Sandy was actually the GOAT kindergarten teacher. She had amazing patience when it came to teaching children. Like, I'm gonna be honest here, a lot of kids when they're younger, they're just straight up gremlins. Like, little devils on the loose just causing mischief and issues for the teacher. But whenever some disruption like this would occur in class, Miss Sandy would just defuse the situation in a very professional way where it wouldn't escalate to a bigger problem by talking to the kid and acknowledging their frustration or issue, which is the correct way to do it. And in general, she made learning actually fun. Like, I remember I was actually enjoying learning stuff in school, like my damn ABCs, counting numbers, my addition and subtraction, and everything else. Like, she was an example of someone who I think had a real passion for teaching and actually enjoyed their time working for their degree and through teacher's college. And as I progressed onto the first grade, I also had another nice teacher named Miss Mittens. Now, Miss Mittens had all the same qualities that Miss Sandy had, but they were just a few things that she did that stood out. Like, I remember in class, one of the kids was able to get a separate desk all to themselves away from the other kids that we call an office. And this was because they had some sort of, like, learning problem or something like that. And I saw that, and I also wanted one for myself, so I asked Miss Mittens if I was able to get one of my own, and she allowed me to have one too. Hold up, looking back now, uh, I don't think it was a good thing that I got an office. But anyways, no other kid in the class got one after that, and it made me feel special, you know? Like, literally. <laughs> But another thing that she did that I remembered was that she taught me how to tie my shoelaces. Now, I'm gonna be honest here. I'm a slow learner and it takes me more time to learn things and get the hang of it. So I didn't know how to tie my shoes and I was really struggling trying to learn how to tie them at recess one time. And Miss Mittens walked up to me and gave me the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to tie them. She spent the entire 15 minutes of the recess teaching me the world-famous double bunny ear method until I got it myself. And I was just so happy that I could tie my shoes by myself and not have to ask someone to tie them for me. And man, thinking back now, Wow, that was just a wholesome memory, bro. Like, I should send her an email just to thank her for teaching me how to tie my shoes. Like, she's so real for that. Now, let's talk about the dumb teacher. Now, dude, the dumb teacher will just have you questioning how the hell they even got hired in the first place. Like, how did they even pass college and get their degree? Like, it had to be some degree they bought off of Timu. And that's what I thought my grade 9 visual arts teacher did, because she was just really bad at huh? teaching. Like, bro, she would just constantly lose students' work. Like, as a teacher, your job is to make sure you stay organized and, you know, maybe not lose students' work that you assigned? Like, dude, this was an art class, so people would spend a lot of time on their assignments putting their all into their piece of art just for us to lose it and say, oh, sorry, I checked the art rack and it wasn't there. But I literally remember physically walking over to the art rack and putting my work there yesterday. Well, it's either you find it, redo it, or I'm gonna give you a zero. Bruh. Like, some kid could paint up some heat on their canvas like the Starry Night painting and her ass would still find a way to lose it. And I remember this one time we were assigned to make an animal cutout using plexiglass, tape, and scissors. And I cooked up a pretty good drawing of a bunny, you know, for my standards. So I put it on the art rack with my name written on it and everything so it could get marked. So the next time I have art class, she hands out rubrics of the marks to every student and I didn't get oh. one back. So I asked her after, um, excuse me, miss, I didn't get my mark back. I handed in my animal cutout yesterday. Oh, I couldn't find yours on the rack. But I literally handed one in. I remember it clearly. Well, it's not here, so just redo it. I'll give you till the end of the week to hand it in. Oh. Sure. Bro, I was fuming, man. Like, she lost it, bro. Like, it was her fault, and I'm getting done dirty. So I had to redo it while she moved on to the next lesson, and it was just so ass. Because not only was I behind, my rabbit ended up looking even more shit than the last one. Like, nah, bro. I probably got a shit mark on it, too. And apparently, she was notorious in the school for losing kids' work all the time. Like, she was a serial killer, but for losing homework. Yeah, fuck her. Now we gotta talk about the substitute teacher. Now, the substitute teacher, it's really a coin flip. Like, you can have a super chill substitute teacher, or a shitty one. But I feel like most substitute teachers are very chill, especially if they're like a younger teacher. If your sub is like a 60 year old lady that looks like the grandma from Spongebob who wanted chocolate, hey man, chances are she's gonna be a pain in the ass to deal with. But one thing that happens way too often is that bro, right when you notice that your regular teacher isn't in the class and that it's a substitute teacher, you already know that class is gonna be fun. Cause they don't teach lessons, it's usually just a free period to do homework or watch a movie, aka fuck around with your friends. Cause like man, substitute teachers just really don't have any power 
learn from the student's eye. Like, most students would be doing anything but their homework when they had a substitute teacher. Students would be talking with their friends, they would be on their phones watching something or playing video games, and someone to ask to go to the bathroom, which is just another way of saying that they want to roam around the halls with their friends. And shit, some students would even just dip from school and head on home. Like, no one cared about the substitute teacher at all, because they really couldn't do much but just sit and let things happen. Because they're only there for the one day quick bag, so most of them didn't mind it too. But sometimes you'd have that one supply teacher that just observes all the chaos that occurs during the class, and they stay silent the entire time until the end of the class when all the students leave. And that's when they write up a wicked note of all the chaotic events that just went down, and the names of students who were misbehaving thinking they got them. And oh man, when your regular teacher sees a note that they left, man, you already know the entire class was about to get flamed in next class. Um, so I got a very bad note from the substitute teacher. You know, never in my 30 years of teaching has a substitute teacher left a note this bad. You guys are in grade 8. You all know better than this. Justin, Jamie, head outside to the hallway. I'm gonna have a chat with you two about your behavior. Bro, swear to god, man, when this would happen, my friend and I would just be looking at each other while our teacher was talking, and we'd just be holding in our last for dear life, bro. Shit was too funny. Next, we got the chill teacher. Now, the chill teacher is an absolute goat. Like, he doesn't take his job as serious as other teachers, which is great, because it makes him more relatable. Because those teachers that be on your ass 24-7 and have strict rules just make class way less fun. Unlike the chill teacher, he doesn't give a shit. Like, he'll straight up tell the class, All right, class, so I'm not gonna constantly chase you guys down for late or unfinished homework. So you either take the due diligence to do your homework and end it in, or you get a zero. Capiche? Like, this was my grade 12 chemistry teacher. He was chill as hell. He would talk to students normally and not put on that whole teacher act. And he was also known in the school for being a DJ, which is cool as hell. He would DJ at school events and other events outside of school, and in his classes, I would just straight up be on my phone playing Battle Cats for the entire class while listening to music. And he was cool with it. He never once approached me to tell me to put my phone away or anything. And it's not like I wasn't doing my work. I was still getting my shit done. I wasn't like a delinquent at all. And he was also known for allowing students who failed the class to still pass the class. So he would just bump up their marks to 50% at the end of the semester. Which, dude, what an absolute G. Round of applause for the chill teacher. Now we have the hot teacher. Now, A. A, this is my favorite teacher out of the bunch. For, uh, no specific reason, really. Like, they're just so nice, kind, helpful, smart. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. My fault, guys. I was getting a little hypnotized. But, bro, there's just something about the hot teacher that'll have you paying extra attention to her lessons. Like, I'm talking about putting your all into focusing on what they're saying, wanting to help out with errands, and staying after class for extra help. Hey, you already know, man. All of a sudden, I turn into Lightning McQueen and I speed on over to the scene to help out. And man, back in like grade 5 and 6, I had this teacher for French class. Let's call her, uh, Madame Sylvie. Now, holy shit, bro. Madame Sylvie was just so fine, man. She wore glasses, wore red lipstick, and had that tiny French accent when she spoke. Bro, grade 5 me was mesmerized and excited for French class always. Because not only was she bad, she also made learning French fun. Like, she would let us play bingo in class with French words and give strawberries to whoever won. Like, bro, that just added to it, you know? I feel like every other dude in the grade was crushing on her hard, for sure. And dude, whenever you had a hot substitute teacher, man, like you'd expect substitute teachers to be like old grannies. But that one time you get a hot substitute teacher, dude, I'll start caring about them and respecting them straight up. I won't be a menace in that class. But you only get to see them for that day and they're gone forever. And dude, at my high school, there was a teacher who taught co-ed gym class. And bro, she looked like a straight up model, bruh. Like she had no business being a teacher at our school. Like on some glazing shit, she should have been on the runway for Paris Fashion Week or on Vogue magazine. But bro, I didn't take co-ed gym in grade 12. That was my biggest mistake yet. And dude, I just gotta talk about my grade 12 <laughs> physics teacher too, man. Let's call her Miss Singh. Now, bro, first day of physics class, I walked into the class, I saw her teacher, and I was like, damn, why is she kinda bad though? Like, since the first day of physics class, I knew, man. And you best believe I was given my full attention during those lessons. It's Mr. MVP! And bro, I remember one time at lunch, I was talking to one of my friends. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, our physics teacher is kinda bad, bro. Hey, you think so too? Hey man, you got taste for real, but uh, yo, back off, she's mine, bro. Nah, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. I had a crush on her first, bro. Oh, hell nah, I was a day one missing soldier. You gotta back off, dude. Yo, what the hell, me too? <laughs> you know, we would joke around about this for the next few months until we found out she was married and had a kid. Bro. Ah!
It should have been me, not him! It was over, really. Like, how could I compete at all? Like, I had a chance in the first place. But you guys think that stopped me from having a crush on her? I would treat her better, honestly. Psh. Like, I got so many better qualities than her husband. Like, one, I'm goaded. Two, I worked at a restaurant as a buster and made millions. Three, I was broke. Like, I definitely could have treated her better, guys. Come on. Okay, I was just coping, but hey, at least I got her to sign my yearbook. That's a dub, right, guys? Right? <laughs> Types of kids in high school. So you either really loved high school or absolutely despised it and never want to think about it ever again. But regardless of that, you meet a lot of interesting people during your high school experience. So let's discuss the types of kids in high school. Okay, first up we got the smart kid. Okay, so the smart kid, they're always completing their homework on time and always paying attention in class and making sure they write down the notes to do well in their classes. And generally maintain an average of A- minus and above throughout all of their classes. Like bro wants a successful and bright future for themselves and their future family. Most of the time, these kids are also very chill and will help you with homework and give you answers to help you succeed too. All in all, these kids are definitely people you would want to make friends with to help make your high school experience easier. Next, we have the athlete. So the athlete, they're on some sort of sports team for the school and usually pull up in Nike tech fleeces or Adidas tracksuits to school. And they be pulling, you know? These kids are also the most tryhard kids in gym class. Like, you'd be in gym class playing a game of basketball and these kids would be playing like it's the NBA Finals pushing each other and like god damn we're in ninth grade my guy but i feel like athletes get a bad reputation from disney movies and shows for being dumb and bullies towards other kids but not all of them follow that stereotype a small bunch of them are chill and genuine people who are actually smart as well but you'll still always have the stereotypical athletes at your school who are just and just make other kids high school experience a nightmare to deal with the next kid is the class clown so the class clown he's always cracking jokes in class and making the whole class laugh these kids would always be having beef with the teacher or just enjoyed interacting with them and would go back and forth with them saying the most random stuff Okay class, today we're gonna be dissecting frogs. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Like, what if the frog jumps out of the pan while I'm trying to dissect it? Uh, okay, odd question. Uh, the frog is dead, so I don't think you would have to worry about that. Yeah, but sir, you never know for certain, you know? But sometimes the class clown makes a joke and no one laughs and the whole class just becomes silent. Okay class, today we're gonna be doing- <laughs> Yo, my fault. The next kid is the band kid. So I'm sure we're all aware of the stereotype that band kids live up to, which is that they're really cringy. Yeah! These kids also just be smelling funky too, like take a shower, put on some deodorant or cologne, and stop stinking up the place. Like these types of kids definitely browse reddit way too much and watch a lot of Call Me Carson and PewDiePie in their free time. These kids also just love to reference memes in like every single sentence they say, which is so cringe. Yo dude, Miss Frizzle is like the worst teacher ever man, why is she so mean? Yo I know right, she's definitely not poggers. Bruh. What did you say? Poggers, you don't know what that means? No, what the hell? Oof, you're just a normie. This is not an epic gamer moment. I feel bad for you. I'm just gonna T-pose away from you now. Bro, shut the f- Next, we have the homework gatekeeper. So this kid just gatekeeps the answers for homework and assignments. Like, I'm talking about those math practice worksheets that the teacher doesn't even mark, dude. Like, I would understand if it were like a presentation or an essay because you don't want to risk getting caught for plagiarism, but it usually plays out like you wouldn't understand one question and you would ask the kid closest to you for the answer and they tell you everything but the answer to the question ah oh, crap how did i do this question hey dude do you know the answer to this question oh uh okay just go to your textbook and flip to page 435 can you just give me the answer to it though okay so just solve for here then plug in bro just give me the answer bro it's not even marked man next we have the late kid this kid just always shows up late to class like every single day consistently but you'd be in class and halfway through the class doing like an experiment experiment or like in the middle of a lesson and that kid would just walk right in and the teacher would stop him and tell him to go to the office to get like a late slip like this kid was definitely doing some side quest or something because why are you coming in midway through class 
You know what? I'm not gonna lie, I was this kid, but only for my morning classes because I either always woke up late or I stayed in bed chilling playing Clash of Clans or watching YouTube videos for way too long. And I would enter my morning class like 20 to 30 minutes late all the time. And everyone would just stare me down as I entered the class as I walked all the way to my seat. Hey, at least I got some extra sleep. Next we have the Menace. So the Menace, he's rocking like some black Air Forces, some gray sweatpants, and a black puffer jacket. And he's listening to way too much young boy and King Vaughn. This is a type of kid you don't want to mess with. He's always up to no good because the Menace is always getting into fights with other kids. And some of them, uh, let's just say don't only use their fists to fight and bring objects to school with them. Yeah, you know what I mean. And also avoid stepping on their shoes because something bad's gonna happen to you if you do. Yo, Jonathan, yo! Oh, yo, dude, I'm so sorry, man. I didn't mean to, like... Oh, so you just want to step on my shoes? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so... I'm sorry. Get him up. Let him get up. Let him get up. The next kid is the nerd. So the nerd, he plays a lot of video games and watches a lot of anime or Marvel movies. There's really two types of nerds, cause a lot of nerds are really cool people, but a majority of the time they're just annoying and are complete suck ups for the teacher. Like the teacher could have forgotten to assign homework for the class and the nerd would be reminding the teacher like, Um sir, what about the homework? Like, bro, really, man? You couldn't have stayed silent about it and instead you want to ruin it for the rest of us? Come on, man. Also, a rare batch of these kids like to purchase and collect a lot of uh, anime merchandise to use in their free time. So yeah, that's a thing to keep in mind. The next kid is the weirdo. So the weirdo, he's doing like the most out-of-pocket stuff for no reason. These kids love to show people like the weirdest things they found in their photo library. Like one time I was in a technology class and this guy showed me a video of someone, uh, injuring themselves like what the hell man why why did you show me this and why do you have that saved on your phone like thanks for ruining my entire day and making me scarred for the rest of the week also another thing to add is like some of these kids be beating it in class like there was this one kid at my school who literally in the middle of english class started beating it and like he finished in his hand like what the hell he even touched the doorknob with that hand like bro what's wrong with that guy some of my friends told me about this story and i just didn't believe it for the longest time but it actually happened like what processes through your brain to even consider doing that like you're not real man next we have the k-pop kid so the k-pop kid has an unhealthy obsession with either bts twice or blackpink and that's really all they talk about they just live breathe and eat k-pop some of these kids are way too obsessed to the point that they would commit crimes just to meet their k-pop idol like i would go on instagram and be swiping through stories and the k-pop kid would post like 20 slides of like a bts member and would be like oh my god he's so cute need him in my life like stuff like that and i'm like okay like we didn't need to know about that also some of these people like to write like fan fiction about about like the members of the groups and man i'm not gonna even dive in on the weird stuff these people cook up like some things are just best to be kept to yourself rather than shared to others or else people will just make fun of you hey y'all come look at this And finally, the last kid we'll be discussing is the wannabe rapper. So the wannabe rapper, you know, he's trying to be a rapper. He's dropping songs on SoundCloud and stuff, dressing like a rapper, all dripped in name brands and designer. But they're most likely reps. But like, I swear like 95% of these people be cooking up some trash music in the studio on some like 2017 type beat with like the worst flow and they'll always find a way to plug their SoundCloud no matter the situation. Hmm, you know what? I'll give them a try. All this money on me, make me wanna poop. This nigga is trash. Oddly specific things we all do. You know, there are nearly 8 billion people inhabiting our planet, and it's weird to think that each individual out of that 8 billion live their own different and separate life. Like, there's just no way, bro. Some of y'all gotta be computer generated. But there are specific actions that we all do and think behind closed doors when we're at home that we all just share in common. So let's just dive into the oddly specific things we all do. Alright, let's start off with calling with the boys. Now, we all just love kicking back and hopping on the game with the boys, whether you play on console, PC, hell, even mobile. I won't judge, but it's just a nice way to unwind and chill after a long day of school or work. Like, you can't really go wrong with it. And whether you play for a few hours or multiple hours, at some point, the gaming session with the boys always has to come to an end. And it usually ends like this. Come on, come on, shoot him, shoot him! 
I got him! Yo, let's go! GG's, bro. Yeah, GG's. That was a crazy game, bro. Nah, for real. Shit, what time is it? 1 a.m.? Damn, dude. I gotta sleep, man. Aight, bro. We running it back tomorrow, though? Yeah, of course, bro. We gotta get more dubs. Aight, night, bro. Night. Like, bro, every time I say to my boys, yo, I'ma go to sleep. I never head straight to sleep. Like, my ass is capping. I'm doing anything but sleeping. I'm always just lying in my bed watching TikTok, YouTube, or just vibing out to some music for the next three hours to like 4 a.m. And sometimes, depending on how I'm feeling, I'll straight up do a workout and pump out some push-ups and bicep curls. Or a lot of the times, I'll head on downstairs to the kitchen and have a late night feast of whatever it is that's in the pantry and fridge. Like, I can't be the only one that does this. And speaking about food, we gotta discuss the fridge dilemma. Now, bro, when you just have zero culinary skills and you don't want to order takeout because these apps be making up some bullshit extra fees out of their ass to where the total cost an arm and a leg, you're gonna head on over to the fridge to check what you can eat. Like, bro, the amount of times when I was younger and my parents were at work while I was just left at home to fend for myself was too many. Like, I would be posted up at the fridge just constantly opening it and closing it, praying that something would magically appear so I could eat it. Like, I really thought a five-star meal personally prepared by Jamie Oliver was gonna appear out of nowhere. Like, my ass was coping so hard. And it would always just end with me grabbing a container of almonds and just going ham on those and munching up like a quarter of the container. Next, we gotta talk about picking your nose. Now, dude, let's just keep it 100% 100 emoji, alright? Right? Like, we all pick our nose. Like, don't lie, man. It's a safe space here, alright? Like, I know for a fact right when you wake up in the morning, your nose is absolutely stuffed like an OF girl with boogers and snot. And you have to head on over to the bathroom sink and pick them out or blow them out, or you do it in the shower. Like, I hate people who just lie and say, Ew, you pick your nose? That's so gross. I would never. Bruh. Like, bro, these people are straight up cappers. Like, I know for a National Geographic fact that they also pick their nose. Because there's just no way in hell you're walking around with all these disgusting, crusty, gooey boogers in your nose. Like, how can you even breathe, bruh? Like, there's no way you're inhaling your boogers to the point where you're eating them, so there's just only one other way. You pick your nose, like, stop the cap. I'm sick and tired of people lying about this. But on the other hand, if you pick your nose in public, hey, yo, that's a whole different story. You're one nasty dude. Like, I'd rather be caught dead in public than have someone catch me picking my nose. Keep that shit at home, please. Now we gotta discuss the urinal dilemma. Now, this is more so for the dudes watching. Like, whenever you're in a public setting and you gotta pee and you pull up to the public bathroom looking like this, which urinal are you picking? If you pick this one, then hey yo, why do you want to be that close to another man while you're urinating? But if you chose this one, then you're correct. This right here is the sweet spot. I don't know, as dudes, we all be thinking about this every time we head on over to the public bathroom while the urinals are occupied. Like, there's been a few times where I was in the midst of emptying the lemonade tank and some random dude just chooses to pick the urinal right next to me. Like, bro, there are unoccupied urinals right there. Why can't you pick the farthest one away from me? Like, what are you gaining from peeing next to me, bro? Now we gotta talk about things we all do in the shower. Now, every Every time I'm about to take a shower, I always make sure I spend at least five minutes carefully picking and queuing up songs. Like, I take my shower tunes very seriously. Like, more serious than picking my major in college. That wasn't a joke, by the way. And right when you queue up the songs, you really know you're about to get turned in the shower. Like, I'd be having straight up solo concerts in the shower like I'm headlining for Rolling Loud. Like, I'd be banging my head so hard, I feel like my neck's gonna snap. Or I'm gonna get a concussion with how much I'm moving my head. Like, my brain's probably on its last legs getting bounced around in my head like a ping pong ball. And after I tire myself out for my solo concert to my imaginary fans because I'm schizophrenic, I start forming my hands into a cup and I start collecting water and dropping it on the bathtub floor. Like, I don't know why, but it's just so fun and satisfying to do this. Just hearing the sounds of the water filling up in your hand and hearing it splash on the floor, ooh, it's just such a crispy sound. And after this, I would just let the water run down my fingers and pretend I got water powers like a waterbender. Like, my ass really thought I was Katara. Now we gotta talk about Wednesday. Now, this just can't only be me who does this, but whenever I'm trying to spell out the word Wednesday, my inner monologue always sounds out the word as Wednesday. Like, there's no way I'm the only person who does this. Like, bro, realistically, why is the word Wednesday spelled like that? Like, Wednesday should be spelled like this. W-H-E-N-S-D-A-Y. Wednesday. Like, whoever made the word Wednesday spell like this was smoking some of that good lettuce. Because there's no way you just make Wednesday spell like that. Like, the amount of times I've caught myself saying Wednesday is too many. Yo, James, you trying to link up on Wednesday to get some eats? 
Bro, there's no way I just- A little off topic, but there are just too many words that are spelled in the most unnecessary ways. And I might just have to step up to the plate and show these wash boomers that are six feet under who made the English language how it's done. Now we gotta speak on reading. Now, I'm not too fond of reading. I don't really like doing it because in my opinion, it's just pretty boring, especially novels. And my reading comprehension levels are still at like a diary of a wimpy kid in Captain Underpants level. But besides that, in school, of course I was forced to read some novels in English class. And we'd have designated times during our class for like 30 minutes to have silent reading. And a lot of times when I'm reading, I'm not actually reading. Let me explain. Like, I'm reading the words, but my brain is not actually picking up on what I'm reading. And he's sort of just existing and zoning out into space. So a lot of the times, I could read like 5 pages of a book, and then I put the book down and try to remember what happened in the last 5 pages. And I just don't have a single clue on what just transpired in those pages. So then I gotta reread what I just quote unquote read, and it just becomes like a cycle. Maybe I'm just on the spectrum. Now we gotta talk about using your fingers when doing math. Now let's just all be real here. Unless your parents force you to do like extracurricular math studying like Kumon or Khan Academy, you're probably not the best at math. Now I wasn't the best at math, so of course I'd be using my fingers to calculate shit when it was needed. Like we learned how to use our fingers to count back in kindergarten and my ass to this day is still using that method. Like it's just unbeatable. Like the amount of times I use my fingers to count during a math test in high school is insane. Like the people around me probably thought I had some sort of brain deficiency whipping out the fingers like it's still kindergarten. But like man, mental math is just too hard. Like people who could do a quadratic formula question in their head? Like bruh, how? Now we gotta talk about eating while watching YouTube. Now when I just have an absolute banger meal in front of me, I also just gotta have a banger video to watch while eating this scrumptious meal. So my ass will scroll 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 through my subscriptions box and YouTube recommendation section till I find a banger video to watch while eating. And this may take like 5 minutes to 10 minutes to sometimes even 15 minutes. Like bro, by the time 15 minutes minutes has passed, my meal would've went cold already. But hey, at least I get to eat this cold meal while watching a banger YouTube video. Cause eating without YouTube gotta be like top 3 forms of torture. Now we gotta talk about jumping in front of a train. Now hold up, hold up, let me just say this, I am in no way depressed or going through anything like that. But like, every time I'm taking the subway and I'm standing close to the train platform while the train is about to arrive at the station, I don't know why, but I always get the sudden urge to just jump in front of the train. Like I don't know why bro, like same applies to when I'm crossing a street. I will out of nowhere just get an urge to jump in front of a car. Like, I know the outcome if I actually go through with it. I'ma end up on a t-shirt. Like, the intrusive thoughts are getting to me. Like, you guys think this too, right? Like, I'm not alone on this one, right? Right? Mobile games. Man, mobile games were goaded, man. Like, back in the day, I used to spend, like, an absurd amount of my time playing all these games on my iPad. Like, the mobile games today cannot compare to the OGs. And, you know, in hindsight now, I'm not very proud of spending that much time on them. But then again, a lot of memories were made from playing these games, and today, we're gonna talk about some of these OG mobile games. Alright, first let's talk about Subway Surfers. Bro, Subway Surfers is one of the goats of mobile games, man. Like, this was one of my favorites, and still is to this day. The whole premise of the game is, you're just a little dude named Jake who's running away from this fat cop and you have to collect coins and power-ups to navigate through this endless train station while avoiding obstacles. Now I was addicted to this game bro like I would be playing this game non-stop whenever I was bored and especially during school. Like I was also so sweaty at this game. I had a bunch of cosmetics, all the upgrades maxed and my score multiplier maxed and I remember hitting a high score of like 1.2 million and it was like the greatest achievement of my life at the time. Like I felt like a god and I remember going to school and flexing it to my friends like yeah I got a high score of 1.2 million on subway surfers. I'm kind of a very important person. What's your high score? Bro, you literally have no life. Shut the fuck up. Now let's talk about Temple Run. Now Temple Run is like the godfather of subway surfers. It's the same premise, but instead of a cop chasing you, it's a big ass scary demon monkey. And I remember first discovering the game when I was like eight years old and I was on the subway with my mom and I was sitting next to this dude who was playing Temple Run and I was just staring profusely at his phone the entire time he was playing without any concern that he would catch me watching his screen. He was probably weirded out by me. Like, bro, why is this dumbass kid watching me play? Like, go away. Hey yo, what the hell? Get back here. I'm not done watching. Now let's talk about Clash of Clans. Now this is the true goat of mobile games. Bro, every dude was obsessed with Clash of Clans at one point in their lives. Like, I still play that shit to this day. And I will continue playing until I catch up to the latest town on level. My base is at a nice town on level 12. And if you rush, bro, you are committing the greatest Clash of Clans sin ever. You will be forever ridiculed by every Clash player, including me. Look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the- <laughs> No, 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 no! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
But bro, I remember trying to Google how to get free gems in Clash of Clans, and I'd be directed to this sketchy ass link that apparently has a gem generator. And they'd ask you to input how many gems you want from them, and your full government name, your social security number, your credit card number. Like, they were clearly scams. And you know, younger me was a complete idiot, and I still tried to get gems even when I couldn't fill out the necessary requirements. My dumbass was doing the most just for some free gems. And then I'd be waiting in my game for the gems to appear, and they just never did. Did. My dumbass probably got a virus on our laptop from attempting to do all these gem generators, honestly. And don't get me started on Clan Wars, bro. Every dude's friend group took Clan Wars, like, serious as hell. Like, we took that shit as seriously as, like, an actual war. Like, hell, I remember I would spam message my friends on Skype or Facebook for them to attack in the Clan War, and I'd even bug them in real life. Like, I would constantly remind them to attack. I just couldn't accept defeat in a Clan War, man. Like, we needed to win. I didn't give a damn what they had going on in their life at the time. I just wanted them to attack in the war so I could get my war bonus loot. Now let's talk about Battle Cats. Now Battle Cats is a tower defense game and in Battle Cats you basically have to command this whole army of cats against this army of dogs and the goal of the game is to conquer every country in the world and eventually the entire galaxy. There's also a gacha roll system implemented into the game for you gambling addicts where you can obtain stronger cats to add to your team that come in different rarities that range from rare to uber rare. And dude the amount of hours I've sunk into this game is illegal. Like I remember first discovering the game from a friend and ever since that day battle cats was the only thing on my mind throughout the days i'd wake up play battle cats at school i play battle cats i'd come home and play battle cats and before i'd sleep i play battle cats like it was a full-blown addiction i was definitely addicted to opening cat capsules because bro it was basically gambling but instead of gaining money you're gaining cats which a nine-year-old me loved it and had no problem with it the feeling of going through your entire cat guide and seeing your entire collection of cats just gave a different type of dopamine man the next game is Angry Birds. Dude, Angry Birds was also one of the goats, man. So the whole point of Angry Birds is to launch these different types of birds with unique power-ups at these green piggies and to destroy the structures that they made. And I remember going to a family friend's house when I didn't own an iPad at the time and just running up some Angry Birds on their iPad for the entire time I was there. Those were some good times, man. And they had a bunch of spin-off games too that were great, like Angry Birds Friends, Angry Birds Space, Angry Birds Rio, Bad Piggies, and of course the best of them all. Angry Birds Star Wars. Bro, there was just something with Angry Birds and Star Wars doing collab that just hit different. Like, using all the different birds Star Wars power-ups was just so fun, man. Next, let's talk about Beat the Boss. Now, Beat the Boss, the point of the game is to just use a bunch of weapons the game gives you and to literally just beat the boss. That's the whole point. And I used to grind this game so much. I just liked using all the weapons, honestly, because every 9-year-old who played video games would be obsessed with that stuff. And I guess it was an anger outlet for when some shit would happen at school like if i didn't get picked to be on the same team as my friend in gym class or some stupid shit like that now let's talk about dragon city now dragon city i didn't play it mostly on mobile but i played it on facebook but it's still a mobile game so it still counts and in dragon city your goal is to build your island and breed dragons together to collect them and expand your island and i was grinding this game hard man like i made a facebook account with the intent to just play dragon city on it not even use it to message people and my dragon city island was stacked like it wasn't no noob island i had a bunch of cool dragons like the legendary dragon dude that was my prized possession bro and i would feed it all my food to level it up and back in the day the dragons i had were rare but now dragon city has so many dragons like the dream dragon mr beast dragon the sunday dragon like they got so many youtuber collaborations which is pretty cool hey maybe you'll see a lonely dragon sometime in the future hopefully <laughs> Now let's talk about Flappy Bird. Now Flappy Bird, man, this game had the world in a chokehold at one point, and the game was super simple. You just tap your screen and go in between these pipes, that's it. And it just took over the internet back then. Like you couldn't go a single day without seeing Flappy Bird. And as simple as the game was, it was super hard, bro. I remember raging with my friends over the game so hard. It was the rage game back then. And my high score wasn't even that good, it was like 50. But I remember the developer of the game, Dong Nguyen, bro deleted the game from the app store because of its addictive nature and over usage from the players and i respect his decision honestly because i deleted the game way before that because i hated the game but then again people are now selling phones with the og flabby bird on it for absurd prices so i might have missed a bag but let's be real ain't no one buying that shit now let's talk about plants vs zombies now plants vs zombies was such an og game man i played it on the computer but it's on the app store so it counts too and the goal of the game was to plant all these different types of plants to defeat these hordes of zombies and man i just loved 
love this game so much, man. I remember coming home from school and hopping on Plants for Zombies instantly because they had this feature called the Zen Garden where you could grow your own Plants for Zombies plants. And I would take great care of them shits. And bro, don't even get me started on the music, bro. Plants for Zombies had some banger songs, like the intro one. <laughs> And bro, the ending credit song, can't forget about that one. Man, these were the hood classics. That's that real music, man. Come back home. Now let's talk about Geometry Dash. Now Geometry Dash, bro, this game was on par with Flappy Bird, bro. This game made me throw my iPad a lot. I'm not gonna even lie. But Geometry Dash is this rhythm game where you play as this square guy and you have to complete levels while avoiding all obstacles in the way or else you'll restart from the beginning. And bro, I remember playing this shit in class on the classroom iPads when I was done my work for the day. And bro, the amount of range I had for some levels in the game is insane. I remember losing my mind trying to beat Electro Man Adventures, bro. I needed to like 4,000 attempts to beat that level. And I remember going to a restaurant with my family and I was dead ass locked in on trying to complete this level. Like I was more focused on beating the level than actually eating the food, bro. It was that serious. And when I finally beat it, I was so hyped. Like, let's go, fuck you level. But then again, I have yet to ever beat a demon level. They're just too hard, bro. And Geometry Dash's music hits, bro. Like I don't think they ever miss with their electronic music tracks. Like Stereo Madness, Deadlocked, Theory of Everything 2, Back on Track. Bro, they all hit. Personally, I'm playing them on aux with the homies. School field trips. Bro, everyone knows this, but school field trips are goaded. Like, I know a lot of these schools would make us go on some lame field trips, like to the local park, the library, or even another school. But like, you can't lie, those lame field trips still hit. Anything was better than staying inside your classroom and just the feeling of getting away from your class and walking, taking the public transport, or hopping onto the bus with your whole class just hit different thinking back on it. <laughs> I miss it, man. So today we're going to be reminiscing on one of the best things that came from school and my personal experiences with them. So whenever our teacher would announce to the whole class that we'd be going on a field trip, the entire class would start getting hyped as if Super Hot Fire dropped some nasty bars. Boom. Ooh. Bam. Oh. Bop. Bada bop. Boom. Pow. Oh! Then the teacher would hand out the forms to all of us, and when I would get home, I would instantly give it to my mom for it to sign it and give me money to pay for the field trip. And I'm not gonna lie, these schools were taxing for these school trips. Like a youngin like me back then could only afford 10 cent pixie sticks from the corner store. Why is the school taking so much money from me? I wasn't a young baller like that. But yeah, I would hand in that form and be eagerly awaiting the day of the field trip. And bro, when the field trip day came, I'd wake up like I was in some sort of Disney movie. The sun was shining, birds were chirping, I'd walk downstairs to see some delectable breakfast to eat, and then I'd be happily off to school. But when I wake up nowadays, I just want to go straight back to sleep, man. Life was just hitting different on a field trip day. And when we arrived at school, we'd be chilling in the classroom waiting for the rest of the class to arrive. And when they did, we'd leave to head over to board the school bus in a single filed line. Bro, and sometimes on these field trips, we'd be accompanied by a few of our classmates' moms, and they'd either be super chill or be straight up feds, bro. Like, they'd be on your ass at all times. Hey, get off that rock! Hey, don't wander off, stay with the group. Stop talking too loud. Shut up, bitch. Like basically anything you do, let alone breathe, these Karens will be on your ass like 12. Like goddamn, I didn't know I was playing GTA 5 with five stars on me at all times. I gotta go call Lester. Like just let me explore, man. I'm a young kid and we're like programmed to explore around and discover things. Stop being such a lame. Then let's just talk about how the school buses absolutely sucked. Now the buses, sometimes they'd be absolutely trashed with garbage everywhere, or sometimes they'd be somewhat clean if you're lucky but most of the time it was kind of disgusting and don't get me started on the smell of the school buses you know maybe i just haven't adapted to the scent of school buses because throughout my life i've probably only been on a school bus around 10 to 15 times or so because my house was close enough to the school so i could walk but dude i don't know how people handle the smell because it smells so artificial and it makes me sick to my stomach like it smells like a bunch of rubber mixed with gasoline or something but bro the amount of times I've been on a three hour bus ride somewhere 
and I'd have to deal with that stomach tearing smell is way too many. And it doesn't help that you can't even open the windows, cause the teachers wouldn't allow you to. So we'd all just be suffocating in that chemical waste air. Like swear to god, if I could, I would have pulled up with the entire gas mask just to not smell any of that. You know, I feel bad for like the students who have like motion sickness, cause like not only are they just nauseous throughout the whole bus ride, but they also have to smell that stank ass air. Like someone needs to start bringing some Febreze to school so we could start spraying it all over the bus. And something else that always bothered me was the absence of seatbelts. Like if regular cars and trucks have them, why don't school buses also have them for extra safety? Like what if you get into a car crash and you won't have a seatbelt to prevent you from flying straight ahead? Like that's just a one-way ticket to the graveyard. Alright, but enough about school buses, we all know they suck. Let's talk about some of the best field trips I've gone on, starting with a farm. Now everyone has most likely had that field trip where you guys went to a farm to spend the entire day and they were just always the best. I'm pretty sure I've gone to this farm like four times throughout the time I've been in school. It was just that goaded. Now there was a lot to do at the farm. We went picking strawberries and raspberries and in the fall we'd pick gourds and pumpkins. Our whole class went on a ride on a tractor. We explored the cornfield maze they had. We fed some farm animals and I remember I tried to feed some chickens in a pen through the fence and one of them bit my finger. Ah what the fuck? Bro, that chicken wanted the smoke from these seven-year-old hands back in the day, man. And the best thing they had had to be the haystacks. So they had this designated area where a bunch of haystacks were placed around and the entirety of my class would start playing tag on the haystacks, which is probably up there in the top 10 most fun childhood experiences. Bro, thinking back now, running and hopping onto those haystacks in the nice summer weather was just enough for my seven-year-old self, man. Oh, how the times have changed now. The next field trip we'll talk about is an 1800s village. Now, this village was basically a recreation of what villages looked like back in the day and we were also learning about pioneers in class so that's why we went on this field trip and as a kid it was really fun exploring the entire village and looking at the difference in architecture of the buildings especially with my classmates and they also had all the staff in the village dressed in the 1800s drip to help further immerse us in the realm of the 1800s and man people in the 1800s had no drip back in the day let's keep it real as like an elementary schooler i had more drip the village also also had a little zoo where we'd watch some goats, cows, and chickens just chill. Oh yeah, and the lunches we'd have on these field trips were basic as hell, like a sandwich with a juice box and an apple. But hey, they still hit, man. Overall, a pretty good field trip. Now let's talk about one of my top three favorite field trips that came from school, and it was a science center. It was basically just a big science museum that had a lot of cool stuff and activities. I've been there like way too many times back in the day, cause the school just knew it was a banger field trip, and your boy was a big Bill Nye the Science guy fans so of course it was going to be a banger trip They had so much cool stuff, like a giant Rube Goldberg machine, a rainforest section with animals and it actually had humidity like a real rainforest. They had a cave where I'd try to scare strangers in and hide from my classmates. They had this tornado machine that required you to run around in circles to form a tornado. This electric ball thing that looks like a Fortnite rift to go. And of course, like every museum, they had a gift shop. But I could never buy anything because a young lad had no money. So I would just look at all the merchandise they sold while crying on the inside. Bro, I could keep naming stuff, but we'd be here all day. Hands down, definitely a top three field trip that I've experienced in my elementary days. It was a haven for all kids to explore, play, and learn about science, which was cool and fun. The next field trip I'll discuss is an overnight island school. Now, this one was goaded. So basically, our whole class stayed over overnight at a school on an island for the duration of three days. And we basically did fun educational activities each day we were on the island. We shared dorms with another school and you already know what happens when you see another school on a field trip. Swear to god it's on site. At least that's what each student is thinking in their heads, nothing would actually happen. So just to list a few activities, we went to a haunted white house and the activity host told us scary stories. We played a game called Predator and Prey which was basically manhunt with a few extra steps. We biked around the island, we went hiking, they taught us some survival skills, we fed chickadees. We did like a photo scavenger hunt which required us to use cameras that they gave us to take pictures of things. And we had a nice relaxing night walk through the beach. Bro, they even fed us breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like let's go. Man, these were some good times. A funny thing that occurred on this field trip was when it was bedtime we had to get back to our dorms and into bed. 
bed. So I quickly went to brush my teeth and I headed back to my bed and up to the top bunk and I was ready to sleep. So I laid down and a few minutes later I hear one of my friends scream, Good night sexy people! And everyone in the dorm was laughing like crazy. We were like in the 5th grade, right? So that word was pretty funny. It was peak comedy. But yeah, he got in trouble for doing that obviously and had to talk to the teacher. Overall, Ivan School was a W field trip and I will remember it for the rest of my life. By the time I reached high school, field trips literally became extinct, bro. Like the dinosaurs. They just never appeared again, which sucks because it meant I was in the boring ass classroom more often and we couldn't experience any fun high school field trips and make more fun memories. But you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. And the moral of this video is to cherish the memories you've made on your school field trips because eventually they'll stop and you'll miss them. So cherish them while you can. School bathrooms. Man, school bathrooms have to be some sort of anomaly in our universe. Cause the absolute strangest things are going on in them. Once you step foot in the bathroom, you don't know what to expect. So let's discuss the peculiar activities that occur in the school bathrooms. First off, let's just address how disgusting school bathrooms are. Bro, once you open the door and step foot into the bathrooms, your nostrils are immediately met with a stench mixed with dookie, piss, and farts so foul that it could kill somebody. That stench has me holding my breath and and plugging my nose the majority of the time I'm in the bathroom. The bathroom floors are also always disgusting and littered with toilet paper and food wrappers. Like almost all bathrooms have these industrial sized garbage cans and you're telling me dudes can't even throw their trash into it? Like how can you miss? How's your trash even ending up on the floor, bro? Then you got the mirrors and the stalls always having engravings of drawings with either a knife or marker. Like, whose emo ass is doing all that? And don't get me started on the toilets, bro. Students be leaving the toilets looking foul, bro. You'd walk in a stall and you'd look at the toilet bowl and see it unflushed with piss, poop, a mountain of toilet paper, and blood, and doo-doo stains on the seat. Like, there's no way I'm using that stall, bro. I only went number two at school when it was an emergency. I usually always hold my poops throughout school until I got home to poop because I knew school bathrooms were nasty and it's just more comfortable going number two at home rather than in a public bathroom. But if my stomach was hurting and I felt that gut-wrenching feeling in my abdomen, you best believe I'm using the school bathroom or else I'm literally shitting myself in the middle of class. There's no way I can hold that in for the rest of the day and one time this exact situation happened to me. So I was chilling at lunch and I really needed to poo. So I went to the bathroom and opened the stall and bam! I I saw the worst sight ever imaginable. Bro, I almost puked, swear to god. I just slammed the stall shut and used another stall miles away from that one. Seeing that had me scarred for the rest of the day. I was seeing visions of the scene of the crime wherever I looked. It was bad. Bro, people need to learn how to flush, bro. Like, it's really not that hard. And even when I get to poop in a semi-queen stall, tell me why the toilet paper is always so thin. Like, I'd be damn near using an entire roll of toilet paper just for one wipe. Otherwise, that shit's gonna rip and... I mean, hey, at least I had some sort of entertainment while pooping in the form of drawings of penises on the stall doors and other drawings. <laughs> Look at the penis of the stall door. <laughs> And let's just mention the bathroom doorknob. Bro, when I would exit the bathroom, I would be doing anything but trying to touch that thing. You don't know what people are touching throughout the whole day. Our hands be contracting all sorts of bacteria as the day goes by. And you think I'm gonna open the bathroom doorknob, which is already located in one of the most disgusting places on earth? Oh, hell nah. So I would just either grab a bunch of toilet paper and use that as a barrier between my hand and the doorknob, or I'd use my feet to open the door, or I'd use my favorite method of all all time waiting. Now the art of waiting takes a lot of skill and precision into it. So let me just educate you guys and bless you guys all with the methods that will help prevent you from touching that disgusting doorknob. So I would just stand there and wait so another student comes into the bathroom and I'd be like, yo, thanks bro. And I'd walk right out of there. That's it. That's the whole method. Kind of an asshole move, but you know, you got to think smarter, not harder. Now let's discuss what the weirdos would do in the school bathrooms. So you got them bathroom menaces that would just terrorize people taking a deuce. Like these people would be banging on the stall doors, splashing water over the stalls, closing the lights, and doing anything to make people taking a shit feel uncomfortable. Here's an example. Been so long since I caught someone. Mm, so you wanna play the quiet game with me, huh? Well, I'm always here. Now let me in! 
these type of dudes would also wet up some toilet paper and roll it up into balls and throw them at the ceiling, making them stick, which is downright disgusting. Like, what if one of them falls in your head while you're trying to take a piss? Straight up menaces, bro. And then let's just talk about the weirdos that are just straight up out of pocket. There'd be some weird dudes that just be straight up pissing all over the bathroom floors. Like, at my elementary school, dudes were pissing all over the floors, on the vents, and even in the station where you wash your hands. Like, come on, man. That's just taking it way too far. And I can't be the only one who doesn't trust the soap dispensers. Because I've heard stories of weird kids doing unspeakable things to the soap dispensers that I don't even want to say. Like, I still use the soap, but I'm just a little sketched out because what am I going to do? Pack a bottle of soap to school? You know what? Maybe I should do that. That sounds like a really good idea. And then you have the kids who be pulling their entire pants down to their ankles just to pee. I think you know who I'm talking about. But one time I really needed to pee and I went to the bathroom and as soon as I opened that door i saw a dude's bare cheeks at the urinal and i just instantly left like i didn't need to pee no more bro and i've never witnessed this but dudes be choking the chicken in the bathroom like man some of you guys need to chill like y'all can't wait until you get home to do that like it's gotta be in school and sometimes you have people who be spending their entire lunch time in the bathroom stalls like please choose somewhere else to eat your lunch bro like i'm telling you this for your own safety because it cannot be healthy to be breathing in all that doo-doo air for a whole hour. It's gotta take at least five years off your lifespan if you're doing it consistently every day. Like just eat in the hallways or a classroom for your own safety, man. Now let's discuss the activities that occur in the school bathrooms. You would have kids skipping class to go to the bathroom just to spark it up in there with their homies. Same goes for the kids who vape and that bathroom would just be completely hotboxed. And you'd have those kids who were hustling and dealing some substances to other kids like Tylenol, Pepto-Bismol, grass, you know, stuff like that. The school bathrooms are these kids' property. Like, they have full ownership over them. You'd walk in and see like six of these dudes getting turned in the bathrooms. And of course, we can't forget the fights that happen. Kids would be straight up having a fight club in the bathrooms with an entire crowd watching them brawl it out like it was KSI vs. Logan Paul. And the news of the fight happening would spread across the school like wildfire and you would always have the kids who record the fights but it's always recording the worst angles and like in 180p the dudes recording the fights really need to step their game up and show up with one of these so we can get some 4k footage of the school fights then you got the kids who be stirring up a barbershop in the bathroom these kids will be giving other kids some fresh cuts in the bathrooms and getting people right with the fades or he'd be absolutely doing people dirty with the cuts dude was really on his entrepreneur grind set at school now let's talk about how tiktok absolutely made school bathrooms worse. You'd have those kids who be recording TikTok dances in the bathrooms. Like, come on, man. I'd rather see the group of stoners and vapors than those kids doing their TikTok dance as I walk by them to take a piss while cringing. Just ruining my day for no reason. Then you have the school thought giving free vocal lessons to everyone. And then you have the infamous TikTok trends that took over the school bathrooms. People were really having bathroom functions and concerts in there. Like, who would partake in such a thing? Okay. You got me. I was one of the bathroom function attendees. So at my school, people were planning a bathroom function for the last day of school. And you know, a bunch of dudes pulled up to the bathroom and we were getting turned in there. But then teachers and the hall monitor found out fast and we all had to disperse and dip out of there. And the people who set it up got in trouble. Here's some footage of it. I'm the biggest bird, I'm the biggest bird. I'm then the principal made an announcement on the speakers. So it has come to our attention that there has been this thing going on in the school bathrooms called bathroom functions. Yeah, this is just unacceptable behavior and this does not represent what being a student at our school is. Man, shut your bitch ass up! Yeah, the bathroom function trend was a 10 out of 10. But now let's discuss the devious lick trend. Now this trend was just straight up out of pocket. People were really stealing items in the bathrooms. Like it did not matter what it was. Toilet paper, soap dispensers, urinals, toilets. Hell, they might have even taken the entire bathroom itself. Everything was fair game to the devious liquors. Then these people would get home and record a TikTok of their loot. Like realistically, what are you gonna do with a broken soap dispenser and toilet, bro? This trend had the principal on his knees begging on the school announcements for people to stop. Guys, please stop this devious lick thing. We have no toilets left in the bathrooms. We have nowhere to take a dump. I took a dump in the sink. Please let this stop.
Then after the school complaints, people were really trying to atone for their sins with angelic yields, and they would start donating shit to the school bathrooms. Dudes were really giving toilet paper, hand sanitizer, and even TVs bro, thinking that's gonna atone for their wrongdoings. The damage has already been done. Then you got the people who are just straight up destroying the bathrooms and breaking toilets, mirrors, and urinals. Like come on man, no wonder the school bathrooms are always dirty, cause of all the atrocities that kids are committing in them, making the janitors not want to clean up all that crap. Like if I was a janitor and walked into the bathroom and saw it like this, I'm straight up quitting on the spot or I'm complaining to whoever runs the school for a raise or it's on site. Bro janitors don't get paid enough to deal with all this crap. Gen Z slang. See, I think it's safe to say that out of all the generations of people that ever existed, Gen Z are definitely the most interesting out of the bunch. Like with the help of TikTok, Gen Z has done so much irreversible damage to the English language that it's beyond saving. Like that submarine at the bottom of the ocean. And there is slang that I use on a day to day basis and slang that I think are straight up just stupid. So today we're going to talk about and rank some of Gen Z's slang. Alright, so let's just start this off on a very strong note. Mommy. Now dude. <sighs> Bro, this word has been absolutely ran through, man. Like, holy shit, TikTok actually ruined this word, man. Like, mommy is supposed to be this innocent word to describe your own mother. The person who's supposed to care for you, love you unconditionally, watch you grow and mature as she raises you into adulthood, and most importantly, the person who gave you the gift of life on this one-of-a-kind planet. But you want to know what TikTok has done to this wholesome word? They corrupted it. Mommy now has this new sick, twisted, and criminal meaning that typically refers to what down bad motherfuckers call women that they find a attractive or want to be dominated by. Mommy, is it my turn yet? I'm hungry! <laughs> Bro, like, if you see a TikTok of an attractive girl and head on over to the comments, you're gonna be met with this cesspit of all these down bad motherfuckers spamming mommy or dog barks with a dog emoji. And this applies to every other social media app, like, you can't escape it. Like, bro, if I ever catch my future son in these e-girl TikTok comments typing these obscenities, just know he ain't gonna be saying them no more. <laughs> Shit belongs in the F tier. Next, let's talk about blood or bro. Now, I use bro like religiously, like it's been integrated into my vocabulary for a minute now. And I can guarantee almost every dude uses his word. And it's just a little simple word to describe your homie. But recently, another version of the word has been making waves around TikTok, and that word is blood. Now with blood bro, it was funny for like the first three days of its life cycle. And you know, with the rise of all trends, TikTok motherfuckers gotta run that shit to the ground and ruin it. So blood to me, it's been getting corny and overused. Like I better not see anyone using that in real life, like keep blood for online usage only. Bro is gonna get an S tier and blood is gonna get a D tier cause it's British. Next, let's talk about let him cook. Now let him cook, I love this saying. And it's usually used when someone is doing an activity, like let's say you're playing one on ones in basketball and you're down 20 points against your homie. This is the perfect opportunity for one of your homies who's watching to say, yo let him cook bro he's just warming up. And now you'll just be given this godly power and just become the god of basketball. And and drop like 50 on your homie. Like don't underestimate the power of this phrase, like it can be used to boost your morale to heights you can't even fathom. But a lot of people tend to use this phrase to straight up lie to people. Like you can head over to the stew and your producer can play some absolute ass and you'll have that one motherfucker that'll say, yo nah let him cook. And he'll still proceed to play some more booty cheek type beats. Yo this some heat no? Yeah you fire as fuck bro. Yo who let this motherfucker down on FL studio bro? Let him cook gets an A cause I love lying. Next we got mid. Now mid, I'm not I'm not gonna even lie, I use this a lot in my day to day. And just because I use it a lot doesn't make it a good slang to use. Like the original meaning of mid just means average, like middle of the pack. Nothing amazing, but nothing terrible. But people have just completely warped and changed the word to mean like the worst thing possible. Like how does mid go from average to garbage? Like you could tell one of your homies about something that you love and they'll just call it straight up mid without competition. Yo bro, was good. I right, so recently I've been watching this fire show called The Boys and it's about these like superheroes, but hear me out. Hear me out, there's a twist, and they- Show's probably mid. Wait, what do you mean? You haven't even watched a single second of an episode. I know, but that shit probably mid still. But it's got like an 8.7 out of 10 on IMDb. I'm pretty sure that ain't mid, bro. Nah, shit's mid because you like it. I right, hate my fault. Mid gets a C for mid. Next, let's talk about goat. Now, goat is just the goat, man. Like, this saying is what I like to call goated. Now, goat is used to describe someone that is the greatest of all time at something. Like, Michael Jordan and LeBron, you could say that they're the goats of basketball. But people these days just be calling anything the goat, including me. Yo, can you get my water bottle? It's on the table right there. I right, sure.
Alright, yo, here. Hey, you the goat, bro. Dude, I literally just walked across the room and handed you a water bottle. How does that make me a goat? Other than that, goat gets a goat tier. Next, let's talk about the skull emoji. Now, who would have ever thought that an emoji would be considered as slang? But fuck it, we ball. Now, the skull emoji nowadays is used as a laughing emoji. Like, if something insanely funny happens, you're gonna see a bunch of skull emojis in the comments from people saying like, Bro thinks he's him. Skull emoji. Bro is not him. Skull emoji. But when you use the skull emoji, you gotta be on the floor dying to the point where you're gasping for air. Skull emoji gets an S tier. Next, let's talk about canon event. Now, recently, canon event has been making waves around TikTok, and it basically means an important event that happens throughout your life that builds up your character. Like, for example, you could go through a breakup, and that would be considered a canon event. Man, screw her, man. I don't need her. I'm about to hit the gym every day and end up looking like a Baki character. Yeah, bro, hit the gym grind, bro. That breakup was a canon event. You're right, bro. Or you could watch your younger sibling create a gamer tag for PlayStation, and they make their name xx underscore shadow sniper underscore xx now that's a canon event for all the dudes who made gamer tags back in the day we all went through that cringe phase of putting x's on the outsides of our names we given canon event a b tier now let's talk about cap now this slang i use this on a daily basis and cap just basically means a lie or you're lying like your friend could be talking about how many bitches he pulls and you could be like bro we all know that's cap you ain't pulling nothing or he use it when you're absolutely sincere about something like bro no cap miss tinkles and aught bro she lost my assignment and I have to redo it all over again. Damn, that's tough, bro. I'm gonna give Cap an S tier. Next, let's talk about Ohio. Now, bro, Ohio, I don't even know why out of all the states, Ohio is the one that gets dogged on by everyone. <laughs> Okay, maybe it's well deserved, but Ohio, it was funny when it first started becoming a trend, and you know, of course TikTok had to ruin it, and all over TikTok in the comments, you'll see a bunch of people commenting, most normal person in Ohio, most sane person from Ohio, bro is definitely from Ohio. Like bro, at this point, just let it die man, Ohio's life cycle is beyond the grave, just let it go, please. Like seeing all these Ohio comments is just so annoying at this point. Ohio gets an F tier. Next, let's talk about hits different. Now hits different is a goat saying, I don't care what anybody he says and it basically means something special or good like you could be looking through some old boxes and find yourself some old toys you used to play with damn these beyblades used to hit different or you could find yourself waking up in the middle of the night at 3 a.m completely dehydrated as fuck and you could go down to the kitchen to fetch yourself a nice ice cold glass of water straight from the north pole icebergs to chug hey nothing hits more different than an ice cold glass of water at 3 a.m hits different gets an a tier now let's talk about sus now sus it means like suspect or suspicious and it's usually used to call someone who's doing quote unquote suspect activities like your homie could be at his job and be plotting to steal extra food from the back to bring home to cook and you could call him sus for plotting to do that but people mostly just use sus as a substitute for calling someone gay like i know for a fact a good percentage of you guys have friends who just say the most sus shit ever like yo i'ma slap your ass hey yo like, I'm gonna be real, I got some friends that are just like this. Like, the sus wave has been insane, and it's all thanks to Aiden Ross. Sus gets an A tier. Next, let's talk about slay. Now, slay, you know, as a straight stickman myself, I've never used this word in my life. But I didn't even know the exact meaning of slay until now. But slay basically means, like, you killed it or you've done something really well. Like, your homegirl could be rocking an outfit well, and her friend could say, Oh my god, slay queen. Oh my god, yas bestie. Or something like that. I don't know. I'm not really messing with slay all too much. So we're gonna put that in the d tier and lastly we got period now bro this word just needs to stop man like every time i hear someone say this word it just annoys me so much like period apparently means like end of discussion or like nothing else to be said or debated like why can't you just say something else like dead ass why is it gotta be annoying period 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 like bro period belongs in the void bro well what did we learn today uh, we didn't really learn shit other than TikTok just ruins everything and it's trash. But anyways, follow my TikTok. Man, shut your bitch ass up. School gym class. Man, school gym class was just definitively the best class in school, man. Like, every other class just couldn't compete with the goat that is gym class. Except for this one. But a lot of wild things just occurred during gym class that just needs to be addressed. So today, we're gonna be discussing the craziness that was gym class. Alright, the first thing we gotta talk about is the gym equipment. Now, I'm be mainly talking about the gym equipment that we would use from elementary school all the way to the end of middle school so let's talk about these scooters bro dude right when gym class would start all the boys would instantly rush the equipment room to grab one of these johns and just race each other across the gym and some motherfuckers would even try to skateboard on them i'm motherfuckers 
And dude, the worst thing that would happen is when you'd roll the wheels of the scooter over your fingers. Like, I'm out here playing it cool in case my school crush was watching. Yo, it don't even hurt for a guy like me, though. <laughs> Then you got the hula hoops. Now, if using the hula hoops makes me fruity, then I guess I'm an apple. But yo, swear to God, I was doing some crazy tricks on it. Pause. But your boy was decent at hula hooping. Like, I probably could have joined a circus if I really wanted to. And bro, tell me why doing this trick was just so fun. Like, I don't know why it was so satisfying to throw the hula hoop and watch it just roll back to me. But then you got the stilts. And bro, these things were also dangerous, bro. Because every time me and the boys would get them, we'd always try to race each other and see who would be faster on them. And dude, the amount of times I've fallen on these is way too much, man. I'm honestly surprised I never broke a single bone in my life. But then you got the jump ropes. Now, I was complete cheeks at jump roping but we'd play this game called helicopter with a jump rope but you'd basically just spin the jump rope on the floor and get a bunch of people to get in and try jumping over it and bro whoever would jump wrong would get absolutely whipped and we do that like big long jump rope and get a bunch of people to hop in as well it was pretty fun then you got the dodgeballs bro and man we couldn't use regular dodgeballs because they'd hurt too much apparently so instead of using those we'd use the gator skin softballs and bro tell me why these dodgeballs would always have a piece big off of it like who's the kid going around biting these things and why like do y'all want to contract some next disease and bro we play like a variety of versions of dodgeball besides the normal one like memory dodgeball doctor dodgeball king's court bench dodgeball president dodgeball like these were all banger variations and everyone would take dodgeball serious as hell like their life was on the line it was a straight war zone no mercy type shit except the people who would just stay at the back and do nothing the whole game they were just chilling then you got the bean bags. Now we'd play this game where you take bean bags from a pile in the middle of the gym, and then you'd have to steal from other teams to get the most bean bags. Pretty go to game. You got the plastic scoops where you just play catch with the homie or alone. The exercise balls. Can't forget about those, bro. No one would use them as intended, bro. Like apparently you were supposed to do like crunches or push-ups with them, but everyone would just bounce on them, and the teacher would get so mad at us. And of course the parachute. This thing was goaded, bro. When the teacher would whip out the parachute. You already know the class was gonna be a banger, bro. We'd play games like cat and mouse, the parachute tent, shark attack. These were all goaded parachute activities. Hey, if you know, you know, man. Now we gotta talk about the exercises. Now, bro, tell me why gym class throughout elementary to middle school was just daycare compared to what high school gym class was. Like, elementary and middle school was all about the games and equipment, and high school was just straight conditioning for the most part. Like, our gym teacher had us doing all kinds of exercises, like push ups, planks, sit ups, crunches crunches, long ass jogs, suicides, like almost every class. Like not gonna lie, it was a decent leap from the daycare gym classes we used to have. But he's the goat for actually making us go through that, cause bro actually wanted us to be fit and not Nikado avocados just laying around all class. But bro, I gotta call out some of the people in gym class during the conditioning sessions. Cause bro, last time I checked, when you do a plank, you gotta stay somewhat straight and keep your ass down. But you had motherfuckers putting their ass all the way 50 feet in the air like they were doing downward dogs. Like, this ain't yoga class, bro. Then you had those dudes when the teacher would not be paying attention and they'd be lying down on the ground during push-ups. Or during jogging, someone would just hide somewhere in the gym so they didn't need a jog. Like, bro, not to be that guy, but like, gym class only benefits you when you participate. Like, you're not gonna die doing a few push-ups or jogging for five minutes. Like, do these motherfuckers not want to be in shape or be healthy? No, I can't do the push-up. No, no. Shut up, bitch. Do the push-up. But I could sort of understand if you had gym class right in the morning at 9 a.m., because, bro, I had gym class first period in grade 10, and it was rough. I'd wake up at the early time of 8.45 a.m., and I was already off to gym class for conditioning. But, bro, then I'd be musty as hell for the rest of the day throughout my other classes. And that was ass. Yeah, you know what? Maybe first period gym motherfuckers got an exception. Then you got the sports. Now, the best gym class sports by far had to be soccer, basketball, and volleyball. Like, when these were the sports we play after conditioning, every dude was hyped as fuck to play them. But, bro, we gotta talk about the tryhard gym sweats, bro. Like, these dudes just made gym class sports not fun. These people were just way too competitive like the game was gonna get them drafted to the NBA or the FIFA World Cup. Like bro, this grade 9 sports game ain't gonna get you drafted bro, let's just keep it a stack. So bro, I would try my best to sweat on the gym sweats just to shut down their ego cause these dudes need a pipe down. Like I remember this one kid in my gym class during basketball, bro would just throw a fit cause his team wasn't performing as good. And he'd be like, Yo, my team is so trash man, oh my god. You could see like the 
tears building up in his eyes too. Like, bro, it ain't that deep. Trust me, this game is not gonna have any effect on your life moving on forward. But I gotta touch on swimming class. Now, bro, swimming at 9 a.m. in the morning was so rough. Because, bro, I just woke up like 15 minutes ago, and now I gotta jump in some cold-ass water. Not exactly a great combo, but, bro, being in the deep end of the pool was so ass. Like, I hated it so much. Because I would have to constantly tread water when doing those lengths, which was so tiring. So I would stay around the middle area where it wasn't that deep, and man, our gym teacher made us go through hell doing a bunch of lengths. And he would make us jump out the pool and make us do push-ups for like 15 times in a row. Hey, I'd be lying if I said that didn't tire me out. It exhausted the hell out of me. But it was all worth it because we'd play water polo after or create a water vortex as a class. But then you got the fitness test. Now bro, the fitness test in elementary and middle school was actually fun. You'd basically just do some track and field events like long jumps, standing long jumps, sprints, and stuff like that, and then record your results. But bro, the beep test was some buns, bro. Like every time I'd walk into class and the teacher would say, all right guys, today we're doing the beep test. I already knew it was over. Like that test would tire the hell out of me. Cause like I wasn't the most athletic, but I'd say I was slightly above average for my athleticism. But best believe this test still had me looking like a fish fresh out of water. Then you got the swimming deep end test. Now bro, if you failed this John in front of your entire class, bro, it was over, man. It's gotta be the most embarrassing thing, bro. Like the test isn't even that hard. You just swim like four lengths of the pool. But bro, I gotta come clean. I failed that John in front of my class before back in grade nine. <laughs> Cause I was some ass at swimming before. And after that, I was never the same. Best believe I started practicing my swimming to make sure I didn't fail that John next year. I really went on my anime training arc, bro. And the following year, I passed that John easy. And now I'm decent-ish at swimming. I only know from crawl. And at my high school, we had to do something called a 12 minute run to test our endurance. And that thing was buns. You just run around a track for 12 minutes and count the amount of laps you completed. And bro, long distance running is my off for real. And we had something called a heart rate lab where you jog run and walk for a specific amount of time and then you have to track your heart rate after it and record it yeah that's kind of it but now let's talk about the locker rooms now bro gym locker rooms made every dude revert back to cavemen like dudes would be doing the weirdest shit in there you'd have dudes blasting music acting sus towel whipping dudes taking off someone's towel slamming lockers and for some reason you'd always have that one motherfucker eating before class started like ain't no way you didn't finish your lunch and then you'd have your gym teacher come into the change rooms and start yelling at everyone to hurry the hell up up. Boy, what the hell are you guys doing? Hurry the fuck up! And bro, some dudes don't even be using deodorant. Like, I remember this one time we had a rough gym class where we got our asses worked, and I was walking down the stairs to get to the change room, and bro, this dude, not gonna lie, he was kinda chunky, he walked past me, and bro smelled like an entire fish market, bro. Like, goddamn, the scent invaded my nostrils and started going ham. Like, I'll never forget that stench, bro. It was terrible. Like, I don't understand how you could smell that bad. Like, bro need a shower and put on some deodorant ASAP. And finally, we got the gym teachers. Now, my gym teacher, bro, was like a military sergeant. Like, he was chill at times. But if you were to piss him off, it was raps for you. Like, he was from Australia, too, so you know bro was tough as nails. Your hands don't look like this while you're eating your lunch. You must be a liberal sissy. But, bro, this one time we were doing a run just for conditioning, and there's this one student, let's call him Oliver. Oliver was trying to hide so he didn't need a run, and bro got caught red-handed. And my gym teacher proceeded to flame the ever-living hell out of bro in front of the entire class. Oliver! you're done like dinner and bro got sent to the office and this one time in my middle school one of the special ed kids were acting up and you want to know what my middle school gym teacher did bro took the kid to the equipment room shut off the lights and locked him in there like what the hell bro like i'm not no teacher but i'm pretty sure that wasn't the correct thing to do there you could hear bro screaming and shit in the equipment room yeah that teacher was interesting but bro we gotta talk about the creepy gym teachers now the gym teachers at my high school were goats not creepy weirdos but bro just watch out for these creeps because I've heard countless stories about these dudes online and from other people, so just be careful out there. This video is brought to you by World of Warships. Mobile games part two. Man, a lot of mobile games nowadays just don't hold up to the standard of mobile games that were released back in the early 2010s. Like nowadays, you get these weird ass advertisements for mobile games. Like what is this?
like what has become of modern mobile games like back in the day mobile game companies actually put in work to market their games and had great production and animation for their game like damn i really do miss the golden ages of mobile games so today we're gonna reminisce on more of the goats of mobile games all right so the first game that we're gonna talk about is where's my water now this game bro had me absolutely perplexed as a kid and the whole point of the game is to get this scary looking crocodile his water for his little shower session by digging through the dirt to lead the water to bro and dude the beginning levels of this game were a piece of cake like i was speed running all of them but it got to a point where the levels got way too complex for my tiny child brain to comprehend that i just rage quit the game and deleted it like bro why do i gotta find this stupid crocodile water like the earth is like 71 percent water like just get a boat and head out to sea and bam look at all this water bruh like was that really all that hard Yo, what the hell? Hey, you stupid stick figure. The hell you doing? You're in the way. In the way of what? Well, you're in the way of the ship battle brought to you by World of Warships. World of Warships is a free-to-play massively multiplayer online game available on PC that allows you to tactically command your huge naval force made up of history's most well-known battleships and lets you acquire new ships as you progressively take over the seven seas. World of Warships has a dedicated development team that delivers new material every month, whether it be new ships, cosmetics, in-game nations, or ship classes. The game also has 40 unique maps with dynamic weather and wonderful water effects and textures that simply make the game's oceans appear magnificent. Like look at this and look at that, nearly identical to the real deal. And the game contains a variety of ship types to fit any playstyle, whether you want big boy battleships, fast destroyers, sneaky submarines, or if the sky is calling for you, you got aircraft carriers. World of Warships also has an active community where you can meet other players to conquer the oceans with and compete in tournaments to win prizes. And if you don't have a PC, don't worry, World of Warships is available on consoles as well. And if you want to check out World of Warships for yourself, click the link in the description and use the promo code WARSHIPS to get a free sign up bonus of doubloons, credits, premium account time, and a ship. All for free. Thank you to World of Warships for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the video. Alright, so this next game is going to get all the Facebook moms excited. Candy Crush. Now, Candy Crush was a game that I would play in my free time, and all you would really do in the game is match these candies together to reach some specific target goal in a certain amount of moves. And I never really got that far into the game because let's be real you can only really match these dumbass candies for so long because the game had an energy system where you would have to wait for your hearts to regenerate back to play again like bro i didn't know i was playing clash of clans like why do i gotta wait a century to match some candies together or you could fall into the microtransaction trap and pay them money for hearts back to play which on god you would never catch me doing that i've only spent like max 40 dollars on mobile games throughout my life you'd never catch me spending bands on candy crush but bro we gotta give our moms props for sticking through the thick and thin and getting to like level gazillion jillion quintillion or something nah but apparently candy crush has like 14,105 levels total like god damn i only got to like level 50 but hey props to all the candy crush moms out there y'all are true veterans now let's talk about jetpack joyride now jetpack joyride i love this game so much dude like this is one of the games i would put a good amount of my time towards playing and in the game you're basically this dude named barry steak fries terrible last name by the way just need to point that out but the game is basically another one of those endless scrollers but in 2d and you got a really cool machine gun jetpack and you could get a power-up called a vehicle which can let you ride a dragon a teleporter a mech a knockoff flappy bird gravity guy hey how do you get in the game and sam but he stinks we don't mess with sam but there are more vehicles but we're just gonna skip them but i used to grind this game so hard because you were able to customize your jetpack and there was this one jetpack that i really wanted in the in-game store and that jetpack was the twister jetpack and i just thought it was so cool because you could create a tornado with it yeah that's it that's all it took to make my toddler sized brain to get that neuron activation i don't know i was always fascinated by tornadoes when i was younger and i still am because i'd be watching some random tornado videos during those 3am youtube sessions in bed but yeah jetpack joy got a special place in my heart for show now let's talk about minecraft pe now how could anybody forget about this goat of a game like when i was younger and minecraft released and a bunch of youtubers were making videos on the game i became obsessed with the game and i would binge watch a ton of minecraft youtube but at the time, I had a garbage laptop and I was broke. So I never really got the game until like 2015. But for the meantime, I was playing Minecraft PE and Minecraft PE Lite at my friend's house. And if you don't know Minecraft PE Lite, it was just the Buns version of PE with locked features. It was booty, man. But man, did it hit different thinking back on it. We'd run up a multiplayer server and play survival and create a town. But of course, there were some dog houses because we were like nine and didn't know how to build. So we'd just cook up a house looking like a rectangular prism. 
up. But we'd also run some creative together and just do some random stuff, like making a PvP arena and fighting each other, exploding and murdering an entire village, snowball fights, iron golems versus a mob of zombies, animal torture chambers, and of course the one thing every person who played Minecraft did, make this piece of shit house. I don't know why everyone who played Minecraft made a diamond house that was just a square. I guess it was just a canon event, but one thing I gotta mention is this, the nether reactor. For you kids who don't know what this is, basically the nether dimension couldn't run on the crappy mobile devices, so to compensate, they made the nether reactor, and the dimension on mobile was just this square room that would spawn pigmen. Like bro, Mojang gotta bring this back to the game or something, cause the nether reactor is so nostalgic and went hard. But all in all, I love this game with all my heart and it gave me some peak childhood memories. Now let's talk about Crossy Road. Now Crossy Road, this game was also the GOAT, and the point of the game was to just cross them roads with this chicken character while avoiding cars and the water. And I just grinded out this game and I used to flex my score to my friends who played the game, thinking I was him. Bro, I was such a loser, bro. But there were like 262 different characters in the game and I wanted them all. And I would grind to attempt to get them all. But eventually, I just got tired of the game and stopped. Like, I just couldn't do it, man. There were too many characters. And I was getting bored of playing the game. Sadly, I'm a quitter. Now let's talk about Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, yes, I played Five Nights at Freddy's on mobile. But I used to play on an older person's iPad at an after school program. And I remember I would just play while like four other friends would watch me play while we were sitting in the hallways. And as much as the game would scare me, I loved the game because of Markiplier and game theory. Like I used to just consume a bunch of their content. Like I was a total munch for their videos. Especially MatPat's entire Netflix series of FNAF theories with like 18 gazillion videos. Specifically this video. This had me on edge playing the game. And I remember I only got to like the sixth night, which I was pretty proud of. And I wanted to get to the custom night where you could do that 20, 20, 20, 20 mode, but I just wasn't good enough. Now let's talk about Clash Royale. Now Clash Royale, it's a goat game. And I used to play this game all the time during class, specifically during my grade nine and 10 math classes, cause them Johns were boring as hell. But I wasn't one of those tryhard players who climbed like all the way to like ultimate champion or something. I usually just stayed around like challenger three and peaked at master one. But one of my pet peeves for this game was that it's so pay to win. Like before the more recent updates, if you were matched up against a dude with gold cards that are level 14, it was raps. Like there's no way you're winning that John. So I would just straight up DC and close my game. Cause there was no point of playing it out bro. Like bro just spent more bands on the game than my free to play ass. Like the feeling of being a free to play and getting a legendary chest and getting a legendary card is an unmatched feeling. But when you just spend daddy's credit card for gems, you're just ruining the grind that leads up to the euphoric feeling of pulling a legendary card. Now let's talk about Pokemon Go. Now Pokemon Go, I didn't get to experience the magic of the game when it first released. Cause I had an iPad mini and that thing couldn't run the game. But when I got my iPhone 6s, best believe that I was grinding out that game with my friends catching all the Pokemon, spinning all the Pokestops, doing all the raids, and taking over all the gyms in my area. Like I was on my IRL grind, and the game was actually making me touch grass for once in my life. And nothing hit harder than getting a shiny legendary Pokemon in one of those raids, man. And I'ma just let it be known, if you were Team Mystic, you're a D1 Meat Rider bandwagoner, I don't care. You were just following the crowd. Real ones were on the underground teams. Valor or Instinct? I was on Instinct. Let's just keep it a stack. Now let's talk about Roblox. Now Roblox is also one of the GOATs, and I started playing this game back in like 2013 when the most popular games looked like Dookie. And now you got these like insane realistic FPS shooter games in Roblox. Like this footage is a game in Roblox, like that's crazy. But the OG games that I used to play all the time were Stop It Slender, Murder Mystery, Survive the Disasters, Natural Disasters, Work at a Pizza Place, Cops and Robbers, and a bunch of weird tycoons and obbies. But my favorite game of all time has to be the Egg Hunts. Dude, I miss doing the yearly Egg Hunts, man, and getting free hats from it. I wish Roblox still did them. I also wish Roblox brought back ticks. Like, I was on my grind logging in every day to collect my free ticks so that I could convert them into Robux. Roblox, if you're watching this video, bring those two things back right now. I demand you. And finally, let's talk about Fruit Ninja. Now, Fruit Ninja was the GOAT game on Facebook and mobile. Like, it was just so satisfying to slice all these fruits and doing all those combos. Like, I was always trying to get, like, an insane combo on the game. And, dude, the bananas in the game just made it so much better. Like, the Frenzy Banana was the GOAT. They had the Freeze one. And, uh, this one, it was mid. It just gave you double points, which did not stimulate my Gen Z mind. And the game had a bunch of different blades to collect, too. And I remember I was on my grind completing achievements so that I could unlock all the blades. And let's be real, the lobby music just hits different. Like shit made me feel like I was a Shaolin monk. 
Types of Kids in High School Part 2. Now, you guys already know by the title, and with the love you guys gave to Part 1, I just had to make another part covering more types of kids. So, let's get into it. Alright, first up on the chopping block is the dumb kid. Now, of course, you know there are four main learning styles that are generally used a lot from teachers these days, being visual, auditory, reading slash writing, and kinesthetic. Because obviously, not everyone learns in the same way. We're all unique and different in our own ways. But the dumb kid, man? I don't even know what style of learning he is because he's not learning at all. Like 90% of the time, bro's just completely lost. Like the teacher could be explaining the most simple concept like how to isolate for X and bro would be asking the dude right next to him, yo, what does she mean by isolating for X? Oh, alright, so you're just gonna subtract 2 on both sides and divide both sides by 3 and that's your answer. Wait, 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 hold up. I don't understand, explain in like the most basic terms possible. Okay, sure. So you're gonna move the 2 to the other side and it becomes 14 minus 2. Then to remove that 3x, just divide both sides by 3 and then you get x equals 4 as your answer. Wait, but why though? Bro, what do you mean why? Do I look like I created math? And this doesn't only apply to math, this extends to like every other subject. Like dude's brain is just wired in a different way. Bro is the CEO of confusion. And I'ma just keep it a stack. I was this kid. Okay, next up we have the popular kids. So the popular kids generally were born into wealthy families and they were always repping the latest trendy drip and they'd always be hosting the out of school parties at their mansion sized houses. They are also very involved with school clubs, sports and events and were all in all very extroverted people and socialized with others very often. They were like the school celebrities amongst the entirety of your grade population and the media portrays these kids as assholes and arrogant people which is pretty accurate because a lot of the popular kids just have the biggest egos and think they're above other people just because they have a little school clout, which is pretty cringe. These type of kids are the type to have their life peak at high school, which is a fat L. But this doesn't apply to all popular kids, obviously, because at my school, a lot of popular kids were chill as fuck and were nice to people. But bro, they're doing crazy stuff over the summer. Hey, what did you do over the summer, man? Oh, so I went to my cottage with my family, went to Greece, I went to France, Oh, I also did an overnight camp for like two weeks. I went to Japan and I went snowboarding on Mount Everest. What about you? Damn, what? How did you do all that in one summer? What the? I, I just been playing Minecraft at home. Next we have the ghost. Now this kid, I have no clue what's going on with this kid. This is the kid that you always see on the attendance list for one of your classes, but you have absolutely no idea who they are cause they never show up. Like when the teacher reads out the attendance, they just be skipping their name and saying like, oh, Jimmy's not here, of course. Like where is this man? Like my theory is he's gotta be hitting the greatest side quest known to man. Like he's probably helping Percy Jackson find Zeus's missing lightning bolt or something. Or he's traveling across the Grand Line to find the One Piece. And the only time, the only time you will see this guy is on graduation day. Like what? So you're telling me this dude hasn't been to a single class and he still got his diploma. Bro definitely used some sort of cheat code for his diploma cause dude, I need to be put on this method. The amount of boring ass classes I could have skipped is immense. Props to this guy for doing the least amount of work and still graduating to be honest. Next we have the stoners. Bro, these dudes are always just 20 24-7 baked out of their minds and they just be vibing throughout the whole school day without anything ruining their vibe. I feel like there are two types of stoners, the lazy one and the chad stoner. So the lazy stoner, their main priority in life is just getting faded. Like they'll be skipping class, avoiding their homework, and doing anything just to get baked. And that leads to them just failing their classes, which isn't ideal cause you at least want to pass your classes so you won't have to repeat any classes for next year. Bro's basically trying to do a ruin your future speed run and for the chad stoner getting faded just improves his productivity by like 10 times like that zombie allowing his brain to form some sort of new connections that just turns this guy into an absolute academic weapon he'll be studying for hours and hours on end non-stop just straight in the zone and complete all of his assignments in like a single session and bro would do his test faded as well until score like a 90 percent that zaw has bro on his einstein shit okay so the next type of kid is the furry okay 
so I'm not trying to judge these people. Like it's 2023 and people can wear what they want, act how they want, and just express their true selves. But like, maybe I'm just not getting something, but furries be weird. Like, I don't know. These dudes like to act like they are animals and create a fursona for themselves, Bruh. which come on, bro. Like you're not an animal, man. And some of these kids like to play further into their act as an animal by walking around on all fours. And sometimes they'll have someone walk them around on a leash. Like, bro, that's just taking it way too far. Luckily, I've never witnessed something like this at my school. Only the more toned down version, which is just someone wearing like cat ears. But then again, it's 2023, so like, whatever. Next, we have the loner. And I'm not talking about no popular loners. Get that shit out of here. That's a myth. But the loner, he's really just in his own world. Like, he's really antisocial and doesn't like talking to other people. Leaving them alone with no friends and no one to really talk to. You'd see them at lunch eating all alone at the table on their phones or reading a book and man if you can just go up to them and talk to them because maybe they do want friends deep down and people to socialize with and feel like they belong to a group of people or they just absolutely hate other people and don't want anything to do with you and others and that's why they just keep to themselves which then okay that's their problem to deal with then next we have the npc now these kids they just spawn in randomly at your school they're the type of kids that you never even knew went to your school and randomly on a day you just saw them in the hallway and you think to yourself wait this guy goes to our school then you would try to go up and talk to them and it'd be like hey dude i didn't know you go to our school what's your name carl okay so what's up with you carl i am going to math class later hooray uh all right cool so do you play any sports yes i play esports i bro like like the conversations you'd have with these types of people like i don't know man like these kids are like ai generator or something like their code only allows them to have specific responses for certain situations like they're literally robots these are the types of kids who'd run to class if they were late and these kids would be eagerly waiting for the school day to end and they just instantly disappear and head on back home how do i know this Oh shit, that's me! Next up, we have the goth kid. So the goth kid, they definitely stick out from your average crowd in a high school setting with their dark clothing, hairstyle which is usually dyed, and the absurd amount of piercings they have, and that specific goth makeup. Goth kids tend to listen to metal and rock bands, you know, like your average death tones and the cure enjoyers. And some of them are like obsessed with the devil, uh, emoji. So yeah, that's a thing. These kids tend to be either depressed or mentally ill. And this is a diss it's just straight facts they'd be talking to you about how life is so miserable and pointless and they'd be posting some like emo quote on their instagram story or a self-deprecating meme like shit that's cool and all but it's war day and my clan needs my morale to be high and mighty for my attack i ain't got all that time to be hearing all this sad stuff my clan needs me and lastly we have the tiktok kids now bro i'm sorry to say this but i oh uh that's a powerful word um I mildly dislike these kids. These are the type of kids who base their fits on these TikTok style boards. You know, like the e-boy and e-girl fits. These kids will also be filming TikToks wherever they go. In class, at lunch, in an assembly, in the halls, in the bathrooms. Like, name any location in a school and they'd probably film the TikTok there. But bro, then you have the kids who walk up to random kids and start recording them and start screaming like, Yo, get sturdy, yo, right now. Like, bro, now these kids kids are actual pests and need to hop off TikTok. It's just so cringy watching them do that because majority of the time the person is just trying to be left alone. Don't be like this kid man. Gen Z nostalgia. Sheesh, us Gen Z kids really be pushing adulthood soon. At least according to the government's definition of the legal age to be an adult. To be honest, I don't really feel like an adult. I don't know how to do taxes, pay bills, or even make sure I eat food sometimes. And the government just throws you into adulthood like All right, you just graduated high school. Go find what you want to do for the remaining 60 years of your life and figure out that tax thing because we're not going to help you. Like what? I was just playing video games all day in the house a few years ago and now I got to figure out what job I want to do for the remaining time I have on this earth. That's wild. I really do miss the old times when life was much simpler and I didn't have to stress about college or getting a job. It was really the golden age. So let's take a little walk through memory lane for us Gen Z kids. Okay, let's start this off strong. Silly bands. I know you all remember these. These were so goaded back in the day. People would be wearing them all the time on their wrists and be flexing them like they just walked out of icebox all iced out. Kids at my school would always be trading them with each other too. Hey, I'll trade you my dolphin for your T-Rex. Psh, 
You guys have the lame silly bands. Check this one out. Whoa, yours goes in the dark? Mm-hmm. Bro, if you had that go in the dark silly band, you were the coolest kid in third grade. Everybody would want to trade you for it, but ain't no way I'm trading that away. It's too cool. And go hap. Let's talk about toys now. Back in the day, your boy was playing with Legos, Transformers, Hot Wheels, Tech Decks, Bakugan, Beanie Boos, Pokemon cards, and Beyblades, bro. But my favorites were definitely the Pokemon cards, Beyblades, and Lego. My brother and I would buy Pokemon card packs and those tins, and we would have Pokemon card battles together and trade them with our friends. Of course, of course we did not a play, like who actually used energy cards to play? Psh, weirdo. We would also use a pen to draw on the Pokemon cards to change the damage of the card, which was stupid because we were just ruining the cards. We would also have Beyblade tournaments with each other on a Beyblade stadium, and we would be playing for our Beyblades like all day. and we'd be making our own custom Beyblades with that circular tool thing and add random parts from our other Beyblades to create the ultimate Beyblade. Our Beyblade obsession got so bad to the point where our vice principal banned them at our school because we were playing with them on the slide and blocking other kids from using the slides, which was really sad. Now with Legos, we weren't really balling, so I never really had any sets, but playing with the minifigures was really fun with my friends. Hopefully someone knows about these. Yeah, these were so goaded, bro. I just remember letting these rip with my friends in the school hallways back in elementary, and it was so fun watching them go, and we would even set up joust with them. Now onto video games. Now growing up, we didn't really have internet at home, but we did have this old chunky computer and I faintly remember playing Solitaire, Minesweeper, and 3D Pinball on that piece of junk. But when my brother and I finally got our first laptop, which was a Windows Vista, it was awesome. We discovered Flash games and we would spend a majority of our time playing them on Miniquip, Y8, Cool Math games. It was great. My personal favorites were Super Smash Flash, Super Mario 63, Learn to Fly, Box Head, and Gravity Guy. Even at school, when I finished my homework early, my teacher would let me play on the computer and I would hop on kids picks or math circus and mess around in those games. I don't know if anyone else would do this, but they had games on Facebook, so I'd play a lot of those games all the time too. Later on, we would get a DSi XL and we had one of those R4 cards that had like a bunch of games that we would play on there. Here's a few of them. Mario Kart, Mario Party, Mario Bros, and Pokemon Pearl being my favorites. I was the biggest Mario Kart and Mario Party sweat and would destroy all my friends in those games. Friendships would be broken over these games. And of course, I would stay up playing on the DS and when my mom would check up on me in the middle of the night, I would quickly close the DS and hide it under my pillow and pretend that I was asleep. And when she left, I would go right back to playing. Your boy thought he was slick. And don't get me started on the Wii. Bro, that was the most goaded console. It had bangers after bangers after bangers on it. My top games being Mario Bros Wii and Kirby's Return to Dreamland. These two games are unmatched. Another thing is, bro, I swear I was like a pioneer of the iPad kid. Cause I had an iPad mini and I would be glued to it 20 24-7. I would bring it to my friend's house and we'd play Roblox and Minecraft Pocket Edition together. And the games that we played on Roblox were Natural Disasters, Welcome to Robloxia, Stop It Slender, Obbies, and Tycoons. You know, like all the OG stuff. And I remember fondly of us shitting our pants playing Roblox Slenderman and throwing our iPads because of how scary that game was. My friend also had a PS3 and PS4 so we would run up some Black Ops Zombies and multiplayer together. Bro, Black Ops Zombies was the scariest shit ever back in the day. We'd be shaking our boots after the loading stream finished and you'd hear that one sound Yeah, that sound sent shivers down every 10 year old spines back in the day. The video games kids play nowadays can't compare. That's why he's the GOAT! Moving on, let's talk about some TV shows. Now, I used to wake up at 6 to 7 a.m. in the morning, and after I did all my morning stuff, I would pour up a bowl of cereal and watch some television. Your boy was watching all the best TV shows. Here's a list of them. My favorite shows being iCarly, SpongeBob, Beyblade, Regular Show, Arthur, and Total Drama Island. I remember watching some iCarly, SpongeBob, and Pokemon before I was off to school, and after school would end, I would come back home and watch some Arthur. Your boy also watched some anime back in the day, like Naruto, Attack on Titan, One Piece, Fairy Tale, and... 
And as I grew older, I saw TV programs discontinuing these shows and the newer gen shows started to take over Bruh. and it was just meh. The new shows they make now all suck. Please bring back the older shows. Please. Bro, please. It's been a bro, year, bro, daddy. Why you do I really, this? really miss you. <laughs> Let's talk about some board games now. When was the last time you even played a board game? Probably a good amount of time ago. I played a lot of board games growing up. The goats being Monopoly, Candyland, and Sorry. I remember playing Monopoly 1v1s with my brother and he would just straight up cheat. I would leave to go to the bathroom and my bro would just start stealing money from the bank while I was in the bathroom. I was straight up getting duped. And man, the power you felt when you owned Boardwalk and Park Place, you were truly a global threat and not to be messed with. Candyland and Sorry, I played with my friends and man did those games get heated, especially with Sorry. Swear to God, when we played that game, it was an all out war zone of just rage, of just booting each other back to the start. But like the fun kind of rage. Let's talk about YouTubers now. I used to watch Smosh videos way back in the day, like all the time. I love their skits so much. And of course we can't forget about the Minecraft YouTuber era. Man, that time of YouTube was so goaded. Coming home from school and watching all these Minecraft YouTubers was truly one of the most memorable times of my childhood. And one of my all time favorite YouTubers ever has to go to Vanoss Gaming. Man, their videos were hilarious back in the day. And I find myself going back to watch their older videos from time to time just to relive the good old days. YouTube nowadays is filled with some horrible content. Just to list a few. Oh shit, how did that get? there. Anyways, but who punches babies as a prank, bruh? What? The last thing we'll discuss is snacks. Back in elementary, I would pack myself some cereal in a Ziploc bag, or I would bring some Sky Flakes to school. Your boy was struggling in the snack department, but it was okay, because I would be leeching snacks from my friends when I was at school. Here's a bunch of snacks I would be munching on way back in the day. The top three snacks had to be Rice Krispies, Gushers, and Goldfish. These snacks were the top dogs. Unfortunately, a lot of these snacks don't hit the same anymore, as I grew up more, and are kind of just straight up nasty, not gonna lie. But they were good while they lasted for my 10 year old self. But another honorary mention that I liked were Lunchables. I never had one myself, but I would always see my friends have them and be hella jealous of them and ask if I could have some and they were pretty bussin' from my memory. Going back to school. You know, it's getting close to that time of the year that every kid dreads. Just take a quick look at your calendar if you don't know what I'm talking about. Oh shit. Here we go again. Yeah, school is right around the corner, and I already know a good majority of you guys are terrified about that fact. But don't worry, I'm here to help you relieve that anxiety by giving you some tips about going back to school and my own experiences. Alright, first we gotta talk about back to school shopping. Now, it's 2023, and I know for a fact no one's watching TV as much anymore, cause TikTok and YouTube killed that shit. But, uh, back in my day, nah, I'm kidding. The back to school ads always just annoyed me, bro. Cause I'd just be sitting on the couch munching on a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch watching me some fairly odd parents and all of a sudden an ad disrupts my important cartoon time to remind me that school is starting soon like bruh and tell me why in every back to school advertisement all the kids are happy go lucky all excited for getting their school supplies and heading back to school like no man school is not something to be happy about what kid is happy about going back to that hellhole just to listen to a teacher talk about pointless information for eight hours straight and assign bullshit useless homework no one except sheldon fuck sheldon but dude, I swear the child actors in these ads had to be held at gunpoint or something, man. Wee, I love going back to school shopping. Yay! Uh, hey Jimmy, um, I'm gonna need you to be happier, okay? But I'm trying my best. Don't shoot me! Yeah, uh, I don't care. You better pick up your act or you're not getting paid. Like, bro, when I'd go back to school shopping with my mom, I was annoyed at the fact that summer was over. I couldn't care less about the new backpack, pencil case, or binder I was getting. My ass didn't want to go back to school. But you would always see her friends going back back to school shopping too at the local Walmart. And it was always nice to see and talk to people you haven't seen throughout the summer. And just a side note, if you were one of those kids who pulled up to school with the 64 pack of crayons with the sharpener at the back, I hate you. That was the ultimate flex back in elementary school and I never had it. Now we gotta talk about drip. Now, if you go to a school that requires uniforms, you don't really need this information. But for most people that attend a public school, listen bruh. I'm a dude that preaches about expressing yourself, just wearing what you want, and not caring about other people's opinions. But man, sometimes you just gotta chill depending if you wear wild shit. Like please don't pull up on the first day of school or ever in one of those 3D wolf hoodies, the galaxy hoodies, or the anime hoodies, bruh. Like hell nah, bro. Those are straight ass. Like they just scream, yo, I'm musty as hell. I scare all the hoes. Bully me, please. Like that, man. 
Like, you don't want to end up like little bro. So please refrain from ever purchasing one of these hoodies for your own safety. Unless you really don't care, then do you, bro. And for shoes, bro, you can just keep it simple with a pair of white Air Forces, Vans, or Converse. Or if you're feeling a bit flashy, some Jordans. But try not to get robbed if you're bringing Jordans to school. Like, if you have to change shoes for gym class, keep them Johns in your locker. Because, hey, you never know what could happen. Some high schoolers be fiending for a lick. And don't be pulling up in some goofy shoes like the mischief big red moon boots straight from Astro Boy. Because just because they're trending and you see celebrities wearing them doesn't mean you got them, man. And dude, don't be that guy that just buys a ton of reps and only wears hypey shit like a full supreme fit. Like, bro, everybody's gonna know that they're fake. And you'll just look like a cornball. Unless you're wearing the all black fit with the Ricks, then who am I to stop you? And make sure you get a good haircut. You don't want to have an ass haircut like a buzz cut or be bald. Now we gotta talk about going to bed. Now, bro, trying to sleep the night before school is always impossible. Like, that shit is harder than finding a cure to cancer. And it's all due to the absolute garbage sleep schedule that most of us develop during summer. Like, during the summer, I'd be sleeping at the most illegal times, bro. Like, I'm talking 6 a.m. in the morning when the birds start chirping. That's when I would go to sleep. And I wouldn't even be doing anything important during those hours. I would either be watching YouTube or anime or playing video games with friends. And I remember this one specific time a few years back when I was going into the ninth grade. I was trying to go to sleep early, like at around 10 p.m., but I just couldn't fall asleep because my sleep schedule was so fucked up. And I was doing the most to try to fall asleep. I went from closing my eyes to staring at the ceiling for 20 minutes to searching up a YouTube video on how to fall asleep and watching it to staring at the ceiling again to searching up a one hour space documentary to get me tired enough to fall asleep. And yes, I actually did this and it didn't even work at all. I watched the full one hour documentary and it was around 5 a.m. at that point and I still couldn't fall asleep. So I just kind of threw my phone across the room and just stared at the ceiling and eventually I fell asleep at 6 a.m. I had to get to school at 9 a.m. Three hours later. Bro, what the fuck? So I got three hours of sleep and those three hours zoomed by so fast like it was three minutes. And I went to my first day of high school tired as hell. Yeah, do not follow my footsteps, bro. Now we gotta talk about what happens on the first day of school. Now, not gonna lie, the first day of school is always boring as hell. You basically just get to your homeroom class and your teacher gives you a whole summary of their backstory. Like, why are we getting a lore drop? We didn't ask for that. And they'll usually make the entire class do an icebreaker. Like, I don't think there's a single person in the world that actually enjoys icebreakers. Breakers. Like, they're always so awkward. And I don't think anybody gives a shit about what each other did over the summer or any fun facts. Like, keeping it a stack, I'm just waiting for the clock to turn to 3 p.m. so I could dip. And your teacher would typically hand out everyone's schedule, and I would take a picture of my schedule because I would always end up losing my schedule somehow, or it would just get completely crumpled up in my backpack. And some students would take a picture of their schedule and make it their lock screen, which works as well. Because, dude, finding your classes at first is the most confusing shit ever. Like, you don't know the layout of the school, so it's like you're walking around a maze aimlessly. But eventually you'll get used to it and remember where your classes are and your teacher will assign you a locker. Now at my school, a lot of people didn't use their lockers. They'd just walk around with their bags. But we still got assigned lockers and the locker I got assigned, I kid you not, had Pennywise made with chewed up gum in it. Bro, what the fuck? Yeah, bro, I legit got assigned Davy Jones locker, bro. Like, I don't know who would even dedicate their time to making that. Because it looked like they put a lot of effort into making it. And best believe, that just gave me a greater incentive to not use my locker. And just a player tip to the menaces out there, just chill, bro. And don't cause anybody issues, including other students and teachers. Like these days, I just see videos on social media of students acting crazy disrespectful to teachers to the point where they start fighting the teacher or they just quit their job. Like we gotta start respecting teachers more because they're just normal people like you and I and shouldn't be disrespected to the point where they just quit their jobs. Like I feel like we need teachers more than ever, especially with how people in younger generations seem to be getting dumber and dumber as the years pass by and this includes being respectful or nice to other students as well like you don't want to be that one asshole kid that no one likes you're just gonna end up with no friends and your high school experience is gonna be lonely and mid and a good way to meet people is through joining a club and coming from someone who would join a club for a day and never be seen at the club again in the back of my mind i kind of wish i committed to at least one club because who knows i could have made an extra friend through the club or experienced something i've never done before because it's not like i was doing much with 
of my free time at home anyways. And on the topic of making friends, try to make at least one friend in every class. Because it's going to be rough just sitting through your classes, not talking to anybody. You're just going to end up hating your classes more, and making friends in them will make the classes more bearable. And if you really want to get good grades and be on top of your shit in school, you should try to incorporate a routine around school. This is more so for high school and university students, because if you're in elementary or middle school, bro, just chill and relax, man. You're still at the age where school doesn't really matter. It's only when you get to high school where you should start to care more about school and grades. But you should try to create a schedule to manage your time wisely, and this is kind of hypocritical coming from me, because my ass did not have or follow a schedule. I would just constantly procrastinate assignments, homework, and studying till the last minute. And that caused a lot of unnecessary stress for myself that I could have easily avoided by following a schedule. So just having a schedule to follow on a daily basis helps with maintaining structure in your day-to-day -day life. But if you don't care much about school and have other ambitions that you're working towards, that's also fine. School is not everything and we all take different ways throughout life. Just make sure to stay focused on whatever it is that you're dedicating your time to. And always have a backup plan. And for the university slash college people that are watching this, um, I only took a semester of university and dropped out. So I'm not really a good source to get tips from, but just make sure whatever you're studying, you actually enjoy it and it actually makes you money when you get your degree. Like don't go picking philosophy as a major and wonder why after you completed the four year program, you can't find a job. Like bro, do your research and pick something that pays well and is in demand that will make that college tuition money back. And another tip, just survive bro. Like you gotta have a schedule in post-secondary school or else you're just gonna screw yourself over. Balance is key and you're gonna wanna balance your social life, schoolwork, and hobbies if you wanna stay mentally sane. <laughs> Donate. <laughs> and I know this doesn't apply to more intensive majors under the STEM category like engineering, sciences, or math. And my best advice for people who are is, hey, good luck, bro. You signed up for it. Remember that. Okay, so throughout my high school experience, I have seen and observed the abundance of kids who vape, and I'm certain you guys in high school still have as well. Like, these kids be hitting their vape pens like it's their 9 to 5 job, like... <sighs> Like, goddamn, chill a little bit. Well, based on my observations throughout the years, I think I'm well enough qualified to speak on the different types of kids who vape, so let's get into it. Okay, first we got the washroom vapors. Okay, so imagine this, you're in class and you raise your hand to go to the washroom. The teacher then grants you permission and you head on down through the hallways and make it to the washroom. So you open the door and boom, there's like six dudes all chilling in the washroom, taking up as much space like they're the gatekeepers, while they're smacking their vapes, creating a thick fog in the entire washroom like bro i'm just trying to take a dump or a little tinkle and there's cherry smelling fog that just came out of your german fessed mouth blocking my vision like what if i missed the urinal or toilet because of your vape clouds visually impairing me it would be your fault and therefore your mess to clean up don't be like these guys next we have the kids who vape during class this is the kid who can't go a whole period without hitting their pen and they try to hide the smoke by blowing it into their sweater or out an open window when the teacher isn't looking but then sometimes the kid gets caught and called out by the teacher and it usually ends up like this. <sighs> Are you vaping in my class, Jordan? Uh, no, why would I do that? It's like really bad for you, you know that, miss? Go to the office now, Jordan. Come on, miss, I- Now! Okay, fine. Stupid. I hate you. Next up, we have the beggar. This kid will beg and bother other people who have vapes for a hit, and they are literally allergic to buying their own device. They're like comparable to a parasite just leeching other people's e-juice for themselves. <sighs> Yo, is that a vape? Yeah. Can I get a hit, bro? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yo, how is it, bro? Yo, can I get another one? Uh, I mean, sure. Bro, last one, I swear. Fine, last one. Yo, bro, please, bro, I'm begging. One last one, man. Please, bro, please. Bruh. Next, we have the kid who could do tricks. So this kid has been vaping for a good amount of time and saw people doing some tricks with their vape on the internet and thought it was the coolest thing ever and began watching YouTube tutorials on how to blow O's vape trick. All in all, these kids are pretty chill and I'm not gonna lie, the tricks these people do with vape clouds are pretty cool. <laughs>
Well, you can't lie, they're pretty cool. Next up, we got the Pro Vapor. This guy has completely given up on getting rid of their addiction and moved on from your average disposable vapes. He's using some next level upgraded vapes that look like parts that should be found in a robot. One hit from one of these will have you turning into a transformer ready to fight some Decepticons. Autobots, roll out. Next, we have the I'm Not Addicted Kid. This kid will use any remaining lunch money given from his parents just to buy more carts and will argue with you on how they aren't addicted when they clearly are and they just don't want to admit it. These types of people will argue like their life depends on it. Yo, dude, are you vaping, bro? Yeah, bro. I thought you quit. Yeah, bro, after this car runs out, I'm done for good. Trust me. Yeah, right, bro. You said that like three other times. You're definitely addicted. I am not, bro. I can quit like anytime I want to. You think I'm gonna let this chemical dictate what I do? No, man. Okay, whatever you say. Two days later. <sighs> Oh man, it's out of juice. One mango cart, please. Boy, if you don't- And finally, we have the classic kid who loses their vape. This kid is so addicted to his vape that he's built like a reliance to it. My bro needs it or else he will die and explode into a thousand pieces. But when he loses it, he starts freaking out like he's the Joker. Like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Like he just lost his newborn baby looking like Gollum from The Hobbit. He starts looking everywhere in his room and starts moving stuff everywhere creating a whole mess. Like usually they find it in the most obvious location in the end too like in the pocket of their jacket like nice one man you just made a whole mess in your room that you have to clean up now when it was in the most obvious place to check Listen, I know it's hard to get over an addiction, but you should really be mindful about what you allow your body to intake. Because vapes are a new technology, there hasn't been enough extensive research to uncover the long-term side effects it may cause you. So for all we know, you guys could be contributing towards some next level super duper ultra mega death disease for yourselves. It also drains your wallet like fast, so yeah, just quit. It will benefit you way more. Okay, bye. Dreams. Oh, dreams. A thing that all of us humans experience at the end of a long day of work or school during bedtime. You know, dreams are really a fascinating phenomenon to me. Like the fact that when we go to sleep and our brain can just cook up another reality for us to live in for the duration that we're unconscious is crazy to me. Like how does that even work? It's like virtual reality, but in our heads. And the fact that each dream is just a jumble of your past thoughts and experiences is just mesmerizing. So I did a bit of Googling and apparently dreams occur during a phase in your sleep called REM or rapid eye movement, where your brain is most active during your sleep, which doesn't really help. Like how does my brain cook up these weird realities? I gotta know. Sorry about that, but anyways, today we're going to be discussing the different types of dreams that a human can experience. Alright, first up is daydreaming. So this isn't really like a proper dream, but daydreaming typically occurs when you're bored as shit. Like if you're in class, you may zone out or doze off and think about something else to try to make time go by quicker. So you might daydream about like not being in class, going back home and knocking out, going on an adventure to an imaginary land, imagining your bright future ahead of you. <coughs> being loved. And that's really about it when it comes to daydreaming. Now let's talk about recurring dreams. So a recurring dream is basically a specific dream that you get periodically when you go to sleep. And the most common recurring dreams that you can experience could be losing your teeth, falling from the air, public nakedness, being late to school or work, and being unprepared for a test. Now I've experienced all of these and they all suck. You're basically just panicking throughout your entire dream. Like in those dreams where I lose my teeth, I'm just chilling. But the second I wobble my teeth, they they just all start falling out in a chain reaction and it's got me panicking and stressing out here looking like an old man with no teeth and in the dreams where i'm falling i'm just randomly spawned at 5,000 feet in the air and i'm just falling at a constant of 9.81 meters per second squared plummeting towards the ground and the second i hit the ground i wake oh. up in real life and my body jerks like i actually hit the ground and now i'm just confused and don't know where i am in a cold sweat and it's 3 a.m in the morning bro what the fuck <laughs> Then this one time I had a dream where I went to school normally, but while in class I looked down and realized I had no pants on. So I started panicking and rushed out of the classroom and started searching the entire school for my missing pants. And I just couldn't find it. Shit just vanished and became a lost artifact. And I didn't end up finding my pants and I just woke up in the morning and I was like, ah, uh, 
what the fuck was that? Now apparently psychologists have attempted to figure out why we experience these types of dreams and gave potential meanings to them. Like dreams of falling can mean that something in your life isn't going well. Dreams about losing teeth can mean a feeling of loss of control and that you're worried about something. Being naked in public can mean you're embarrassed about something about yourself. Being late to school can mean you feel a great amount of pressure in your life. And being unprepared for a test can mean you're possibly going through a change or transition in your life. So take these all with a grain of salt cause there's not really a sincere answer yet for the cause of these recurring dreams. But low key, why are some of these kind of facts? Now let's talk about vivid dreams. Now vivid dreams usually are a joyous or comfortable experience and when you awake from one it can leave you wanting to return back to the dream. Now a bit ago I was having a lot of vivid dreams consisting of me being a kid again and being in elementary school. More specifically being in class, playing at recess, in gym class, and just being with my old elementary school friends. And the same thing goes with high school. It's definitely because I high key miss being in elementary school and high school and I just hold on to these memories very dearly and when I wake up from them I just be lying down staring at my ceiling like damn I'm growing up fuck Next, let's talk about progressive dreams. Now, a progressive dream is a dream that can continue over a period of nights following the same theme. Think of it like a save file, but for dreams. Now, this has not happened to me over a period of nights, but it's happened to me over a period of minutes. So I had this dream of me and a friend. We were transported into the Pokemon game, and we were in Pallet Town, and we became Pokemon trainers and set off on our journey across the Kanto region. But along the way, we see Carly and Sam from iCarly, and we say, what up, to them, and they join us along the journey, but as we began to venture off into our Pokemon journey, I woke up and I was like, yo, nah, no way I woke up. That dream was about to get crazy. So then I desperately tried to go back to sleep and I eventually did. And the crazy part is, the story continued and we continued where we left off and began our journey by sailing across the seas to fight and capture different Pokemon and collect gym badges to battle the Elite Four. Man, that was definitely one of the best dreams ever, bro. Being in the Pokemon universe with my homie and Carly and Sam, crazy collab. Now we got false awakening dreams. Now a false awakening dream is basically while you're in your dream you believe that you are awake but in reality you aren't you're dreaming and you just go about your daily routine brushing your teeth washing your face eating breakfast all that stuff and even just you waking up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom or kitchen and then you return to bed and then you would wake up and be like what the fuck that was a dream all along now i've never experienced a dream like this ever but to the people who have should have saved your game file you dumbass now let's talk about nightmares now, I don't need to explain to you guys what a nightmare is, you guys already know, but while experiencing a nightmare, you are always undergoing feelings of anxiety, horror, or sadness, and it sucks in the moment. So I'll share a few of the nightmares that I've experienced and written down in my notes app. Nightmare number one, the hotel. So I was in this hotel with one of my homies and we were just chilling around until suddenly freaking Patrick Bateman himself appears out of nowhere and sliced my friend in half with a sword. And I don't know, out of nowhere, I guess I got a sword too. And I started trying to slice Mr. Bateman, but bro had like armor on or something cause my slices weren't doing shit. So I'm like, yo, screw this, I'm out and ran out of the hotel room and booked it down the hallway. But for some reason, it started becoming like an infinite loop. Like the same sequence of events kept happening. Like it was a save file of a game constantly being loaded in. Yeah, I didn't like that dream one bit. But anyways, on to Nightmare number two, Zombie Apocalypse. So I was in Black Ops 2 Zombies with my brother and a friend and our mission was to head on over to a family friend's house on foot, which was a long journey away. So we were hopping on top of houses to avoid the zombies below and after a few hours of trying to find bro's house, we just gave up and headed over to a local school. And there was this huge wall like from Attack on Titan, so we climbed up the wall, but right when we got to the top of the wall, it somehow turned into a flying pirate ship that started moving and we began shooting the zombies on the ground floor. And we see this other group of survivors and my friend yells out to them in Spanish for them to hop on our ship. So we chuck them a rope and they climb it and get on our ship and the ship begins to move again. And that's where the dream ends. Kinda wish I continued the storyline for this dream cause it started as a nightmare, but when we got to the ship it started getting fun, but now it is forever lost. R.I.P. Now let's talk about a night terror. Now just hearing the word NIGHT TERROR just scares me already. But a night terror is basically a sleep disorder that causes the person to quickly awake from their sleep in a terrified state. Like they can wake up screaming, flailing, or crying. Now night terrors are a pretty rare occurrence and typically happen for children between the ages of 3 and 12 years old. So a message to you kids 
watching, think twice before you go to sleep because the night terrors- They're gonna get ya! I'm kidding, but I don't have any recollection of experiencing anything like this. Maybe when I was younger, but apparently you tend to not remember your night terrors. Now let's talk about weird dreams. Now we all have our own weird dreams that are random as shit and just don't make sense. Like you just be teleporting all over the place to new locations or familiar places somehow have new locations in them. And I have a few weird dreams that I want to share. Dream number one, beef ribs. So I was in a car with some girl and she was driving and she didn't have a license or even know how to drive. And while driving, she runs over someone and they uh get a little bruised, you know? And then the police show up and inspected the body and the body looked like beef ribs. Dream number two, I met the goat. So me and a group of friends were fighting monsters and a female boxing dummy started following us. So we shoved her down a sewer and proceeded to fill up the sewer with rice so she couldn't get out. And we then head over to this park and I'm talking to this person about movies on a hill and it jump cuts to me walking home and I get a DM from the man himself, Playboy Cardi. I was hyped. So I linked up with Cardi and he showed me some new music he was dropping and we played GTA together. Dream numero 3, orange peels. So I had this dream when I was pretty sick years back and it has still haunted me to this day. So I was basically in this white room and I was holding this tangerine and every time I peeled the tangerine, the peels would just come back. So I just kept trying to peel it and it just kept going and going for what felt like forever. Yeah, this dream deadass felt like torture and has stuck with me for years. It's day to this day. Dream number four. GTA heist. So me and three other friends were doing a GTA heist setup and the mission was to head over to some hotel to look for plankton. So we enter the hotel and head inside the elevator to his floor and enter his room to find him. So I spotted his ass and I stepped on him instantly taking his life. And then we instantly get five stars. So now we got a dip and we head on outside holding out against the cops and we start running towards the nearest cars but every time we got close to a car it just despawned on us for no reason. But after a bit of time we finally get a car and we start driving towards our destination while having like four choppers on our ass and a bunch of cop cruisers. We then get blinking stars and call Wesley to remove our heat but somehow we get stars again and we drive our car into the ocean to lose the cops and we swam towards the island to complete the mission yeah uh, rereading these now sometimes i wonder to myself what goes on inside of my head now let's talk about lucid dreams now lucid dreams are a type of dream where you become aware in your dream that it's a dream and this allows you to have full control of your dream, allowing you to do anything, even the impossible. Now, I've never experienced a lucid dream ever, and I want to so bad, to the point where I've started writing down my dreams in my notes app, just to increase the chances of it happening ever so slightly. Cause bro, a lucid dream is like Gary's Mod Sandbox. You can just basically do anything you want. Bro, when I experience one, I'm gonna fly, shoot fireballs, explode things, teleport. Like the possibilities are endless. And I know writing your dreams on paper is better, but let's be honest, am I really gonna wake up get up grab a piece of paper and a pencil and write no man my phone is right there when i wake up so i'm gonna use that okay now let's talk about wet dreams Stupid things I believed as a kid, part two. Kids are dumb. Like, to the kids watching this, you're dumb. You know, I just had to say it, including myself when I was a kid, and even now, to be honest. You'll understand and agree with the statement as you grow up. Like, kids just believe basically anything you tell them, which is why I'm making the sequel for the stupid things I believed in as a kid. All right, the first thing we'll talk about is the invention of color. Now, almost every kid had to believe that color was invented. Like, there's no way you didn't. Now, technically, you can't say color was invented because according to history, Sir I Isaac Noon invented the color wheel in 1660 during the renaissance period of inventions. But no, I used to believe everybody in like the 1900s lived in a world without color. Like shit was just always black and white. And this was definitely because I used to watch like the old Mickey Mouse and Popeye cartoons on TV. And whenever I was shown footage of people in the 1900s or a photograph, it was always in black and white. So I just put two and two together and boom, color must have not existed back then. And they must have invented it or discovered it. Here's how I think color was invented. Benson.
Yeah, I swear to god, this was how color was exactly invented, bro. Next, we have surviving an airplane crash. Okay, so when I was a kid, I believed that I could survive an airplane crash. Yeah, a damn airplane crash. And you want to know the method? So when the plane is crashing, what you're going to do is stand near the door of the plane, and as it nears the ground, you're going to jump out at the last second, and boom, you just survived an airplane crash. Now, obviously, this isn't how it works at all, and you would be carrying the momentum of the plane with you as you jump out. So in theory, you would need to jump the opposite direction that the plane is moving at the same speed that the plane is traveling to cancel the impact, which is not possible. It's like some physics shit like that or something, I don't know, but end of story, you're not surviving, little bro. Now let's talk about surviving from heights. Now, okay, this was because I watched way too much Minecraft videos when I was younger, but I believe that I could survive falling from a big ass height as long as there was a one by one water source that I could land in. Like, I just thought, oh, it works in Minecraft, so it must apply to real life too. Nope, here's what it's gonna really look like. Next, let's talk about dinosaurs. Now, we all believed in dinosaurs when we were younger. Don't lie. And I believed in them because of Dino Dan. And you know, they did exist millions of years ago, that is. You know, we have their fossils and skeletons preserved in museums and shit. But I don't even know how I came to think of this, but I thought dinosaurs were gonna be a thing in the future. Uh -oh, what? Retard alert. <laughs> okay, okay, hear me out, hear me out. I used to watch this show called Dinosaur Train, and in the show, they had this like time traveling train that could go back in time to specific eras in the age of dinosaurs, like the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods. And I guess that led to me thinking dinosaurs would exist again in the future. I don't know, I was an interesting kid. Next, let's talk about the world ending in 2012. Now, way back in 2009, there was this upcoming movie called 2012, which was basically some sci-fi movie of the world ending, and I remember seeing an ad of it on TV and seeing meteors hitting Earth, earthquakes, buildings collapsing, tsunamis. Like, the whole world was just going to shit in the trailer. And five-year-old me took it literally, and I genuinely thought the world was gonna end in 2012. Like, I thought the second the year 2012 came, this shit would instantly start. And I remember telling my friends and even my teacher that the world was gonna end in 2012 and my friends believed it. And I remember telling my teacher and my teacher just laughed at me and told me that it wasn't. I just remember me stressing like I was thinking about all the things I needed to do before 2012 hits. And I remember the night before the new years of 2012, I was just waiting for something to happen right when the clock struck 12 and when it did, Bruh. nothing happened and I was like, oh. We good, we straight. Next, let's talk about owning a candy store. Now, when I was younger, I was obsessed with candy and chocolate. Like every Halloween, I'd be on that trick-or-treating grind and snacking on all the free candy that I got. And I thought to myself, hmm, if I want more candy, I should own a candy store. Cause I've walked by like corner stores or candy shops and saw all the candy and shit they had, which made me want to own a candy store just to have all the candy to myself. So I made it one of my life goals to own a candy store when I grow up just so I could eat all the candy that I want. And you know, I was young so I obviously didn't take into account that candy stores bought all the candy from wholesalers with their own money and that their primary goal was to sell candy not eat at all so yeah maybe I'll still make the dream come true one day next let's talk about teachers now I bet a lot of you guys believe that teachers lived at schools like it just made sense in our child brains like I only see you at school and nowhere else so it must mean that you live in the school like as a kid this just made total sense like I really thought teachers had like a whole home setup in the schools like they slept in sleeping bags in the classroom they got the school bathrooms you know and the kitchen well at least at my school we had a kitchen and the day i found out i was baffled mind blown like that information had me like like you're telling me you own your own house and live your own separate life away from being a teacher at school? That was a wild discovery for me. Next, let's talk about the moon. Now, I don't even know or even remember how I came to believe this, but I believe that the moon was made out of cheese. Like I probably saw something mentioning this on a cartoon I watched on TV, or because the moon has those craters on it that makes it look like the goofy ass generic sliced cheese that has the holes in it. I don't know, but I always dreamed on going to the moon and getting a taste of some moon cheese. I also used to think the moon would follow me when I walked home at night. Like no matter where I went or how fast I ran, the moon would still follow me. And obviously it's because the moon is just super far away to where it doesn't seem to move at all when you move. Compared to objects like trees that are super close and you can visually see that they move. The moon's a stalker. Next, let's talk about Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary was this challenge where you go into the bathroom and say Bloody Mary three times into the mirror and apparently a ghost would appear. And I used to do this with my friends in school and that shit had us shaking in our boots and sprinting out of the bathroom 
bathroom screaming. And that shit just made me scared of being in bathrooms, bro. Like, whenever I'd go into a bathroom, even my own at home, I'd have my eyes locked on the mirror just in case I'd see another face or a ghost would come out of the mirror. And I'd be speed running, brushing my teeth, and showering because I just did not trust bathrooms one bit. Next, let's talk about food. Now, I used to think that if I ate a watermelon seed or any kind of seed from a fruit or vegetable, that it would grow a plant inside of my stomach. And I'd be scared that the plant would grow big enough to grow outside of my mouth. I also thought that eating carrots would make my vision better and thought that eating fish would help you swim better. Because my mom at the dinner table told me this stuff. Like, I genuinely thought that if I ate a bunch of carrots, I would have like 20-20 vision or I could see like different wavelengths that regular humans couldn't see. And I thought that if I ate a lot of fish, I'd become like Michael Phelps and be smoking everyone at the local pool. And I know my mom was just trying to make me eat my vegetables and shit, which is good because I'm not a picky eater. I also used to think that swallowing gum would stay in my stomach for seven years, which was ridiculous because it doesn't even make sense. Because sure, the synthetic parts of gum doesn't break down the same as other foods, but it sure doesn't stay in our stomachs. You'll shit it out eventually. Next, let's talk about careers. Now, growing up, teachers told us that we could be whatever we want when we grew up. So my dumbass wanted to be a pirate. <laughs> You know, watching Pirates of the Caribbean and Spongebob growing up just inspired me, you know? Now, if you've watched Salmonella's video on the daily life of a pirate, you'd know that it wasn't the best career choice. Like, these dudes were riddled with scurvy, diseases, and all other disgusting conditions out at sea. And looking back now, I'm happy I didn't pursue a career as a pirate. Because how would you even go on to become one? Like, would I just go to some employment service and be like, Yes, hello ma'am, I'm looking to become a pirate. A what now? A pirate. Get out of my office. Yo, my bad. Next, let's talk about being the chosen one. So hear me out. You ever just been outside and realize that you see like floating dots in your vision just moving around and then you think to yourself, holy shit, are those like atoms or particles? Am I like special? Am I like the chosen one? And then you make up this whole story in your head where government agents break into your house and take you away to some lab to run tests on you. And then you become like a superhero or someone of importance working for your country or something like that. Just me? SHUT THE FUCK UP! Minimum wage jobs. So, if you've ever worked a minimum wage job, you'd understand the amount of pain it is working on. And if you haven't, great, I've got a job application cooked up right for you. Get your ass to indeed.com right now. I'm kidding. You're actually lucky you haven't, because working one changes a person. It scars them, because trust me, I know. I've worked my fair share of minimum wage jobs. I've worked as a smoothie barista, busser, cashier, daycare volunteer, so I'm pretty qualified to speak on this topic. So today, I'll be talking about how awful these minimum wage jobs are, and I'll provide some tips to help those who already have one. Alright, first let's talk about the qualifications for minimum wage jobs. So everyone goes through this thought process at one point in their lives. So you have zero work experience and you're just chilling in bed watching TikTok and all of a sudden a thought pops into your head. Man, I'm broke as shit. I ain't got no money in my bank account and I can't keep letting my homies spot me for food always. How am I supposed to own a sweet mansion with 16 different Lambos that come with the finest shorties in the game? Well shit, I need to get myself a job. Okay, so you head on over to Indeed and start scrolling through the job listings, but you realize a lot of these jobs require at least a bachelor's degree or some sort of experience. Like bro, I was 16 years old at the time. How am I supposed to have a bachelor's degree already? Was I supposed to speedrun school or something? And bro, I didn't have any prior work experience at all other than volunteering. But the shit that I did barely counts. So how am I supposed to get work experience if I haven't had a job to get experience? Like just hire me, man. Worst case scenario is I head over to the sweatshop to gain some work experience. Like why am I required this long list of requirements just to get paid 15 an hour bagging groceries? And speaking about the pay, bro, 15 an hour is a high Highway robbery. Like, hold up, let me see 15 Canadian dollars to US dollars conversion rate. Okay, I'm getting paid $10.92 US dollars by the hour. Like, bro, I'm out here getting scammed. Like, you know what they say, you only live once, and I'm out here giving one hour of my precious time on this planet for a measly $15. 
I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like a fair trade to me. Especially with that whole inflation thing going on, yeah, you're gonna be making pennies eventually. Like, when I was working, I always didn't want to buy lunch, because I would always be thinking, damn, I'm about to spend one hour of pay for a burger and fries, shit. Like, I'm out here to make money, not spend it, you know? No feeling at work is better than receiving that nice $700 check for $40 of your life. And don't get it twisted, employers can raise your hourly wage, but, uh, this exists, so yeah, good luck on that. Now let's talk about the types of jobs you should expect to get. Now there are multiple part-time jobs that students can get, but the most common ones I like to group into the starter jobs category. And those three jobs being a cashier, a busser, and a camp counselor. Now each of them has their own pros and cons that come with the job, and I'll just run through them and provide a quick description of the job. Cashier. So as a cashier, you're going to be checking out customers, scanning items, dealing with transactions, managing the POS system, bagging groceries, all while giving good customer service. So yeah, don't completely fail math class. And during your downtime, you'll most likely have to help your coworkers with other stuff, so that's not all you're gonna be doing. As a cashier, the pros are, you'll make more money, you'll probably get like a 10 to 20% discount on items, and the cons are, you'll be scheduled to work more hours, you'll sacrifice the cost of your sanity, and the slow development of back pain for standing in the same spot for hours, and you'll have to deal with rude customers pretty often. Now for a busser. So your job as a busser is to get the food in the kitchen out to the tables and clear tables of dirty plates and shit. So you gotta memorize the layout of the restaurant and the table numbers or you're gonna look like a dumbass wondering where the right table is. And like a cashier, this isn't the only thing you're gonna be doing. You'll probably be doing a lot of prepping for side dishes, cleaning, and other side missions that your manager forces you to do. As a buster, the pros are extra money from tips, the chefs make you free food, you get to increase your step count, this is good for those who don't touch grass, and the cons are high stress and environment, rude customers, heavy lifting, multitasking, 24-7 walking, exhaustion, usually understaffed so you'll be doing more work, busy hours are fucked, and your manager will exploit you. Now I'll let you decide if this is a good job. I gotta get out of here! And finally, for a camp counselor, your main job is to just watch over children and make sure they don't do stupid stuff and get hurt. But don't be fooled, cause you might be like, Wow, I just go on field trips to the zoo and chill with kids all day? That sounds easy. Well, not really, cause a lot of these kids are the most evil, annoying, and troublemaking gremlins on earth. Yeah! Especially because kids nowadays are growing up watching these dudes. And TikTok, it's even more doomed. Be prepared to be supervising all these TikTok gremlin fiends screaming out every TikTok reference there is. Yo, is that Ohio? It's gotta be Ohio. Bro thinks he's speed. I'm the biggest bird. I'm the biggest bird. As a camp counselor, the pros are field trips, you'll be touching grass more, you become a role model, and you won't have to deal with customers. Now the cons are, you'll be dealing with annoying ass kids instead. You'll be in scorching weather a lot, and it's mentally and physically exhausting. Now that we've been over the three starter jobs, let's now talk about what you'll be encountering on the job. Customers. Now for the most part while on the job, you'll have regular nice people walking in and they'll just be doing their thing like a regular person. But sometimes you'll have to interact with rude customers and they'll just ruin your day just by speaking to you. Like this one time I was working at this restaurant and serving these two ladies and they called me over and complained about a part of the food being uncooked. So you know, I took it back to the chef and he said it was cooked and that they were tripping so then i took back the food to the two ladies and said that the chef said that it was fine and gave it back to them but then after that every time i walked past their table they kept talking to each other about how the food was terrible every time i walked by like brah i wasn't even the one that cooked it I just bring the food over. Like, I knew what these Karens were doing. I swear these Karens were trying to do the cliche, oh, where's your manager tactic to get free food? Like, bro, they need to patch that strategy because it's bullshit. People out here are just trying to get a free meal for being an asshole. And bro, this isn't even a customer, but sometimes expect some crackheads to head in the store and just be prepared for the worst because you don't know what these people are going to do. They're unpredictable. Like, one time I was working at the restaurant and this crackhead walked in, right? And then he proceeded to lay on the floor blocking people people from entering and exiting the restaurant and bro was just sleeping on the floor like it was his own house and everyone in the restaurant was just looking at him but eventually my boss called the police and got his ass out of there but that story is pretty tame compared to the story that i'm about to tell you right now so my co-worker told me this story so one time a crackhead walked in and took a fat shit on one of the chairs and left 
and my coworker had to take the chair and just throw it away in the dumpster at the back. Yeah, so just be wary of these people, cause I don't think anyone wants a doo doo chair. Now let's talk about coworkers. Now coworkers are the most important thing when it comes to working a job, cause they're the only people you'll be able to talk to normally, and they're like your coping mechanism to help you get through your shift. Now you can have great coworkers who do their job correctly, or you'll get unlucky and be stuck with a slacker that will make you do more work than needed to make up for their lack of work. But other than that, become friends with your coworkers, cause it's hard to get by on a shift without talking to someone, and talking to someone will help you make your shift more bearable. Now let's talk about managers. Now managers man, they can either be the chillest person in the world or the bitchiest person ever created. There's no in between. You either got Mordecai and Rigby or Benson. Most of the time, you're gonna get a Benson. And you know, be prepared to get bossed around a lot. You know, since they're in that higher position of power, they can just boss you around and make you do all the dirty work while they sit back. Which is so infuriating cause now you're busting your ass off two times more for the same amount of pay. And some managers like to mess around with your paycheck and change a few numbers here and there or take money off your tips. And bro, managers that do this go to a special place in hell. Now let's talk about the boss. Don't fuck with him. Just work at 100% efficiency when you see him like everyone else does. So he doesn't suspect that you're a slacker. Now let's talk about tips and tricks. So you want some tips and tricks, eh? Well, here's tip number one. <laughs> I know you've been thinking about quitting, bro. Might as well commit to it. I know you want free from the shackles. Tip number two. Borrow. Bro, just start borrowing things. Pretend your workplace is a library and borrow things that you want to borrow. Hey, you see that carton of eggs there? Take it. But I don't need eggs. I have them at home. I don't care. Take it. Take it now. Types of people on the internet. You know, with the quick rise of the internet taking over literally the entire world, it has contributed to a lot of good in the world, like making global communication really simple and convenient, but it has also come with a lot of negatives, like how people behave while on the internet. Like I truly believe some people just shouldn't have an internet connection for the corny things they proceed to broadcast to the world. So today we're gonna talk about the types of people on the internet. First, let's talk about the flexor. Now the flexor, he's the most arrogant and annoying dude ever, bro. This is the type of guy to just constantly show off their expensive designer brands, whether it be clothing, cars, or jewelry. Like, these people need to realize that no one else gives a damn about all the expensive stuff that they own. First of all, we already know all them clothes and jewelry are probably fake. Like, you ain't special. I know for a fact your entire fit is from Panabai. Like, stop trying to be like your favorite rapper, man. And secondly, I already know these dudes are just renting these supercars or they just find some random car on the street to flick up with that isn't even theirs to begin with. Like, come on, bro. Have some self-respect. Like, why are you trying to cap about your social status to people? Like, that's just mad corny. And don't even get me started on them flexing their stacks of cash. Like, bro, we can see that they're all $1 bills. You ain't slick, man. But yeah, I don't understand why people do this. It just makes you come off as a pretentious narcissist. Next, you got the hackers. Now, most of the time, you'll encounter quote-unquote hackers around the internet and most of the time these people are straight cappers like these people will straight up lie and say they can do all these outlandish hacker stuff while you damn know they're just a 12 year old on the other side of the screen just typing all this cap online like i met one of these people in real life one time at a summer camp i used to go to and this kid would literally just go around and tell people that he could hack them he'd say stuff like i could easily hack into that laptop you're using like he would even threaten to hack me and my friends like who did bro think he was was. But we just did not believe him one bit. But then you got the actual people who know to hack and I would just stay away from these people. Cause you already know these dudes are always up to no good. These dudes be hacking like actual companies, celebrities, and even governments. Like god damn chill. I'm just saying I wouldn't want my personal information like an IP address to be in the hands of these people. And neither should you. But don't worry cause your IP address is safe with today's sponsor ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is a virtual private network that helps hide your IP address and your location as you surf the internet. All you gotta do is open up the program and pick from the 94 countries ExpressVPN allows you to connect to and boom, it's that simple. Say goodbye to all those cringe hackers who say, Haha, got your IP address, now I know where you live and you're about to get booted offline kid. Say goodbye. Well, little does he know, I'm using ExpressVPN and this hacker thinks I live in Los Angeles, California and thinks I'm gonna get my internet shut down, which is far from the truth. While he's just gonna be wasting his time trying to do malicious 
stuff to me, I'm just gonna be kicking back and watching some shows on Netflix. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention that ExpressVPN can allow you to view shows that aren't normally viewable in your country? Say you want to watch some episodes of Friends, but it's not available in your region. No biggies, good thing you have ExpressVPN to help you with that. Just simply open up the program and connect to the United Kingdom server and voila, you can now binge Friends and thousands of other shows from whatever country you want. I find myself in these situations a lot of times when trying to pick a show to watch, and ExpressVPN has been super clutch to save the day for me. And if you want to give ExpressVPN a try for yourself, now is the best time. Go to expressvpn.com slash Loney and get three months free of charge when you sign up for a 12 month plan. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the video. Next, you got the stands. Now these people are just way too obsessed with famous people. Whether they be a music artist, actor, cartoon, or a YouTuber, these people just spend way too much of their own free time invested into the lives of their idols. Like, it's low-key kinda sad. Like, live your own life, Lil Bro. Go touch some grass and leave that messy, stank room of yours. Like, damn. Like, just to name a few celebrities and shows with the worst stands, the entire K-pop industry, Rick and Morty, My Hero Academia, Playboy Cardi, Dream. Like, the list goes on and on and on, and I can't cover them all in this video. Like, some of these stands be fantasizing about having a relationship with their favorite artist. Like, what the hell? I'm looking at you, K-pop stands by the way but just watch out for these people because swear to god if you tell one of these people that you are a fan of the thing they stand over they'll start quizzing you on every single fact of the artist or show yeah you watch my hero academia yeah sometimes i ain't all caught up but i've been watching recently yeah Arr, okay pop quiz what happens to deku at exactly 17 minutes and 32 seconds on the ninth episode of season two bro how am i supposed to know time's up deku actually fights a demon monster called jaquavius von dingleberry the third. So you say you like Cardi. Yeah, mess with Cardi, bro. He's fire. All right, if you like Cardi so much, name every Cardi song, including leaks in chronological order from Sir Cardi era all the way to the present day Cardi. Bro, like, what, what's wrong with you, man? Next, let's talk about the simps. Now, simps, bro, they are the most down bad people you will ever encounter on the internet. Like, these are the types of people who would watch the just chatting and bathtub category on Twitch, and they would donate all their hard-earned cash to these content creators in hopes of getting something in return. Like, trust me, little bro, you're gonna get more in return by putting that money into an index fund, not some e-girl's pockets. Like, bro, how are you gonna work your butt off at your 9 to 5 only to come home and donate all that money away to some e-girl on Twitch? Like, goddamn, the logic just isn't adding up. Like, use that money to benefit yourself or save it. Like, I don't know how many times people gotta say this, but she ain't gonna date you, little bro. Stop draining your life savings away to some random person on the internet. And stop buying subs to their channel bro being a tier 3 sub to someone isn't a flex bro it's the complete opposite of a flex you're just making the already rich streamer even more rich now let's talk about the discord mods so discord mods their entire life basically just revolves around being on discord like this is the type of person to be like um no sending memes in general chats please they should be in the memes chat only like oh my god these dudes think just because they are a moderator on a discord server that they have an ungodly amount of power over people. Like their whole job just consists of them banning, kicking, and muting people left and right, when in reality, these dudes need to leave their room and take a shower for once in their lives. Like look at your room bro, is this really what you want to be living like? Like damn shoddy, you live like this? Like please just do us all a favor and go take your monthly shower ASAP, and please consider making some changes to the amount of showers you have in a month, cause that stench y'all got is a health hazard to the public. And god, I just know your musty ah chair has been fermented and marinating some next level diseases and fungi. Like, please go clean your room and, uh, do this one special thing for all of us and leave the house and touch some grass, please. Because I already know you ain't getting paid to moderate these Discord servers. Go find a job indeed.com now. Alright, it might seem like I'm cooking these dudes a lot, but trust me, it's well deserved, and I know not all mods are like this, and there are a lot of chill mods out there, so yeah, this isn't directed at y'all, okay? Now let's talk about the internet gangster. Now the internet gangster, they think they're so tough and act hard all the time on the internet. You'd see their posts on IG and they'd be flicked up with blickies doing all sorts of gang signs, while you full heartedly know he ain't like that at all, and he's definitely straight from the suburbs. Like, how are you gonna claim that you had it all rough, like? 
like, yo, I came straight from the mud because my ends were dangerous. I know the struggle, bro. Like, every night I was hearing loud bangs. I couldn't even tell if there were fireworks or gunshots, man. No cap slat. Bro, don't you go to, like, a top private school in the country and have baseball practice on Saturdays? Uh, nah, man. I'm a thug. Like, stop capping, bro. Like, you didn't have no struggles in your ends while your ends was looking like this. Like, where's the struggle in this image? All I see and hear are the sounds of a summertime bliss, kids playing basketball in their driveway, and barbecues all summer. Where's the struggle at? I have made a continuous lapse in my judgment, and the suburbs are indeed, quote, like that, end quote. Next, we got the keyboard warriors. Now, these are the types of people who love to argue for days on days on end. Like, they purposely try to get into conflicts with people online just to argue with people. And like their name tells you, they start absolutely going ham and cheese on their keyboard, typing up literal essays against the person they're arguing with. Like, goddamn, to the keyboard warrior, typing is a sport, bro. Like, sure, you can maybe type up a complete 10-page essay on why I'm wrong on a topic on a tweet, but listen, bro. I ain't reading all that. Like, come Come on, do you really think I'm gonna read your 10 page essay with a thesis and work cited at the end? Like, who do I look like to you? Carl Weezer? Get that essay out of here and go exercise something other than your hands and fingers. Dumb ways I've been injured. Getting injured sucks. Like, just dealing with the pain after getting injured just stinks depending on the severity of the injury. Like, some of these injuries got me walking in the most unorthodox ways. Like, goddamn, it's annoying. So, today, I'm gonna tell you guys about the different dumb ways I've been injured. Alright, so the first injury is slipping on nothing. Now this occurred in drama class years ago in elementary school and if you ever had drama class you'd know that typically you're supposed to take off your shoes and do the whole class in your socks and you know since you're in your socks the floor became very slippery. It was like you were walking on ice or something but yeah I don't know this one time I just felt like running across the room like I don't know what possessed me that day but that was what I wanted to do and I did so I ran across the room and I proceeded to slip in the most goofy cartoon way possible and I fell on my back on the ground and my friend Friends proceeded to clown me saying, No way, you just slipped on nothing, you idiot. <laughs> Next, I gotta talk about my knee incident. Now, this happened back when I used to go to this summer camp, and my brother and I would usually show up very early before the actual summer camp would begin, because we wanted to help the staff set up stuff for the activities we do during the day. So, on this bright summer morning at around like 8 a.m., my brother and I were just chilling at the park, playing on the playscape, and in the distance, we saw one of the staff members open up the storage room where they kept all the equipment. But it was more like a dungeon, because when you'd see the interior of it, it was the most run-down looking storage room ever. It was crusty, dusty, maybe even musty. And it was littered with spider webs everywhere. And it just looked like a place where a kidnapper would take their victims to. But anyways, we saw one of the staff members heading in and my brother said, Hey, wanna race to the dungeon? Okay. So we're sprinting at full speed towards this dungeon and not gonna lie, my bro was absolutely smoking me in this race. Like I was a whole four meters behind my bro. Like there was no way in hell I was winning this race. And as I'm running up this upper incline, I trip and fall on my knee and I just start crying my eyes out bro. And I look at my knee to see the damage and man, all I saw was a red hole bro. It was a big cut compared to my tiny legs. And while I'm still sobbing my eyes out on the ground, my brother called over the staff member and she carried me and took me into the dungeon and patched me up but dude the recovery phase for this injury was so bad because whenever i would shower i would need to put a plastic bag over my knee because i couldn't get the cut wet which was so annoying and this injury left me with a permanent scar on my knee that i still have to this day now i gotta talk about the omelet disaster now during quarantine i was bored as hell just doing the same old mundane activities every passing day so one day i thought it would be a good idea to switch up my routine and start learning how to cook stuff other than bacon and eggs eggs by itself. So I thought, hey, an omelet doesn't seem that hard. It's just eggs, cheese, and vegetables. So, you know, I find some basic recipe on YouTube and start following the step-by-step -step instructions, and it was going very well until it got to this one specific step flip the omelet. Now, I had no clue how to do this. Like, I've seen professional chefs like Gordon Ramsay flip stuff effortlessly. So I just kind of said screw it and try to mimic his technique. So I flip the pan and the omelet's in the air and it moves away from the stove top and closer to the floor. So by natural instinct, I catch the omelet with my bare hands and it was burning hot. Yo, god damn! So I instantly dropped it on the floor and my hand was on fire, yo. So I picked up my omelet and put it back on the pan and put my hand under cold water for 
for no joke 10 minutes straight. And it left me with a bunch of blisters on my hand, which sucked. Like, never let me cook again after that tragedy, man. Like, if I was on Hell's Kitchen, just know I'd be booted out right when I enter the show. But, hey, I'm not gonna lie, I still ate that omelette. Hey, man, the five-second rule is a real thing. And I put my blood, sweat, and tears into making that omelette. I'm not just gonna waste my efforts like that and let the omelette do me dirty. So you know I had to clap back and eat, bro. But, yeah, take this as an example of what not to do while cooking. And if you really want to learn how to cook, don't worry. I got you with today's sponsor, Hello Fresh. Fall is right around the corner and HelloFresh is here to help you plan for the busy season ahead with tasty dishes delivered straight to your doorstep. Simply choose your recipes and pick your delivery date, then lay back and enjoy the last days of summer knowing dinner is covered. With HelloFresh, there's no need to stress and worry about shopping for groceries and planning meals on your own. Because HelloFresh takes care of the meal planning and delivers pre-portioned ingredients right to your home. So whipping up a homemade meal is simple and straightforward. HelloFresh keeps your taste buds on their toes with their variety of 40 chef crafted recipes recipes to choose from every week. And if you feel like you won't be able to fit time throughout your day to cook a homemade meal, don't worry because all you need is 15 minutes out of your day and you'll be munching on a tasty, satisfying meal made in the comfort of your own kitchen. Just look for their quick and easy dinner options plus quick breakfasts and lunches too. Personally, my favorite recipe has to be the creamy Dijon dill chicken served with roasted potatoes and broccoli that I cooked up with my friends. It was super delicious. If you want to try out HelloFresh for yourself, go to HelloFresh.com and use code 50 loney at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. Link in the description. Huge thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the video. Now let's talk about my bee sting experience. Now this happened when I was like grade two and I was in the backyard with my bro and we were bored as hell. So what do kids typically do when they're bored? swat flies. So we were in the backyard swatting flies and my brother had the actual fly swatter while I just had some dull stick. And we were racking up our KD, you know, we were going like 20 and 0, going on an absolute killing spree. But then this yellow jacket wasp pulled up on my brother. Yo, it's a wasp! Swat it! And he started swatting it like crazy. And he swatted towards me and it landed right on my chest next to my pepperonis dog. And I got stung. And I just started bawling my eyes out because bee stings hurt. I would know because I got stung like a week ago and the pain would be amplified like 10 times for an eight-year-old so my brother took me back inside and told my mom and i was still bawling my eyes out but my brother had a great idea to stop me from crying he left and got a popsicle and shoved it in my mouth and my fat ass instantly stopped crying and i was enjoying that popsicle like the bee sting didn't even happen bro now we gotta talk about the monkey bar incident now this happened during recess back in elementary school and you know the horizontal poles that the monkey bars are attached to yeah i don't know why i used to do this but i I used to like crawl across them, but my friends and I called it doing the snake. I was like special or something, but I wouldn't recommend anyone to do this, especially if you're a dude. But for this specific recess in particular, I was feeling dangerous and spicy, and I wanted to up the danger levels. And I was gonna walk across that john like a tightrope like I was starring in the Cirque du Soleil. So I climb up the monkey bars like usual, and while I'm up there, I'm thinking, yo, I'ma get all the girls when I pull off this stunt, just watch. So I start walking down the pole, and I got halfway and I was like yo I'ma actually do it but then I slip and fall straight on my back on the wood chip ground and I just lie there on the ground completely defeated just thinking to myself damn I'm an idiot but then I just got up and acted like nothing happened next we gotta talk about my gym box jump incident now this happened actually last year and I was in the gym with a friend and I was doing the shoulder press machine and from the distance I saw the box jump boxes and I thought to myself damn I bet I could box jump two of those boxes easy so I walk over to the box Boxes and set them up so that they were stacked on one another and I mentally prepare myself for my greatest box jump achievement that was about to go down all right I got this it's easy it's just two boxes how hard could it be so I jump and my feet touch the edge of the top box and then I slip and my knee pushed against the edge of the box and I fell on the ground ah yo I'm so stupid bro Yo, why is my knee dented? Yeah, the edges of the box dented my knee for a few minutes and I had to go up to the person working at the front and ask her for bandages. Yeah, I felt like a complete idiot for trying to do this. And I couldn't do leg day for the coming days because of my injury, so I was lacking in that department. <laughs> 
Halloween, originally created by the Celtic people in Europe around 2,000 years ago. Hey, they're my goats, for real. Halloween is arguably the best holiday that we human beings have created. Like, come on, guys. What other holiday is doing free candy giveaways like this, bro? Like, Halloween is my favorite holiday of the year, man. Nothing hits more than the spooky, scary season that is Halloween. So today, we're gonna be discussing the joys that come with Halloween. All right, so first, let's talk about the costumes. Now, Halloween really allows you to let your creativity run wild. Like, you really have the freedom to dress up as anything you want, no matter how weird it is. Like hell, you could dress up as a ketchup bottle, a roll of toilet paper, some craft dinner macaroni and cheese, a furry. Like feel free to let your imagination run wild no matter how goofy of a costume idea you come up with. Now going to school on the day of Halloween was always one of the best parts because you get to see everyone in your school's different Halloween costumes. It was like the school became a museum but specifically for Halloween costumes. And dude, I'm gonna be real here, for the majority of my time living on this planet, all of my Halloween costumes sucked ass. Like I'm talking major donkey cheeks, bro. The only good costume I've ever had in my life was deadass in kindergarten, bruh. And it was a full Spider-Man suit costume, and I just remember loving that costume, man, since the first time my mom showed me it. And the next day, I remember flexing my new costume to my kindergarten friends on our Halloween walk around the neighborhood, and my ass thought I was Spider-Man running around thinking I could climb walls and web sling. Yo, dude, you're not Spider-Man, bro. Bro, stop! Bro! But sadly, kindergarten me didn't know that the Spider-Man costume would be where it peaked in the costume department. Cause the years following that, my costumes were straight booty cheeks. Like bro, I would just put on a wizard hat or a witch hat or a pumpkin hat without the rest of the costume. Cause well, uh, we were broke man and couldn't afford the funds for cool costumes. So I would just wear regular clothes instead. Like bro, it was really rough coming to school with my lame ass costume while everyone else had fire costumes. And dude, I remember one of my friends had an entire Jason costume with the mask and everything thing and even a machete and dude i was just so jealous bro because i wanted a costume like that so bad but i knew my mom would not buy one because she would think it would be a waste of money and dude i remember this one time in halloween man i straight up dressed up like a nerd bro like nah man and i was proud of it too i remember i was going around to my friends like uh -huh, look at me i'm a nerd with the round glasses on and shit like nah bro those were some dark times bro like i really peaked in kindergarten for halloween bro now we gotta talk about the halloween decorations now my family we, we didn't really celebrate Halloween like that, so we wouldn't decorate the front of our house with Halloween decorations. Cause we couldn't afford to spend any money on that shit. But bro, one of my favorite parts about Halloween is seeing everyone's decorations on the front of their house. Like the differently carved pumpkin designs, the spider webs, the skeletons, and all that stuff. Like they just help you get into the spooky Halloween spirit, which I'm all about that. Like I swear some people are so early to set up all their decorations. Like it could be the middle of September and you'd see at least a few houses that already got their Halloween decorations set up. Like damn! Damn, there's still another month to Halloween and they're already locked in and ready like that. And then you got the people who go balls to the walls with their decorations and put maximum effort into making the front of their houses look like an amusement park. Like damn, these people really got that Halloween dog in them to be spending thousands on Halloween decorations. Huh? Like they got all the decorations with the cool lights and the animated Halloween props that make <laughs> laughing and screaming noises. Like shit, slide me a few bands, bro. Like their decorations be so good that sometimes when I walk by one of their spooky scary props, it low-key got me worrying if someone's just acting like a prop and getting ready to grab me or something like i'd be treading lightly and have my guard up at all times ready to fight every time i trick-or-treat at one of these houses now we gotta talk about the absolute best part of halloween which is trick-or-treating now dude i was always just so excited to go trick-or-treating when i was younger like who wasn't like you get to walk around the neighborhood and get some free candy from strangers all for just uttering a sentence trick-or-treat like honestly that sounds like a good deal to me till i see a white van that says free candy bro Free candy? Yo, I'm still walking my ass straight over to that van. Shit, it's free candy. Like, bro, I'm telling you, nothing is better than free, man. That's what I preach. But when I was younger, I would just go around the neighborhood with my mom trick-or-treating door-to-door, and it was just a wholesome night. But right when we got home, my mom would straight up go inspect her gadget on all of my candy, emptying the entire bag on the floor, checking every single piece of candy and chocolate to see if they were laced with anything bad like razor blades or harmful substances. Like, she did not let me eat a single piece of candy until she was done inspecting it. But, like, the thing is, I'm grown up now and i did a little research and apparently all this lace candy stuff is a myth 
Granted, there have been cases in the past, but only like 200 confirmed cases since the year 1958. So that shit is rare as hell. Like, you'd have to be one unlucky kid to get a razor blade or some harmful substance near a bag of candy. But not gonna lie, I would still check your candy just to make sure. And as I grew older, my friends and I would start to go trick-or-treating together, and that was where the real fun began. Because having the freedom to go trick-or-treating with your friends without any supervision from your parents allowed you to go absolutely crazy. Hey, best believe we're on our trick-or-treating hustle grind, hitting up every house around the neighborhood. Like, we took trick-or-treating like it was a sport, bro, because we would compete with one another to see who would end up with the most candy by the end of it. Like, we were not playing around when it came to that sweet Halloween candy. And dude, sometimes you'd walk up to a house and this would happen. Trick-or-treat, trick. -or Oh, 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 tough crowd out here, eh? Yo, bro, just give us some candy, man. You don't gotta be doing all that. Like, bro, I swear these adults thought that was the funniest joke to make to kids trick-or-treating. Like, bro, just shut up and give me your candy. I'm on the clock trying to be my friends over here. And, dude, single-handedly, the best place to trick-or-treat is at the rich neighborhoods, man. Like, bro, that's where the real riches are at. Like, over at the rich neighborhood, they be giving out two times more candy. And they be giving out jumbo-sized chocolate bars, too. Like, dude, if you've never been trick-or-treating at the rich neighborhood around your area, bro, Bro, you gotta try it. It'll change your trick-or-treating career. You gotta get that sweet, sweet, sweet pay raise. You'll go from rags to riches, bro. Like, I remember my first time getting a jumbo-sized Kit Kat bar from this one house, and I was like, damn, I'm trick-or-treating here every single year now. What the hell? Because the Kit Kat bar didn't have two bars of chocolate. No. It had fucking four. That's 2x the original value. Now, that's what I call stonks, boy. And, bro, sometimes I would fill up my entire bag to the brim with candy, and I would have to start putting candy in my pockets, hoodie, or anywhere else that would increase my candy storage even by a little and bro it was just so exhausting carrying an entirely filled up candy bag all around the neighborhood while also running around like it was a straight up workout lugging that fully maxed out candy storage and when i would get back home and drop off all the candy i was tired as hell gasping for air and fiending for a huge gulp of that h2o in my system but come on guys most people at that point would be content with their one bag of candy but me nah 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 i was not no quitter but a halloween hustler at heart this was merely only the beginning because my ass would grab a second bag and head on outside for seconds bro. Like, this candy shit was serious to me. And after I filled up another bag of candy, that's when I would call it quits, because at that point, I've been running around the neighborhood for probably three hours plus. And my ass was way too exhausted and ready to head on back home to drop off the goods. And I would pour all my candy onto the living room floor just to bask in the glory of my spoils of war. And of course, my mom would come over and check the candy. But after she was done, I would go grab my iPad mini from my room and take a picture of all my candy and post it on Instagram to show my friends. Okay, listen, man, this was back in 2015, okay? And I was young so it's passable. Looking back now, it was cringe, I'll admit it. But hey, come on, man. Younger me worked hard to earn that candy, so I had to do a little candy spread on the gram. Like, this was a kid version of a money spread. And dude, I was just a candy fiend when I was younger, and I would munch up so much candy, so my mom would always try to hide my candy bag. But I would always sniff it out and end up finding it. And another thing I gotta mention is the chocolate factory. Now, in previous years of Halloween, I wouldn't even go trick-or-treating, and instead I would go to this chocolate factory after school and line up for like two hours. And they'd set up this miniature haunted house you'd have to go through with these people locked in cells acting like fiends screaming and shit. Not gonna lie, it was kind of scary, but I was a kid, so that's probably why it was scary. But getting scared was worth it, because by the end of the haunted house, you'd be rewarded with a big bag filled to the brim with chocolate, and it was amazing. I probably went to the chocolate factory for like three years, maybe, until they started lowering the amount of chocolate they give out per person. Like, bro, they went from giving big bags to giving bags that were filled like barely half. Like, bruh, that's when I realized I could be getting so much more candy trick-or-treating than wasting two hours waiting in a line for some milk. Like, bro, the line stretched down the entire block and probably even more. Like, there were so many people lining up for some ass. So I stopped going the following years and I just hustled on that trick-or-treating grind for like 10x the reward. All my homies hate the Chocolate Factory and Willy Wonka. My first job as a smoothie barista. A job. Something that all adults strive towards and need for their basic needs to just survive in this capitalistic society. You know, I've never worked in an actual professional career like an office job or anything remotely like that. Like, like, I'm a YouTuber who draws stick figures and I barely get any sunlight on a daily basis. Like, what do you expect? But what I can speak on are minimum wage jobs. Now, I've worked a couple jobs in my time, but today I'm gonna tell you guys about my experience working my first job. Alright, so rewind three years back to 2020 quarantine, and I'm just stuck in the house just doing the most unproductive activities I could spend my time on. Essentially just rotting. But hey, I was just 16 around that time, and with all that time off of school, of course I'm gonna splurge my time, you know? So I'm gonna use that as an excuse. But hey, it got to a point where I was just tired of being lazy and unproductive to where I needed a motherfucking job, bro. So I got my ass on Indeed.com and just started mass applying to all the job listings that I was qualified for. But this came 
short with no luck. I swear even finding a minimum wage job these days takes way too much effort than they realistically should. Like come on, it shouldn't be this hard to just find a shitty job to just work. So I just went old school with it and my friend and I printed multiple copies of our resume and we went to a bunch of stores around our area and started applying and leaving our resumes with the cashiers. So with all our applications submitted to all these establishments, all we had to do was just sit and wait. And a few days later, we both landed interviews at this smoothie place. Let's just call it Juicy Blends. Now for this interview, we also had to do like one hour of training after the talking portion, which just put more at stake and increased the nerves. Like there's no way I'm gonna embarrass myself and make it seem like I'm not fit for the job in training. So we get straight into the interview and it probably went along the lines of, Oh hi, nice to meet you. I'm Jessica. Hi, nice to meet you too. I'm Loney. Let's just get straight into it. So what made you want to work at our establishment? Uh, money? Oh, I mean, I really like how your company markets your drinks as the healthier alternative to other drinks because your competitors seem to put too much sugar into their drinks, leading to many health complications for many people. Fuck yeah, I nailed that question. I'm definitely getting the job. Oh, okay, great answer to that question. Well, what do you want to gain from your experience working here? Money, racks, Benjamins. Oh shit, yo. <coughs> I mean, valuable work experience that will help me succeed in my future endeavors in adulthood. Like bro, I'm telling y'all, if you want the job, just lie. It really is the cheat code to acing an interview. You just gotta make it look like to the employer that you actually care about the company and BOOM! easy employment. But yo, I still had to do the training portion for an hour, which I was most nervous for, because I had to cut a bunch of different fruits, and uh, let's just say my knife skills were pretty ass. I wasn't no fruit ninja at it, but I gave it my best try. And Jessica just basically made me cut a bunch of fruit. Like, name any common fruit, and I had to learn how to cut that shit. And not gonna lie, I have a newfound respect for people like my mom who know how to peel an apple with a knife. Like, I can't do that for the life of me. Like, that apple's gonna end up looking like this by the time I'm done with it. But yeah, I started getting just a tiny bit better and more comfortable at handling a knife. So I started picking up the pace a bit and I was in the midst of cutting this mango. And you know how mangoes are like round and slimy? Yeah, that was the root of my downfall. So I had already skinned the mango and all I needed to do was cut it into slices. And I start cutting the mango and it was going fine. But remember, mangoes be slimy as hell. So as I was cutting, my hand slips close to where I was cutting and uh, well, I cut my finger. Oh shit. Now bruh, there's no way I just made a fool of myself during training when I just told myself that I wasn't about to let that happen. I jinxed myself so hard. But some of you guys might be like, Um, actually, it is training, so it is fine to make mistakes. Nah, bro, it said on the job description to have prior experience handling knives and cutting fruits. So this job was on the line due to my mistake, bro. So I'm just bleeding from my finger, and I just told Jessica straight up what just happened, and she just gave me a band-aid to cover it up. And at this point, I'm just thinking, Bro, I ain't getting the job, bro, it's cooked. So I continued cutting for the remaining time of the training session, and by the end of it, I was praying that I was gonna get the job. Cause I was down bad for just any sort of employment that would get bread into my pockets. Okay, not that down bad, but you get the point. And I walk up to Jessica and she gives me my verdict. You're hired. I got the job? Mm-hmm. I got the job! Let's go! Finally, after a few grueling months of job hunting, I finally landed my first job at Juicy Blends. And my friend also got the job as well. And we were excited to be working together and stacking that juicy bread. So by now, I'm just chilling at home and I got invited to a whatsapp group chat with every employee who worked there and i saw the schedule for the week that i start work and i realized i'm the only person scheduled for that shift Actually, every single shift on the schedule is just assigned to one person. Was I tripping? So I messaged the group chat and asked them if there was something wrong with the schedule and if it was just a mistake. But Jessica replied with, Due to the pandemic, we're unable to schedule two employees on the same shift to reduce health risks. I mean, I guess it makes sense. The world is kind of going to shit at the moment. But fuck, I can't work with the homie on the same shift. And I have to work alone. Ball. Yeah, that rule was straight ass, but it is what it is cuz what was I gonna do? Find a cure for the virus? So on the day I'm scheduled, I get my ass to work and Jessica has to run me through every single task that I had to manage and do throughout my shift. So let me just list off the tasks that I had to do. So let's just start with opening. So for opening, I had to bring the cash register and money box to the front. They kept like a lot of money in some first aid box, I don't know why. I had to prepare the tea, set up the blenders, clean the bleach off the cloth, 
locks, open the radio, and open the doors. You know, pretty simple opening. But for closing, I had to count the money and make sure there was always $200 in the cash register, perform the end of the day report, clean the syrup bottles, saran wrap the fruits, dump the remaining ice into the sink, clean the tea container, refill the cups and lids, bleach the cloths, clean the sink, clean the blenders, close the radio, lock the front door, hide the cash register and the money box in the back, then throw out the trash into the dumpster at the back of the establishment, and then lock the back door and put the key into some lock on the door. Now, if that sounded like a lot of stuff to do, on top of that, I also had to memorize how to make every single drink using their secret Krabby Patty formula, which I didn't memorize because goddamn, there was no way I could memorize them all. There were too many, which was an overwhelming amount of information to just take in all at once. And like I said earlier, they only put one person on duty for a shift. So I was soloing all these shitty side missions, basically running the entire store on my own. Like, how are they gonna trust a dumb 16 year old to run the whole store and expect them not to fuck shit up? So for the next three days of work, I would be working with Jessica as I was slowly getting the hang of working there. And she'd help me with opening and closing. And on the third shift of closing, I told her, uh, I think I'm ready to work on my own for the next shift. Are you sure you feel ready? Yes, I'm sure. Well, all right. So my next shift, I was completely alone, running the entire store by myself, and it was cool, but also very scary because I had to take responsibility for anything that went wrong. So my shift was going pretty well, just taking customer orders and making drinks. But at around like 3 p.m., some crackhead pulled up to the store and asked me, Yo, do you got a bathroom in here? Uh, yeah, we do, but it's for employees only. And dude just goes still regardless of what I said. And I was like, what the hell? So he heads on over to the back and I'm shitting my pants because I thought bro was about to go grab a knife in the kitchen because they were just in plain sight. So I was prepping my escape of hopping over the counter and dipping. And some other lady in the store said, should I call 911? Nah, I think it's fine. Talking like my ass was about to stop Megatron 2000 rabies machine in the bathroom. But dude, he just started spamming the flush on the toilet. Like he probably clicked that shit like 20 times. And I started seeing water leaking from the bathroom. And eventually it formed like a mini lake outside the bathroom. Bathroom. And bro just opened the bathroom door and just dipped the hell out of the store. And now I'm just looking at the bathroom and looking at the absolute chaotic mess that I had to clean up. Like bro, the entire bathroom floor was flooded with water to the point it started leaking outside. And the toilet's flush handle was like broken. Bro, I was so pissed man. Like why does this have to happen to me when I'm working? Like you couldn't wait another day when someone else was working? It just had to be me? Well anyways, I got my ass to attempting to clean up the flood. But there was just way too much water bro like it was loot lake in the bathroom and i was still on my shift too so i had to take orders and do other stuff so i just said screw it and just left it there hey man i'm not cleaning dookie water bro i'm sorry man i didn't see cleaning up floods from crackheads on the job description so i'm not doing that shit so i just left it there and let it marinate and after a grueling eight hours of taking customer orders cutting fruits blending fruits making smoothies it finally came to closing and i was just so pissed from what that crack had did to me earlier that I just left and forgot to do a few closing tasks. And the next day, I woke up to text messages from Jessica of her absolutely flaming my entire existence. Loney, why didn't you clean the floor? Oh, I forgot. I'll remember next time. Also, you didn't wrap the fruits. The entire floor is covered with water. How could you forget while leaving? You also put the empty teapot in the heating spot that could result in a fire. The end of day report was not written. The money was not counted. You didn't restock any lids or cups. Just imagine coming to work the next day. Hey, would you be able to manage everything? Oh shit, maybe I forgot more than just a few things. Dude, I'm finna get fired, bro. No. Types of people on the internet part two. The internet. Oh boy, it has done some irreversible damage to the people in our society. Like bro, the consequences of the industrial revolution is taking full effect and is creating the most interesting individuals ever seen. And you guys seem to like the first video, so I thought, why not make a sequel? So let's take another dive into the people that the internet has created throughout the years. All right, first let's talk about the trolls slash haters. Now these people gotta be one of the most annoying types of people on the internet. Like their entire goal is to make as many people mad as possible by replying to a thread with something out of pocket to incite a reaction from others. Which then becomes a domino effect and more and more people will also jump in and get riled up playing right into the internet troll's hands. Like these people just get off to seeing people angry and are just seeking attention through any means possible. Like it does not matter if you are a war veteran, a doctor, or a disabled person. If you are living and breathing, the internet troll will find a way to hate on you. Hey guys, just spent the past 18 hours in the operating room doing a surgery on a newborn baby for their kind loving mother. 
They're now doing fine and recovering well. I'm exhausted, so I'm gonna take a long rest now. Signing off. Bro, I can do that surgery in my sleep, dog. That shit seems so easy. You're not even a real surgeon, bro. Bro, definitely talking about surgeon simulator. Uh, you're still on your shift, bud. Get back to work. Time is ticking. Hey, Instagram. Just got back serving time in the War of 1812. I was awarded the Medal of Honor for my bravery on the battlefield. A lot of my comrades perished during this battle. God rest their souls. Their bravery will not be forgotten. Bro, you ordered that medal from Wish, bro. Stop the cap. Rip Bozo. Um, excuse me, man. Ash, what was your KD? But you also got the funny trolls on the internet like Hyperpop Daily saving the youth. Shouts out to bro. But yeah, guys, in general, do not reply and feed the trolls, man. That's what they want you to do. The best thing to do is to ignore them and move on so they don't get the attention they so desperately desire. Next, we got the social activists. Now, these people are the funny police, apparently, because you cannot say a single joke near this person because they will take offense to literally anything, even if it isn't directed at them. Like, these people need to learn to chill and take a joke because how are you going to live your life constantly getting offended by every little thing said by people? It just sounds miserable to be constantly mad over the most pointless things all the time. And don't get me started on their social media, bro. Like, they're always reposting social issues as if they're actually about the cause. Like, you putting a few petitions in your bio on Instagram isn't gonna change anything, bro. Like, actually involve yourself through protests, donating money, and actively getting yourself involved to help support the cause. And don't get me started on cancel culture. These people are so quick to try and cancel celebrities and ruin their careers for things they said back in, like, the 2010s on social media when they were, like, 12 years old. Like, bro, we We've all definitely said things in the past when we were younger that we weren't proud of. Don't even lie, man. We're all human and we all make mistakes and learn from them. No one is perfect, man. Like, these people act like they were angels all their life, bro. Like, I call cap. But on a real note, props to the social activists who are actually involved in making a change around social issues. You guys are the real goats for society. Next, we got the scammers. Now, these people, you'll encounter them all around the internet and they are just complete heartless people, man. Whether they are trying to swindle you in a game for your in-game items or your hard-earned money, like, these dudes are actual menaces. Like, there's just so many types of scammers. Like, you got your tech support scammers trying to tell you your computer's in critical condition and has a virus. Your Nigerian princes giving their sob stories to try to emotionally manipulate people into sending them money. Dudes calling your phone to try to clean your air ducts. Your Fortnite scammer gets scammed, dudes. Like, there will forever be scammers as long as we as a species exist. And especially with the recent developments of AI technology, scammers will be more prevalent than ever. Like, I will never understand how people can just straight up lie to a sweet 60-year-old granny who clearly isn't tech savvy at all and just steal their whole life savings in a blink of an eye. Like, do you not have any morals or feel any guilt whatsoever for ruining an elderly person's retirement? Like, bro, these scammers are literal scum of the earth and will do anything but get a damn job, bro. Like, get a job. You are not punch me dev. And if you want to protect yourself against malicious people like this while you surf the internet, you can do that easily with today's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark VPN helps protect your online identity and shields your personal information from large corporations and cyber criminals by encrypting all data transferred between your device and the internet. Surfshark has over 3,200 plus servers in 100 countries around the world to choose from. And with just one tap of a button, you can virtually travel anywhere across the globe, which will help protect your private data when using free public Wi-Fi, which may be a treasure trove for hackers. Surfshark can also allow you to unblock and access foreign streaming services and content libraries, including all of Netflix's libraries and can bypass censorship, which will make your internet use more freeing as it can get around geo restrictions and unblock restricted websites. With Surfshark's clean web feature, you can browse the internet safely by blocking ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts. Also, what you do online is not tracked, monitored, or stored by Surfshark, which means there are no connections or activity logs giving you the best anonymity and security. And if you want to try out Surfshark for yourself, now is a great time. You can get an exclusive Black Friday deal when you enter promo code LONY to get up to 6 additional months for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out. Link in the description. Huge thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the video. Next, we got the clout chasers. Now, these dudes will literally do anything just for an ounce of clout, like I mean anything. These dudes are so obsessed with social media numbers, views, subscribers, and fame to the point where it just completely takes over their mind and clouds their judgment, leading them to do dumbass acts in public or sometimes committing actual crimes just for 15 minutes of fame. Like, is it really worth it making yourself look like an absolute asshole for the entire world to see all in the name of clout? Let's take Logan Paul as an example. This dude really flew out to Japan and went around the streets acting like a complete idiot while disturbing the locals, which is already stupid enough. But he then doubles down and enters a forest, and I think you guys know what happens next. Next. This dude then discovers a body of a deceased man and starts acting like a dumbass like Yo bro this is crazy we found a dead dude yo While he was laughing and shit and not only that he had to review the footage and edit it and not once did he think Yo maybe this isn't the best idea to be showing my audience But the views and subs I'll get though 
Dude still chose to upload it, and it reached trending on YouTube for the whole world to see. Like, bro, triple downing is wild. That is insane. I've made a severe and continuous and more recently, you had this random kid going viral for walking into random families' houses and filming TikToks in there. And he also walked up to an elderly lady at the park and stole her dog too. Like, bruh, the lengths these people will go just for a crumb of clout is actually pathetic. Do not end up like these people. Next, we got the e-thoughts. <laughs> now, oh my god, man, these people are like the pests of the internet. Cause I swear I cannot scroll through a single thread on Twitter without an e-thought and the replies trying to promote their OF. Check out my OnlyFans for spicy pics for the cheap price of $5 a month. Then in their replies, it's like a bunch of people ratioing them to oblivion. Like, in my honest opinion, selling explicit photos of yourself for the equivalent of a medium fries or double cheeseburger from McDonald's is crazy. But then again, some of these people be making like millions of dollars a month from this shit. Like, 18 million dollars in one month is insane. Dude, 18 million is enough to set you up for multiple lifetimes, bro. And they just made it in the span of 30 days. Like, I don't think I'll ever see 18 million dollars in my entire lifetime, bro. But I really can't hate on the hustle, to be honest, because if I could earn that much just for taking a few photos and posting them beyond a paywall, Shit, sign me up, cause I'm about to be swimming in them racks, signing my soul away. Like, you really got people waking up bright and early at 6am to go to their rigorous manual labor jobs every day of the week. While these people are literally printing racks from a few PNGs and MP4 files. Like, this shit is not fair at all, bruh. Next, we got the people who always be taking pictures of their food. Now, man, you all definitely know people who always be posting food on their Instagram story. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm guilty of it too, but I don't be posting, like, every single meal I eat on social media. Like, it's a once in a while sort of thing. Now, I can understand if you cooked a fire meal that you're really proud of and want to share it on social media. But like, you don't gotta post your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, bruh. And especially when you're going out to eat, you don't gotta post every single meal, man. Like, sometimes it's better to just put the phone down and just eat your meal. Like, the amount of times I'm going out to eat with a friend and bro's just doing an entire photo shoot with the food. While I'm just sitting there waiting and starving. Like, hurry up, bro. Let me eat. Because it's not like you're ever gonna go back and look at that picture of the food you took anyways. Let's be real. And no one really cares anyways. People will just be tapping through their stories mindlessly. Except me though, those food pictures got me jealous and like actually hungry cause sometimes y'all be posing some absolute exquisite eats. Next we got the normal people. Now these people just be silently using social media, they don't ever post anything or comment on anything, and they always got the default profile pictures. They just be casually using it sometimes to watch videos and look at memes to send to their family and friends really. Cause these people probably got better things to do than mindlessly using social media all day like working a job, taking care of their family, or you know, stepping outside the house. I know, I know, it's a rare thing thing to do these days. But I gotta get like these people because I be spending an unhealthy amount of time on the internet. Especially since like, it's my job. But even when I'm not working, I'm still on the internet and I catch myself all the time. I need more bullets! I need more bullets! I need more bullets! I need more bullets! Damn, bro, what the hell have I done for the past two hours? I need to put the phone away. Like, sometimes I'm scared to look at my screen time because that John be averaging like almost eight hours a day. Yeah, I need help. Hey, yo, what's up, G? You here for a cut today? Yeah, man, I got a date in a few hours, you know. I'm trying to look fresh. All right, I, I see you. What you think about getting? Oh, just trim a little off the top. That should be good. All right, bet. I got you. All right, all done. What you think? Bro, what did you do to me? I said a little off the top. Why is my head on the ground? Bro, haircuts, man. You know, throughout my life, I don't think I've ever gotten a clean haircut. Like, it's always been either decent or completely messed up. Like, the amount of times I've been done dirty on my haircut is insane. Now, throughout the most part of my life, I never really went to a barber to get my haircut. And I would mostly get them from home from either my grandfather or mom. And bro, tell me why moms are always liking the absolute worst possible haircuts ever, bro. Like, they'd have the audacity to give you a cut that'd have you looking like this. And they'd be like, oh my god, your haircut looks so nice on you. I love it. Like, what's up with that? Do they just want us to get made fun of at school? Like, how am I gonna pull some girls with this atrocity on my head, bro? And on the topic of pulling girls, a message to the dudes watching? Listen, fellas, y'all gotta keep your hair freshly groomed. And that doesn't only include your hair on your head. It includes the jungle that Tarzan be swinging through. Like, real talk, fellas. Trust me, I've been through the struggle. I've used nail clippers and damn scissors down there. But now I don't because of Manscaped. Manscaped is a notorious brand that offers the best tools and liquid formulations for your everyday men's grooming needs. Manscaped hooked me up with a bunch of their products from their all-in-one perfect package 4.0 in the mail. The first thing to highlight is the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. This is Manscaped's fourth generation electric trimmer with advanced skin safe 
Safe technology, which reduces nicks and cuts on the most sensitive regions of the body. It's cordless and waterproof, so you can trim in the shower, which makes it super convenient and easy to clean up. Also included in the Perfect Package 4.0 kit are the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. Simply apply the Crop Preserver after your shower for all-day body odor protection. The Crop Reviver is a convenient spray with cooling aloe vera to quickly refresh the area whenever you need it. Like real talk guys, the deodorant and spray are really nice and I highly recommend them. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off and free international shipping plus two free gifts when you use promo code LONI at checkout. The link will be provided in the description and thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Now back to the video. Now when I was a kid, I was always jealous of all the other kids' haircuts. Like bro, I always wanted one of those spiky mohawk type cuts. Like I remember a lot of the kids at my school were rocking that sort of cut and I was always so envious of them. Like even one of my homies got a mohawk and I was just so jealous bro. Like I wanted one so bad but I knew my mom would never let me. And looking back now, that type of cut would definitely not fit me. I would have just looked so stupid and goofy. So I always just rocked the buzz cut or the bowl cut. Yeah it was rough. Like I remember some of my old school friends would just call me mushroom head because of my bowl cut. Like pull up a picture of the Mario mushroom and that was basically me man. A one to one identical representation. Now let's talk about barbers. Now listen man, every time I've gone to a barber shop, I've been hella confused on what I should get there. Like there's too many options to pick from. So for the most part, I just always told them, oh just cut it shorter. Now listen, telling your barber this usually doesn't end well. Cause like that's like the most broad thing to tell them. Unless you've been getting your cuts at a specific barber that you always go to and he knows you really well. But me, I already told y'all, I don't go to barbers that often. So most of the time after the barber's done with my cut, I check it out in the mirror to see if I like it. And most of the time it's just got me disappointed bro. And they're always like, so how you thinking about it? You like it? Now listen, a lot of the time I ain't messing with my cut, but what am I gonna say? No, I f hate it and I hate you. You stink at cutting, bro. Nah, bro, that's the last thing I wanna do, man. I don't wanna hurt bro's feelings, man. So what I'm gonna do is just lie straight at his face and say, yeah, bro, I love it, man. You the goat at cutting, bro. Here's the money plus the tip. Thank you, man, appreciate it. But yo, why is there a tear falling down your face? Oh, uh, nah, my eyes are just sweaty, bro. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Nah, but one pet peeve I have with barbers nowadays is that the prices for haircuts have been marked up hella over the past few years. Like haircuts used to be like 20 bucks and now they're like 40 to 50 bucks plus 15% tip. Like that's just outrageous. Like I'm really out here paying an arm and a leg just to get a cut. Like goddamn. You're about to see me at the homeless shelter with all that money being spent on a cut. Like damn, I'd rather just go bald every time. But you know, now let me tell you guys about the traumatic cuts I've received in the past. Now this first cut, it happened way, way, way back when I was a young jit. I was probably around 8 to 10 years old and my hair was getting a little too long. And my mom told me, hey, your hair is getting a little too long. You look like a girl. It's time to cut it. So I'm like, okay, just don't cut it too short. All right, I won't. So, you know, we went downstairs and set up everything and my mom begins to cut my hair. And it was going fine for the first 15 minutes. Nothing out of the ordinary happened until I felt one clean cut at the back of my head that touched my scalp and I was panicked. I was like, wait, I said to not cut it short. Yeah, 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 I am, don't worry. And I just went with it. But bro, she started power shaving my head and I said, stop, stop, stop. And went to look in the mirror. Bro, it looked rough, man. She was trying to shave my head bald, bro. She lied to me. I got bamboozled. And dude, I just started crying, man. Like it was already over. And I just let her finish the haircut. And man, by the end of it, I was looking like Caillou, bro. It was over. Like Mr. Clean had nothing thing on me bro and i was in actual tears after that like if you've ever gotten an absolute violation of a haircut you'd yeah, understand the amount of pain that comes with it and i was like young too so that haircut meant like everything to me i already knew i was about to get flamed at school and i was just dreading to go to school man like the next day i went to school wearing my hoodie on for the entire day bro i wasn't trying to let anyone see my cut and bro this was hands down probably the worst day of my life i was borderline depressed the entire day bro like i was on type timing with spongebob when he got fired like it was traumatic. It's already giving me PTSD just talking about it. But my friends would walk up to me and be like, yo, why do you have your hoodie on? It's like 23 degrees Celsius outside. Like, take it off, man. Uh... Uh, nah, man. Like, I'm just cold still. I don't know. And I like having a hoodie on anyways. And they would just continue to bug me about it the entire day. Like, they wouldn't leave me alone. And I just wouldn't budge. But eventually, I got tired of them asking, and I just told them. Okay, fine. I got a haircut from my mom, and she absolutely did me dirty. All right? Oh, nah. Let us see. <laughs> Now it was truly over. You know, at this point, I was already fed up and I was tired of being sad. So I showed them. 
<laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. That wasn't how it went. They chuckled a little bit at first, but then comforted me and told me it wasn't bad, which was a complete surprise. I thought I was about to get my entire existence flamed for days on end, but in the end, it wasn't as bad as I made the scenario out to be in my head. Now, let me tell you about the second story. So after the traumatic experience, I didn't want my mom cutting my hair anymore. So I let my grandfather cut my hair and that became a normal thing for him to cut my hair for the coming years. So the general routine, my hair was growing out so I need to cut it. So I head downstairs and I get my grandfather to cut it and it was going fine. But one thing to mention is my grandfather, his eyesight was declining. Cause you know, as you get older, your eyesight tends to worsen. And to be honest, I don't know why I was still letting him cut my hair. Probably cause I've just been letting him do it for years. So it just became part of the routine. And he begins to cut my hair and he moves onto my sides and he begins to cut the hair closest to the ears. And I hear a sound of like a meat grinder sound. And I was like, what the heck was that? And my earlobe just all of a sudden felt hot. So I go to touch my earlobe and I look at my fingers, blood. I see blood, bro. I just froze up, just staring at my fingers like, what just happened? Like I was in disbelief. Bro just cut my earlobe. I was in total shock, bro. Like, nah, man. At that point, I was just done, man. So he went to grab some rubbing alcohol and a band-aid to patch me up and finish the rest of the cut carefully. And bro, after that situation, I just have trust issues with people cutting my hair now. Like I didn't let my grandfather cut my hair no more. And now every time I pull up to the barber, I just be scared whenever they cut my sides near my ear now. Like it's got me on edge now. But yeah, moral of the story, if your barber messes up your cut, in the wise words of you know Miles, just you gotta fight the barber. Getting scammed. Yeah, uh, so unfortunately, I've been scammed before, and you know, I thought I was a pretty smart guy when it came to navigating and preventing this stuff, but apparently, I'm not. I'm a complete idiot. So, let me tell you guys about the time I got absolutely finessed. So, just a little backstory. So, I used to play on a family friend's DS who lived at our house all the time when I was younger, but they eventually moved away and took the DS with them, which left me sad without a DS. Now, fast forward a few years, and I was just chilling, and a thought came to mind. Damn, I should get a DS again to play some of the OG games I used to play. Cause you know, your boy wanted to play some of the classics like Pokemon and Mario Kart again, just like the old times. And my homies who had DS's wanted to run some Mario Party at school using that trusty old reliable known as the DS download app to play together. And bro, I was so hyped for this day to happen cause I haven't ran Mario Party with the boys on the DS since I was like 8 years old. Like calling your friend on the landline and heading over to their house after school and running it on our DS's bro, just hit different. Those were the golden ages. But I mean, I guess there is one game that exceeds the golden ages, and that would be Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is an amazing free-to-play tactical turn-based MMO with over 80 million total downloads. Raid offers the player with endless hours of awesome content for your entertainment. And to introduce new and lapsed players to all the cool features that have been added to Raid in the last year or so, Raid's bringing in their very own Raid teacher, Professor Death Knight, to bring people up to speed on what they're missing out on. The first history lesson will be about Live Arena. Take it away, Death Knight. Professor Death Knight here with a lesson about Live Arena, the new PvP mode where you can fight against other players in real time. <gasps> Sounds terrifying? Well, so's going to the dentist. You should still do it. Live Arena has a draft feature where you can pick and ban champions to fight for you. <laughs> Teamwork! When you win matches, you'll get live arena crests towards unlocking special area bonuses, or so I hear. I'm too afraid to try any of this out. I hope you use this knowledge you've gained here today about live arena to head off and do battle live! Make this whole dead bones professor proud, folks. Class dismissed! Thank you for that lesson, Death Knight, but I've got it from here now. Now, my favorite thing about Raid is that it's a mobile game, so you can play it anywhere you go. At the park, in class, on a long car ride, in the bathroom. <laughs> It's all up to you. And Raid's Call of the Arbiter is in full swing now. And to celebrate this epic limited series, Raid's adding some of the new characters from the series as champions you can play with in-game. The first one is Artak, a mighty orc warlord who is going to be available to everyone for free. Just log into Raid for 7 days between now and July 24th. With all this jam-packed amazing content and more coming to Raid, if you haven't started playing yet, what are you waiting for? If you are a new player, use my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to get some sweet bonuses. Like a free epic hero, 200,000 silver, over, four energy refills, one epic skill tomb, and a one day XP booster that's valued at $30. Hey, you already know I got you guys. Check out Raid Shadow Legends today and thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. Anyways, back to the video. But anyways, I need to get my hands on a DS ASAP. So I headed over to this website. I don't know if you guys know it, but it's called Kawiwi and people just basically sell stuff there. It's like Facebook Marketplace. And I was scrolling through some listings and I came across a listing for a light blue DSi for $110. 
dollars. So I thought to myself, damn, low key $110 is a lot for a DS. I gotta try to negotiate with bro. Hey man, $110? That was a lot of money for me. Still is. But I was broke as back then so it was way more so i shoot bro a message along the lines of hey i'm interested in this listing for your light blue dsi is it possible we can negotiate the price and a few hours later he responds with hey i would be down to negotiate the price for sure so now i'm thinking hmm what would be a reasonable price like my instincts are telling me to lowball this guy and say like 30 bucks but that would completely just f up the deal ah screw it i'll just say 90 bucks just to be safe with it Ah, oh, let's go, let's go! Let's meet at the train station at around 3 p.m. when I'm done with school. Ah, oh, let's go! Secure the DS easy in the bag. Hey yo, bro, wanna come with me to pick up something? Yeah, I bet. What are you picking up? Oh, just some DS this guy is selling me. That's it. I bet. Let's go. So we head on over to the train station and we're waiting there for like 10 minutes. And a car rolls up in front of the station and some little kid pops out of the car with his mom. And I'm just like, what the f? A little kid is selling me this? I mean, I guess it makes sense because DSs are for kids. But wait, I'm nearly a grown ass man. Why am I buying this? Ah, that's besides the point. So I asked the kid, hey, can I test out the DS to make sure it works? Yeah, of course. It works completely fine. Go ahead. So, you know, I'm out here inspecting it and opening it to make sure everything works fine. And it did. So I'm like, yo, here's the 90. Thanks for the DS. No problem. No problem. And he hops right back into the car and zooms off. So now I'm hyped. Like, I just got a DS, man. Like, I'm about to go crazy crazy on it and mod it to get the free games so now i'm just walking home just thinking about all the games i'm about to play and i get home and i open the ds again to test out stuff and while i was using it it just closed like shut off completely which completely caught me off guard so i repeat this process of opening it and using it for like two minutes then it closing again for like eight times in a row and then i realized the reality of the situation i got f scammed <laughs> Like, bro, I swear it was working fine when I tested it out at the station. Maybe I just didn't test it long enough. So I messaged the seller back on Kawiwi and say, Yo, bro, give me my money back. You scammed me. It's broken. Blocked. He blocked me. So I do the same thing with his phone number. Blocked as well. Dude, I was so angry at this point. Like, the amount of rage my body was cooking up was insane. Like, I felt like Guy Sensei unlocking the gates, man. Like, holy shit. I was thinking of the worst things ever, bro. Like, I was finna cook up a plan to find this kid. But then I came back to my senses, and man, obviously I'm not gonna do that stuff. But bro, that day was just some buns, bro. Like, I just lost 90 bucks and got a broken DS in return. And I couldn't even play the games that I wanted to. Like, bro, I was just mad as hell for the next few weeks straight, man. Like, that lived in my mind red free. Like, I got scammed by a little kid. Like, oh my god. I swear if it was someone my age, it wouldn't have hurt as much. But a kid? Man, I swear to god I had nightmares of the situation, bro. Like, it would not leave my head. Leave me alone! Ah! So yeah, after that situation, I have the biggest trust issues when it comes to buying things secondhand. And if any of you guys are thinking about buying something secondhand, bro, just make sure you don't get scammed. Like, do the most to are find you out if you're getting brother? scammed. Because I don't want none of you guys going through what I did. Like, just watch out. Mo really be baby tronning out here. And if that kid is watching this video, just know, I got it fixed, you little There go another player tip. You gotta kill school rules. Man, the rules that teachers are making in school these days just sometimes make no sense or are just completely stupid. Like the rules these teachers be implementing into the classrooms make school feel more like a prison than this prosperous environment for children to learn and develop into a member of society. Like, we are the future leaders of the world. I think we deserve some better treatment, which is why I'll go over some of the worst rules that schools have implemented. Alright, the first thing we'll talk about is the starting times of schools. Okay, now the typical starting times for schools can range from like 8 to 9 a.m. in the morning. Like, who's trying to go to school this early, man? Like, all I'm trying to do is sleep at that time. Like, we gotta start some sort of petition to make school start a little later in the day. Cause like, I can't do these 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. classes, bro. Schools need to start at either 10 
or 11 a.m. I feel like that's a more reasonable time. You know, it gives me more time to rest up and I won't be extremely exhausted right in the morning as compared to when I'm in class and it's 8 or 9 a.m. Like, bro, at that time, I'm doing anything but paying attention to the lesson. I'm out here dozing away in the middle of class and thinking about what I'm gonna eat for lunch. So yeah, make school start later. The next thing is the no being late rule. Now, with school starting this early, how do they expect us to not show up late, bro? Every student's got their own distance to travel to get to school, whether it be by public transport, walking, biking, car, or whatever. And I feel like school should be more lenient with weights because of that. Like, school could start at 9 a.m. and at 8.59, my ass is still sound asleep. Then the teachers create punishments for being late, like giving you detention or calling your parents. Like, come on, bro. Like, what if I actually had an emergency that made me late that time? Or like I missed the bus or something out of my control happened. Like, that's not fair and it isn't warranted a punishment at all. But like, you know, I'm always a busy guy. So like, I'm always late to my classes cause like, I'm just such a busy person who's always working, getting stuff done, shaking hands. You know, like I'm always on the grind right at the crack of dawn, you know, always using my time productively and efficiently. <laughs> The next rule we'll talk about is the bathrooms. Now tell me this, why is it that I'm required to ask the teacher if I can go to the bathroom? Just think about that for a quick minute. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense, right? Like, why can't I just go when I need to? Like, it's something that I can't control when I need to go. So, like, if I need to go, I gotta go. Why do I gotta be like, Uh, miss, may I please go to the bathroom? This would be the same with water breaks, too. Like, screw that, man. And sometimes the teachers be making up some bullshit rules on top of that. Like, oh, you can only go to the bathroom at the beginning or at the end of class. Like, what? What if you gotta go in the middle of class? So you just gotta hold your shit in? That's not right, man. If you gotta go, you gotta go it's like a basic human right and bro the one thing that pisses me off the most man is when you go to ask the teacher to go to the bathroom and they say oh can you like shut the fuck up i'm about to smack you but i won't and i'll still ask respectfully because i'm respectful like that Bitch. This gets me so riled up, man. But yeah, even when I got to use the bathroom, my school would use these bullshit rules like, you can't go until Jimmy gets back. Or in my elementary school, you'd have to take someone of the opposite gender as a buddy to the bathroom. Like, bro, I really gotta wait for Jimmy's ass to finish hitting the vape or pen while I'm out here struggling keeping it together. And dude, the rule that was made in my elementary school was just stupid. Like, you couldn't go to the bathroom by yourself or with your own gender because we would be reckless in the bathroom. So I'd had to go to the bathroom with a girl and they'd just be waiting outside the boys bathroom while I did my business and vice versa. Like, I don't know, man. A pretty odd rule to enforce upon your students. Now let's talk about hoods and hats. Now, I don't know why, but teachers just extremely hated hoods and hats. Like, teachers would see a student wearing one and instantly snipe them. Like, I don't understand the reasoning for why we can't wear them in class. Like, what if your barber messed your cut up and you don't want others seeing your bald egg-headed ass, but a teacher tells you to remove it and the whole class clowns you for your Humpty Dumpty ass? Like, now your day is ruined and you'll just be known as the guy with the fucked up cut. And teachers be saying like, Oh, I can't see your face. Oh, I can't identify you. Oh, I just want to see your face. Like, bro, these are not good reasons at all. Like, hats and hoods don't cover your face at all. They mostly cover your head and ears. Like, you can clearly still identify me amongst my classmates. So those points regarding identifying students is invalid. So what's the real reason, eh? If there's any teachers watching, let me know. The next rule is no electronics. Now, bro, especially in this day and age, this rule is just plain dumb. Like, we be doing basically every assignment on the computer these days. Like essays, Google Slides for presentations, coding, spreadsheets, Google Classroom. Like, most things we do nowadays typically involve the use of electronics. So I feel like banning them in the classroom is kind of pointless. Because they are very useful in the classroom when used right. And kids are going to bring their phones and electronics to class regardless of the rules. So it doesn't really make a difference if you ban them. And teachers do this because it helps students focus better, which I guess is true. But let's be honest, more than 90% of the information that teachers feed you is completely pointless and you will never need to use in your entire life. So hey, I'ma stay playing subway surfers and bumping that heat in class. Police, 
Now the next rule is no doing other homework in class. Now this rule is actually the most stupid rule ever created. So some teachers would really be enforcing students to not do homework from other classes and bro this is just insanely stupid. Like I'm in school and it's a place where I'm meant to do homework and educate myself and the one time I choose to lock in and get shit done now I'm not allowed to do it all of a sudden? Like this happened to me before. So I was in my kinesiology class and my next class was biology and I had a unit test on things like the cell cycle or something like that you know like mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell type shit and I was on my grind in kinesiology class during a work period and my kinesiology teacher walks up to me and says to me boy what's this oh uh, it's my biology notes I'm studying for a test next period boy this is kin class not biology class put those notes away oh uh, okay bro I'm screwed for this test bro he's a op for doing that now let's talk about hugs now at my middle school School, hugging people became like a trendy thing so kids in my grade were hugging their friends more often than usual and the teachers were like hey uh, we don't like that so it's banned now so hugs became banned at my school and was portrayed as like an act of sin okay let's just take a bit to google the definition of a hug all right let's see here hug definition Ah, squeeze someone tightly in one's arms, typically to express affection. Now just imagine the type of evil, sinister people that would even come to think of banning something that is meant to show affection to people you know. Yeah, you probably thought of someone like this. I don't know man, if you're gonna ban such a harmless act like hugging, I don't know what your priorities are man. Now let's talk about dress codes. Now for dudes, the dress code didn't really matter, we just pull up in like sweats and a hoodie and call it a day. And I'm a dude, so I don't know how it was for girls, but from what I'd guess, it was probably pretty restrictive. And I feel like students should be able to wear what they feel like to school, unless it's like some t-shirt that just says like fuck on it. That would be pretty bad. But other than those outliers, yeah, express yourselves man. And speaking about expressing yourselves, let's talk about uniforms. Now, I've never been to a school that require uniforms, but they just seem so lame, man. Like, everybody around you got the exact same drip and loadout. Like, you guys look like NPCs with your uniforms on. Like, what do I look like repping a uniform with the school's logo and name plastered on it? That's on some next level meat riding for your school, man. Like, you like your school that much to rock the entire loadout? Hey, you do you, man. And don't get me started on the prices. These schools are straight scamming you, bro. Like, why are schools making you pay upwards of 100 to $600 for a uniform that probably cost them like $10 to make. Like, I'm not paying all of that for some mid. I'm not trying to get finessed out here. Next, let's talk about school drills. Now, the main drills being the fire drill and the lockdown drill. Now, for the fire drills, they are just stupid and unrealistic. Like, if a full-blown fire is happening in the building, these teachers be expecting us to form a single filed line and start walking down to the exits. Like, huh? If there's a huge inferno ablaze in the building, I'm A-train, bro. Like, I'm out of there running for my life for the exit. And I bet I wouldn't be the only one. And for lockdowns, man. Like, why is the best idea for schools to have students stay inside the school when there's a school threat? Like, bro, the last thing we want is to be in the same building as them. Like, break a window and run or something, man. Why is hiding in the corner the best course of action? Like, it's either I'm dipping out a window, or I'ma juke his ass in the hallways, or I'ma make my childhood dreams come true and strike back on the school threat and beat his ass. Like, all it takes is one laugh or one fart and you're screwed. Oh, shit. And the last rule we'll discuss is no eating in class. Now this rule is just annoying. Now I feel like a lot of people could relate to kinda. So usually I would get up like 20 minutes late for school and I'm late so I would just skip my breakfast. And now I'm just in class chugging water and chewing gum while starving. And you remember that you packed a granola bar and you start eating it but the teacher's like hey no food in class. Like bro come on man you don't know the situation I'm in right now. I'm starving man. I need some eats. Like one time I was power studying for a calculus unit test during lunch and I couldn't eat my lunch because I needed to study for the test and after I fucked up the test I ate my lunch in English class because my English teacher was really nice and chill. She's a W teacher man. Screw teachers who don't allow students to eat. They're ops for real. Playboy Cardi is the best rapper of our generation. Don't believe me? Tupac died the same day Cardi was born. He's literally the reincarnation of Tupac. All you guys are fake Cardi fans. I was defending whole lot red on Twitter the day it dropped with my life. Yo bro, I know you don't like Cardi that much but on god this track would make you like like him more. <sighs> okay, fine, play it. Bro, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Turn that off. He sounds like a dying fetus. How do you listen to that? You just don't understand his artistry and craft. Yo, Cardi just posted a fit pic. Damn, let me see.
Damn, that fit goes dummy hard, man. He really knows how to dress. Yo, what's the ID on the boots and jeans, bruh? I want to get them. Bro, you're not Cardi, man. Be yourself. Cardi has the most influence on music ever, man. He created a whole new wave in the underground beat selection from Holar Red. Yo, I'm at the Playboy Cardi Holar Red tour and it's vamped out ASF. Hmm, I feel like it's missing something. Hmm. There we go. Perfect. Jump at the house. 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 Oh, brother, not this guy. How much are Ricks, anyways? How much are Rick Owen Ramones? A thousand dollars? Man, I can't afford that. I'll never forget you guys trashing Whole Lot Red on release date. I'm an OG fan. Y'all are fake fans. Y'all probably listen to Spaceship, Feel Like God, Talk to Me, and 9 a.m. in Calabasas. Yo, check this out. Bro thinks he's Cardi. I would do anything for Cardi to drop. Trick or treat. Oh my god, you have such wonderful costumes. Here's a chocolate bar for you, and you, and you. Bro thinks he's Cardi. We on X, we on codeine. We on X, we on codeine. Yo, bro, thanks for dyeing my hair, man. I appreciate it. Nah, I got you, bro. Don't worry. Bro thinks he's Cardi. I started sipping walk because of Cardi. Bro thinks he's shut up. Not everything I do means I'm trying to be like Cardi, man. Playboy Cardi is way better than Kendrick, J. Cole, Nas, and 50 Cent combined. Y'all are just some old heads for real. Bro, the baby voice goes hard. Like, once it clicks in your head, you'll understand. There must be a cheaper way to get Ricks. Yeah, this is what I like to see. I'm gonna get all the hoes with this. Okay, bro, listen to this snippet. <laughs> Sounds hard, no? Bro, it sounds like it was recorded in a completely different room with a Nintendo DS, bro. Never too much. You. Uh. Never too much. You. Uh. Never too much. Bruh. I dyed my hair red because Cardi did it. Oh my god, Cardi just posted on Instagram and Twitter. Look, look. Narcissus 9 slash 13 slash 21. Forget about sample clearances. Drop Narcissus. Yo, it's Cardi season. He's dropping. <laughs> Where's the album, Cardi? What the hell? You lied again. Why? <laughs> Y'all don't even listen to the leaks, yo lamos. Honey, honey, I'm going to labor. Call the ambulance. Hmm, what would Cardi do here? Nah, babe, I can't. I have to play some GTA RP with Uzi at the stew. What the? <laughs> yo, bro, can you take a few fit pics for me, man? I right, sure. Make it quick. Bro, why are you doing these sus poses? Cardi does them. Oh my god, hop off his meat, bro. What happened to Narcissus? I'm in a cool with a cut. Yeah, sip it a wah. Yo, check out these fresh kicks. What do you think? Bro, they literally look like knockoff converses. Bro, these are not converses. They are Rick Owens. Bro, I have 10k karma on the Playboy Cardi subreddit. Get on my level. Shh. We don't talk about the Playboy Cardi subreddit. Oh. Okay. Okay, hear me out. Cardi tweeted hardcore and emphasized the hard. Hardcore has eight letters and hard has four. Eight minus four is four, meaning Narcissus has to drop in four weeks. Why did Cardi post screenshots of snippets? We want to hear the music. Yeah, I listen to Cardi. Oh, you do? What's your favorite song? My favorite song is WAP. Okay, last snippet, I swear. This one's one of my top snippets. Okay, okay, fine. Last one. No, run it back, run it back. Alright, bro, I'm done with you. We're not friends no more. Oh my god, Cardi posted the album cover to music on Christmas Eve. It's dropping Christmas like whole lot red. Let's go! <laughs> Cardi, why? <laughs> my Christmas is ruined. Playboy Cardi, this album better bring peace to the world like you said it would. Gen Z slang part two. You know, with the absolute love that you guys gave for the first part, I just had to clap back and slide for my dogs and give you guys a part two. So let's just dive into it and further ruin the English language and our own personal vocabulary. All right, let's start with bussin'. Now listen, I know this word has been overused to the point where some people are just sick and tired of hearing somebody utter this word. But like, I ain't gonna lie, I use this word a lot in my daily life, especially when I'm eating a nice, well-prepared, mouth-watering, flavorsome, scrumptious, delectable, succulent. Okay, yo, 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 pause. Succulent? Nah, I'ma chill on the synonyms. But what I mean is a fucking tasty meal, all right? Like, bussin' is a perfect word to describe a meal that is just fucking bomb. Like, when you use this word to describe a meal, that meal be damn near tickling your taste buds in all the right areas. Like, that meal will touch your soul, bro, and have you ascending to another plane of existence. And it will have you salivating at the mouth. 
pause. I'm giving Bussin an A tier. Now we got glazing slash meat riding. Now glazing and meat riding means someone who is overly obsessed with someone, typically a celebrity. And it's just been ran through like crazy. Like before it was being used a lot in the music community, primarily in the hip hop community to adjust dudes or girls who would just hop on the meat of a rapper and go boing boing boing. Like just to name a few fan bases with the biggest meat riders, we got NBA Youngboy, Juice World, Playboy Cardi slash Opium, Yeet, Slay World, Drain Gang, and the list goes on and on. And I won't lie, I listen to a majority of these rappers, so does that make me the ultimate meat rider? <laughs> you got me. <laughs> okay, bro, come on, just let it slide. Now, meat riding slash glazing has been overused to the point where you can't even say you like anything anymore without being called a meat rider or glazer. Yo, bro, the Popeye's chicken sandwich is the best, man. You gotta try it. Mm -mm -mm. Nah, bro, saying mm -mm -mm is crazy. You're glazing Popeye's hard. Matter of fact, you're all up on Al Copeland's meat, dog. Bro, I just like the food, man. I can't even like food these days. Yo, bro, what song are you listening to? Oh, I'm just listening to a song made by my grandmother, man. I love her so much. Bro, the meat riding is crazy, yo. Dude, she passed away, bro. Oh, shit. Yeah. She passed away and you're still on that withered, dusty, crusty meat. Meat riding gets a B tier. Now we got ratio. Now, ratio is typically used on this app called Twitter. I mean, x.com. Yeah, Elon, nobody's calling it x, bro. But it's used when somebody makes a tweet and a reply to the original tweet gains more likes, therefore making it a ratio. And you'll see many counts of people trying to ratio each other all across the many threads on the Twitter platform. And sometimes you'll see people try to ratio someone, but they just completely fail and their tweet gets no engagement at all. Like, like, failing a ratio to a Twitter user is equivalent to losing all your limbs, your job, all your money, your house, and being kicked off into the streets. Like, at that point, you gotta just delete your account and make a new one, because the people in the replies will hold that against you forever. I'm joking, obviously, but I swear that's how some Twitter users be acting. Like, instead of trying to ratio people on the internet over some stupid argument with your Cheeto dust covered keyboard, how about you step outside your house and touch some grass? Wait, hold on, why does this kind of sound like me? Anyways, uh, F tier. Next week, got Riz. Now Riz is short for charisma and it basically means if you got game with pulling women or dudes. And I actually like this term when it's used correctly because a lot of people just be throwing this word around. Like you could be walking down the hallway with one of your friends who happens to be a girl and someone you know could see you two walking and they'd pull up on you guys and say, oh my god, Floney got that Riz, holy shit. Dude, we're just friends. What are you talking about? Nah, I see you bro. You got that unspoken Riz. Like bro, just because you walk with someone of the opposite gender doesn't mean you're trying to pursue them. Like, if you're doing this kind of stuff in real life, that's crazy. Like, I can't understand if you'd say this later to your friend as a joke after they separated ways, but like, bro, these dudes just be doing too much. And also, there's like a bunch of different variants of Riz, like the Rizard of Oz, the Rizzly Bear, the Rizzler. He got that degree in quantum Rizics. Like, I could go on, but I'd like to keep some of my brain cells. I'ma put Riz in the B tier. Next, we got NPC. Now, NPC stands for non player character and the term comes from video games. An example could be Pokemon where you have to interact with NPCs to be able to progress through the game. And they just be saying some NPC shit like, hello trainer, the skies are blue and the sun is shining today or something like that. But man, this word alongside every other word in this video has just been ran through. Like NPCs for the streets bro at this point. Like at first it was funny to call people NPCs that actually deserve to be called one. Like the mindless Tate meat riders that just spam W Tate in every comment section and the people people who tune into the just chatting portion on Twitch. But this term has just been thrown around mindlessly as well. And I just see a bunch of people calling each other NPCs online and in real life a lot, knowing damn well the people who call each other NPCs are living the exact same day, doing the exact same thing every day. Like bro, you're an NPC too! Like shit, even I'm an NPC, we all are bro. NPC is getting a C tier. Next up we got simp or munch. Now these two words are used to describe someone who's just down atrocious for somebody who doesn't even like the them back. Like, you could have Sheldon over here throwing away his money for an e-girl through Twitch donations just for her to say his name on stream for three seconds. Thank you, Super Sheldon, for the two-year resubscribe. Oh my god, Super Sheldon with the $500 donation as well. Thank you. Oh my god, she said my name on stream. Oh my god, she recognized me. This is one step closer. Like, bro, I swear this is how these people think. Like, they just think if they donate a lot of money to one of these streamers, they'll get compensated by becoming their boyfriend or something. Simp is going in the F tier. 
Next, we got W and L. Now, this word is just used to describe like a win or loss. Like you could score an A plus on your exam that you didn't study for and that'd be considered a W. Or you could get rejected by a girl and that'd be an L. But a lot of people like to put these letters in front of words to show that they are W or L. Like, let me give you an example. Like if somebody really likes Drake, they transform the word to Warake and the opposite, Warake. Yeah, that just sounded stupid as hell, and I think this is stupid, so C tier. Next, we got Drip. Now, Drip is used to describe an individual who's just got that shit on, man. Like, they got their fashion sense on lock. Like, you could give this guy a I pause my game to be here shirt, some cargo shorts, with some Lightning McQueen Crocs, and they'd somehow turn that fit into the drippiest outfit you've ever seen. Like, you'll see bro on the runway from Louis Vuitton. Like, these dudes be creating the fashion trends. Drip is getting an A tier. Next, we got Clap Back. Now, Clap Back is typically used during an argument. Now, let's say you and the school bully are in a roast session and he's just flaming the ever-living hell out of you. Now, listen, you're not gonna just sit there and take all that disrespect, you know? So you gotta clap back and roast his ass back. Man, I'm tired of hearing your stanky, hot breath looking ass, Clash of Clans, giant fee fi fo fum looking ass, shake the entire school with one step looking ass. How about you lay off the McDonald's and go lay on the treadmill in your attic? Cause I know that thing has not seen the light of day in years, bro. Clap back, it's an A tier. Next, we got it is what it is. Now this saying, I absolutely love it, bro. Like it's typically used when something goes wrong and you can't change the outcome of it. Like you could absolutely fail all your classes in school, but all you gotta do is utter the saying, man, it is what it is. And all of a sudden you're feeling a hundred times better and that test doesn't even bother you anymore. Like that's the thing with it is what it is. It's just so versatile and has so many real life applications. Like damn, screw math, science, English, and all other subjects. Like they should be teaching it is what it is in schools. Oh, Oh, you just lost your job and that was your only source of income? It is what it is. Oh, your wife wants to file for divorce because you lost your job and you became an absolute slob? It is what it is. Oh, so now you're severely depressed and you start to spend your entire life savings at the casino hoping that you'll get that big win? I'ma get it. I'ma get it. The big win is so due. The comeback is imminent. Man, it is what it is. Oh, so now you're broke with no money, no maidens, no house, no job, no family, and you're living on the streets? Okay, yo, maybe now it's time to do some self reflection reflecting and point out what mistakes you made that led up to the situation that you're at right now. Stop! Just kidding, it is what it fucking is! Like, this saying is an in real life cheat code that you should be using if you want to be all nonchalant. It is what it is gets an S tier. Next, we got CEO. Now, this word is used when someone is just exceptionally good at doing something. Like, your friend could be really good at cooking and you could say, Damn, bro, whatever you're whipping up in the kitchen, it smells so good, bro. You're definitely the CEO of cooking. And you could basically say this about any activity, no matter how stupid it is. Whether it be homework, sports, video games. Hell, you could even be the CEO of getting no bitch. CEO gets an A tier. And finally, we got A. Is it pink? Bubblegum pink? Hex code FF94A4? Oh, hell nah. Yeah, bro. I don't even want to continue the tier list anymore. We're done here. Well, once again, what have we learned today? Yeah, I don't expect anyone to gain a single crumb of knowledge from this video. Stupid things I believed as a kid, part two. Kids are dumb. Like, to the kids watching this, you're dumb. You know, I just had to say it, including myself when I was a kid, and even now, to be honest. You'll understand and agree with the statement as you grow up. Like, kids just believe basically anything you tell them, which is why I'm making the sequel for the stupid things I believed in as a kid. All right, the first thing we'll talk about is the invention of color. Now, almost every kid had to believe that color was invented. Like, there's no way you didn't. Now, ten Technically, you can't say color was invented because, according to history, Sir Isaac Newton invented the color wheel in 1660 during the Renaissance period of inventions. But no, I used to believe everybody in like the 1900s lived in a world without color. Like shit was just always black and white. And this was definitely because I used to watch like the old Mickey Mouse and Popeye cartoons on TV. And whenever I was shown footage of people in the 1900s or a photograph, it was always in black and white. So I just put two and two together and boom, color must have not existed back then and they must have invented it or discovered it. Here's how I think color was invented.
I swear to god, this was how color was exactly invented, bro. Next, we have surviving an airplane crash. Okay, so when I was a kid, I believed that I could survive an airplane crash. Yeah, a damn airplane crash. And you want to know the method? So when the plane is crashing, what you're going to do is stand near the door of the plane, and as it nears the ground, you're going to jump out at the last second, and boom, you just survived an airplane crash. Now, obviously, this isn't how it works at all, and you'd be carrying the momentum of the plane with you as you jump out. So in theory, you would need to jump the opposite direction that the plane is moving at the same speed that the plane is traveling to cancel the impact, which is not possible. It's like some physics shit like that or something, I don't know, but end of story, you're not surviving, little bro. Now let's talk about surviving from heights. Now, okay, this was because I watched way too much Minecraft videos when I was younger, but I believe that I could survive falling from a big ass height as long as there was a one by one water source that I could land in. Like, I just thought, oh, it works in Minecraft, so it must apply to real life too. Nope, here's what it's gonna really look like. Next, let's talk about dinosaurs. Now, we all believed in dinosaurs when we were younger. Don't lie. And I believed in them because of Dino Dan. Dino Dan. <laughs> And you know, they did exist millions of years ago, that is. You know, we have their fossils and skeletons preserved in museums and shit, but I don't even know how I came to think of this, but I thought dinosaurs were gonna be a thing in the future. Uh -oh, what? Retard alert. <laughs> okay, okay, hear me out, hear me out. I used to watch this show called Dinosaur Train, and in the show, they had this like time traveling train that could go back in time to specific eras in the age of dinosaurs, like the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods. And I guess that led to me thinking dinosaurs would exist again in the future. I don't know, I was an interesting kid. Next, let's talk about the world ending in 2012. Now, way back in 2009, there was this upcoming movie called 2012, which was basically some sci-fi movie of the world ending, and I remember seeing an ad of it on TV and seeing meteors hitting Earth, earthquakes, buildings collapsing, tsunamis. Like, the whole world was just going to shit in the trailer. And five-year-old me took it literally, and I genuinely thought the world was gonna end in 2012. Like, I thought the second the year 2012 came, this shit would instantly start. And I remember telling my friends and even my teacher that the world was gonna end in 2012, and my friends believed it. And I remember telling my teacher, and my teacher just laughed at me and told me that it wasn't. I just remember me stressing like I was thinking about all the things I needed to do before 2012 hits. And I remember the night before the New Year's of 2012, I was just waiting for something to happen right when the clock struck 12. And when it did, Bruh. nothing happened. And I was like, oh. We good, we straight. Next, let's talk about owning a candy store. Now, when I was younger, I was obsessed with candy and chocolate. Like every Halloween, I'd be on that trick-or-treating grind and snacking on all the free candy that I got. And I thought to myself, hmm, if I want more candy, I should own a candy store. Cause I've walked by like corner stores or candy shops and saw all the candy and shit they had, which made me want to own a candy store just to have all the candy to myself. So I made it one of my life goals to own a candy store when I grow up just so I could eat all the candy that I want. And you know, I was young so i obviously didn't take into account that candy stores bought all the candy from wholesalers with their own money and that their primary goal was to sell candy not eat at all so yeah maybe i'll still make the dream come true one day next let's talk about teachers now i bet a lot of you guys believe that teachers lived at schools like it just made sense in our child brains like i only see you at school and nowhere else so it must mean that you live in the school like as a kid this just made total sense like i really thought teachers had like a whole home set up in the schools like they slept in sleeping bags in the classroom they got the school bathrooms you know and the kitchen well at least at my school we had a kitchen and the day i found out i was baffled mind blown like that information had me like like you're telling me you own your own house and live your own separate life away from being a teacher at school? That was a wild discovery for me. Next, let's talk about the moon. Now, I don't even know or even remember how I came to believe this, but I believe that the moon was made out of cheese. Like I probably saw something mentioning this on a cartoon I watched on TV, or because the moon has those craters on it that makes it look like the goofy ass generic sliced cheese that has the holes in it. I don't know, but I always dreamed on going to the moon and getting a taste of some moon cheese. I also used to think the moon would follow me when I walked home at night. Like no matter where I went or how fast I ran, the moon would still follow me. And obviously it's because the moon is just super far away to where it doesn't seem to move at all when you move. Compared to objects like trees that are super close and you can visually see that they move. The moon's a stalker. Next, let's talk about Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary was this challenge where you go into the bathroom and say Bloody Mary three times into the mirror and apparently a ghost would appear. And I used to do this with my friends in school and that shit had us shaking in our boots and sprinting out of the 
bathroom screaming. And that shit just made me scared of being in bathrooms, bro. Like, whenever I'd go into a bathroom, even my own at home, I'd have my eyes locked on the mirror just in case I'd see another face or a ghost would come out of the mirror. And I'd be speedrunning, brushing my teeth, and showering because I just did not trust bathrooms one bit. Next, let's talk about food. Now, I used to think that if I ate a watermelon seed or any kind of seed from a fruit or vegetable, that it would grow a plant inside of my stomach. And I'd be scared that the plant would grow big enough to grow outside of my mouth. I also thought that eating carrots would make my vision better and thought that eating fish would help you swim better. Because my mom at the dinner table told me this stuff. Like, I genuinely thought that if I ate a bunch of carrots, I would have like 20-20 vision or I could see like different wavelengths that regular humans couldn't see. And I thought that if I ate a lot of fish, I'd become like Michael Phelps and be smoking everyone at the local pool. And I know my mom was just trying to make me eat my vegetables and shit, which is good because I'm not a picky eater. I also used to think that swallowing gum would stay in my stomach for 7 years, which was ridiculous because it doesn't even make sense. Because sure the synthetic parts of gum doesn't break down the same as other foods, but it sure doesn't stay in our stomachs. You'll shit it out eventually. Next, let's talk about careers. Now growing up, teachers told us that we could be whatever we want when we grew up. So my dumbass wanted to be a pirate. <laughs> You know, watching Pirates of the Caribbean and Spongebob growing up just inspired me, you know? Now, if you've watched Salmonella's video on the daily life of a pirate, you'd know that it wasn't the best career choice. Like, these dudes were riddled with scurvy, diseases, and all other disgusting conditions out at sea. And looking back now, I'm happy I didn't pursue a career as a pirate. Because how would you even go on to become one? Like, would I just go to some employment service and be like, Yes, hello ma'am, I'm looking to become a pirate. A what now? A pirate. Get out of my office. Yo, my bad. Next, let's talk about being the chosen one. So hear me out. You ever just been outside and realize that you see like floating dots in your vision just moving around and then you think to yourself, holy shit, are those like atoms or particles? Am I like special? Am I like the chosen one? And then you make up this whole story in your head where government agents break into your house and take you away to some lab to run tests on you. And then you become like a superhero or someone of importance working for your country or something like that. Just me? SHUT THE FUCK UP! Drunk at the prom party. Prom, the last high school dance party that marks the end of your high school chapter of your life. Prom is always about having a fantastic time with your friends, you know? It's about the celebration of your academic achievements or atrocities. But either way, you already know there's always gonna be an after party following up the end of prom. And they're always turned. And that's where all the devious activities occur. So today, I'm gonna share my prom experience and how I got absolutely wasted at my prom after party. Alright, so it was the evening of prom and we were at the crib of the boys and we were all fitted up looking absolutely dapper than a bitch. And you might be wondering, oh, did you have a date for prom? No. So we hurried outside to take some flicks with the limo we were going to prom with, and we were looking pretty fly posted next to the limousine, you know? So after the flicks, we hopped in the limo and indulged in some nice ice cold refreshing Minute Maid juice boxes while blasting some heat on the way to the venue. And we made it to the venue and before we got out of the car, you know, we took a little bit of some eddies to pregame just a teensy bit, you know? And we headed out of the car. I swear it felt like a cinematic movie hopping out of the limo in front of our whole grade pop. Population. I felt like I was in Men in Black, bro. I was feeling myself that day. But hey, we get to the venue and get served some food. And just a side note, we had to pay $100 to be able to go to prom. And they had the audacity to serve us some mid. Like, bro, they served us like salad and chicken. And they were rationing the portions like we were refugees. And the chicken tasted like some dry ass cardboard. Like, I paid $100 for this. At least give us some decent food. Like, I expected some like damn gourmet dish cooked by Gordon Ramsay. Not some school lunch level food. But anyway, Anyways, you know, I still demolished the food because hell, I paid a hundred bucks. I'm getting my money's worth. Now, after our food, we went to the dance floor and started dancing to the music. And you know, they were playing some pop songs and shit. And in my head, I was like, damn, the DJ playing some mid. But a few songs later, the DJ plays the next song. And bro, the second that first part of the beat played, all the boys on the dance floor already knew it was demon time. And everyone was getting lit in the mosh pit to X like it was rolling loud, but exquisite because everyone was in suits and dresses. Like shit was like a movie. Not even exaggerating, but we danced to some more bangers and bro, by the end of it, I was looking like a fish fresh out of water. I was sweaty as fuck. It probably smelled crazy at the dance floor, not gonna lie. But I then went to take some prom flicks with my friends and a few pictures later, prom was over.
but the night had just begun and the after party too. So we hopped back into the limo and drove like an hour out to our hotel first that we booked to check in and put all our shit in. And we also changed clothes. And then we hopped back into the limo and headed straight to the after party and alas, we arrived there and there was a bunch of people there already. And before we left the car, I gave my friend my eddies and said, Ayo bro, go crazy with them if you want. And we headed inside and before we could actually drink, we needed to sign in with a bouncer and he just had a list with everyone in our grade. You know it's serious when they got a bouncer for a party so we proceeded to head downstairs where the drinks were and bro never in my life have i seen this many cans of beers like the entire table and every cupboard was stacked with cans it was an alcoholics paradise and i take one and i proceed to drink it and i head upstairs and i see one of my friends and he's got a bottle of vodka so we start taking gulps from the bottle and mind you i don't drink often at all this was like my second time drinking and we were just going at it with the gulps pause and after that i started feeling a little drunk and we chill on this couch Couch, just talking for around 30 minutes until we were told by the bouncer that we all need to head downstairs so everyone went downstairs because apparently the cops were outside for a noise complaint which is why we need to go downstairs so the people hosting the party could talk to them so i'm just chilling on the staircase with two of my friends and i take more gulps from the bottle because i was trying to go all out man but suddenly we hear a huge shattering sound coming from upstairs and everyone was like what the hell was that but apparently someone got pushed into some glass table and it just shattered and that table was not cheap at all it was like five K, so rip the table and i know whoever owned the house was in tears after that but we then head on over to the couches downstairs and i see some random bottle of fireball on the table and bro i just took it and started sipping that bottle at the level of drunkness i was i just didn't even care that it wasn't even mine and we probably chilled there for like 20 minutes and bro this is where my memory begins to get blurry all i remember is i lost my friends and i was just wandering around the basement like an npc bro and apparently the basement was disgusting bro there was like a lot of puke all around the floors but i was was too drunk to even notice any of it but i head on back upstairs and this random dude asked me yo bro you want some tequila and i'm just slurring my words like yeah bro of course i want some so he whips out the bottle and i drink some more so at this point i'm incredibly drunk like everything in my vision is spinning and i could barely even walk nor stand so i waddle my way back to the couch like a penguin and i just straight up knock bro like i am completely out cold no reboot card is saving me not even god is waking me up at this point and while I was out cold, the most devious and unholy activities were transpiring. Bro, a bunch of people were doing the dirty. There was this closet where a lot of people stored their belongings in and someone puked all over that shit. Some dudes were doing fucking Coca-Cola without the cola. Like shit was going down, man. But the most out of pocket thing that happened was this guy who was taking only vodka and tequila shots without drinking any water. And bro got so hammered to the point where he started smearing his shit all over the walls in the bathroom. Wait, no wait, what? Like bro, I'm not even joking. This actually happened deadass and people were treating the dookie bathroom like a tourist attraction like yo bro yo what's up you want to see this dude shit smeared all over the wall yo what the hell hell yeah let's go damn there's actual shit on the walls what the hell like that's how you know this party was lit if your party doesn't have a dude smearing his fecal matter on the walls it ain't lit Nah, I'm just kidding. That's an actual health hazard and is nasty as fuck. Like, I don't know how I would feel if I hosted a party and one of the party goers took a shit and smeared it on my walls. Like, personally, I'm throwing hands, man. Like, I'm getting it back in blood. But anyways, back to me. I'm still slumped on the couch and it's probably been like over an hour and I guess the heavens sent me a blessing. My friend. Bro came over and rezzed me and woke me up because it was time for us to leave. But my dumbass was saying, No, I don't want to go. Because I just wanted to sleep, bro. But but he dragged me out with my other friends and we begin to leave the party and we left at the perfect time because a few minutes later the cops showed up again and the ambulance had to come because some kid got alcohol poisoning so now we're in bumfuck nowhere and we begin walking back to our hotel and bro at this point i cannot walk so i had to lean on to one of my friends but bro i just started teleporting man like we were on the road with some trees then i'm lying down on the cold hard ground next to a gas station and then i'm in the elevator then i'm in bed like i just fast forwarded in time alcohol gives you teleportation power hours or something and bro that must have been the best sleep i've ever gotten in my life because i knocked out in seconds like it had to be a world record time so the next day arrives and i'm surprisingly feeling great like i didn't feel any hangover side effects at all and i felt like i could run it back like it was one of the first times in a while i actually felt good waking up but one of our friends the guy who i gave my eddies to bro was a zombie man like bro wouldn't wake up even if we nudged him this time he was out cold like he looked like he was ready to be placed in his coffin and lowered into 
his grave, man. Or it looked like he was hooked up to life support. But eventually, after a little while, he woke up and we go to eat our breakfast at the hotel patio with this beautiful view. And then we checked out and we began our journey back home. And we stopped by some lake to just chill and relax and enjoy the view. Like deadass, the entire morning felt like some new beginnings ah moment. Like when Ash released his Butterfree to the wild. Like it was a nice vibe. Then we walk home towards the train station and take the train an hour and a half back home. And when I got home, I just chilled for the remainder of the day. This was the most peaceful morning I've ever had, bro, hands down. Gen Z Nostalgia Part 2. Now, I know some of you guys have been waiting for this, and I had lots of fun making the first part and reminiscing on my childhood myself, so here's the sequel. Okay, first thing on the list are 3D glasses. Now, I don't know if this was just exclusive to my school, but at some point in time, kids started bringing their 3D glasses to school and wearing them throughout the day to show off to other kids. And to be honest with you, my six-year-old self thought they looked so damn cool, man. So I joined the hype and started bringing my own pair to school too, thinking I was the next fashion icon of some sorts. Lil bro really thought he was Virgil. Like, I swear I had drip of those 3D glasses, man. They were like the beta test for the clout goggles. Next, let's talk about going to the grocery store with your mom. So most people have been to the grocery store with their mom, and you know, your mom would actually be shopping and looking around for items, while your 5-year-old self is busy exploring and wandering off around the store. And after a few minutes of wandering around, you would lose sight of your mom and you would start to panic and look around in every single aisle. And you wouldn't see her at all, and then you would begin to get scared. This happened to me before and I was literally on the verge of tears trying to find where my mom went. I damn near thought my life was about to be over. <laughs> But eventually after being traumatized for a good 5 minutes, you'd find her and be relieved and happy nothing bad happened. Some of these parents would do this on purpose and as someone who's personally went through this, it wasn't funny. Then you got the time where you'd be in the cashier line and your mom would want to get another item, so she would leave the line to go find it and the cashier would scan all your items super fast and be like, okay so how would you like to pay? Oh no 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 I don't have any money, my mom will be back I swear. Hey, yeah. Cut the shit off, bro. I gotta cut the shit the fuck off. <laughs> Like, this had me stressing, man, because how was I going to cough up all that money to pay for all that? But eventually she would come back and it would be a huge relief. These adults just like messing around with kids. The next thing we'll talk about is music. Now, I can guarantee you that we all go back to listen to music that was popping back in like the 2000s or 2010s. And dude, they just had so many banger songs back in the day on the radio. Like, there are way too many to list. We have Call Me Maybe, Fireflies, Hey There Delilah, The Cup Song, Rude safe and sound counting stars baby what makes you beautiful like there's too many songs to list in one video like i'm sorry if i didn't name your favorite song but yeah music in this era definitely hit different and the radio was actually playing good songs rather than complete garbo songs like astronaut in the ocean like who's listening to astronaut in the ocean bro <laughs> I also listened to some older music back in the day too, like songs from ABBA, The Beatles, Louis Armstrong, Whitney Houston, Bob Marley, and Bill Withers. And this was because my music class teacher, he would play these older songs on his piano, and as a class, we'd sing those songs. And they were straight bangers too. Nowadays, I find myself listening to these songs, and it just reminds me of the days in the past, and brings a lot of good memories that I've experienced. The next thing we'll talk about is school shenanigans. Now, at school, everyone used to grab a bunch of of markers with their friends and see you can make the longest marker lightsaber and then you'd have battles with your friends with them and we used to act like we were injecting substances into ourselves with the mechanical lead pencils, thinking we were cool and funny. We'd make bootleg Beyblades, we'd poke holes in our erasers for no reason, sharpen our pencils on both sides, create the world's smallest pencil and use it create a magic eraser that had yes and no written on each side, and you'd ask it questions and throw it up in the air like a magic eight ball. Magic eraser, am I ever gonna get a girlfriend? Bruh. Am I ever gonna get married? <laughs> Damn, is that how it really is? Hmm, will I get men? <laughs> Hey, yo! You'd go crazy on the city mats with the toy cars. I don't know if you guys had this in your kindergarten class, but we had a sandbox and I'd go crazy making sand sculptures and sand castles. We'd paint some next level Picasso level paintings.
Then let them dry overnight on the art rack. Then you got the challenges. We did the Charwi Charwi challenge, which was basically you'd have a paper with yes or no written on it and two pencils and you'd balance the pencils to try to talk to a ghost. And then you'd ask questions and apparently the pencil would move by itself. You'd be like, Charwi Charwi, are you here? And the pencil would apparently move by itself. But we all knew that kid that would just blow on the pencil. Like the fakest challenge ever, man. Then you had the bottle flips. Like every kid was doing this at some point. Then you have the bloody mary challenge now this challenge was scary as hell it was basically you'd go inside a bathroom and close the lights and say to the mirror three times bloody mary bloody mary bloody mary and apparently a ghost would come out of the mirror and bro i remember doing this with my friends a few times back in elementary and we had an entire ritual planned we'd close the lights then flush every single toilet in the bathroom and then we'd walk up to the mirror and start chanting bloody mary bloody mary bloody mary and bro once we finished saying the chant we'd instantly book it out the door and dip out of there because it was too scary one time we did this and i walked my friend in the room and he was screaming while i was laughing on the other side yeah i'm an absolute savage for that the next thing we'll discuss is a whooping now i bet some of you guys can relate so you've just done something stupid like break a vase in the house and your mom finds out and then you proceed to get your ass whooped for the next few minutes for what you did yeah my punishment wasn't no daycare baby nap time like getting a timeout grounded or getting the playstation taken away i was getting it handed to me bro and then after you head up to your room crying and think about your entire plan to run away and you'd pull one of these But you wouldn't actually run away and you just head to your bed while sobbing away and your mom would come to your room 30 minutes later to say dinner's ready and your ass would be at dinner bawling your eyes out while trying to eat by the way i haven't experienced this i'm just uh reciting what a friend told me yeah anyways not really something to be nostalgic about but to me it's funny thinking back on it the next thing we'll talk about is scholastics and book fairs now every time we got our scholastics from our teachers i'd look through that thing in depth like browsing through all the books was just really fun but i never actually bought something from it then came the book fairs man now the book fairs were goaded not for the books well except for these ones but not even for the book itself for the lego minifigures anyways the book fairs sold these cool school supplies and gadgets like these mini finger lights the uv the invisible ink pen, phone erasers, the giant erasers and pencils, the pen with every single color, and many more cool things. Now my favorite things was definitely the UV pen and the phone erasers, because I would just start drawing all over my desk with stupid messages, and shine the light on it to read it. And for the phone erasers, I'd just pretend I had an actual phone, and my friends and I would pretend to call each other on the phones and we'd play fake games on it. Every kid did that, right? right? The next thing we'll discuss is things we all just did for some reason. You made pillow forts. When you were in the car and it was raining, you were subconsciously betting on which raindrop was going to win the race. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, let's go. When you'd head downstairs to the basement to get something and you'd be at the light like, okay, three, two, one, and then book it upstairs on all fours before the ghosts and monsters got to you. When you'd watch a YouTube vid and it started buffering and you acted like you didn't care for it to load faster. Aw, oh, what the hell? Huh, I don't care, you can load whenever you want to. Oh, let's go. Bro, you played with bugs. When you were bored, you talked in front of the fan and started rapping a Travis Scott verse. You played with the door stopper. You ate your broccoli like you were a dinosaur. You avoided sidewalk cracks. You made up your own language with your friends. And when you were at the park and the ice cream truck pulled up and you went to get the SpongeBob popsicle and it looked like this. <laughs> Bro, I want a refund. Next, let's talk about holidays. Now, the holidays just hit so different when I was younger. The main ones I'm talking about being Halloween and Christmas. And dude, going to school during one of these holidays was the best. You'd show up to school and your entire classroom would be decorated in Halloween decorations, or during December, Christmas decorations, all in the holiday spirit. And I don't know, man, it just hit different. And on Halloween, everyone would show up in their costumes for the day. I had a Spider-Man costume. And the teachers would give us candy and for Christmas the teachers would make us hot chocolate and we bake gingerbread men. And after that we go and watch a Christmas movie. Nowadays these holidays just don't hit nearly the same anymore and it's just kind of sad. Now the last thing we'll discuss is dangers or threats. Now as a kid I thought lava, quicksand, piranhas, asteroids, and being lit on fire would play a more significant role in my life. I don't know if I just played too many video games or it was because of the way teachers taught us about these things but I just thought these 
these things would be like a common obstacle I would have to get through throughout my life. Like I would have to avoid lava, quicksand, and piranhas on my way to school. Or I'd have to worry about asteroids hitting earth. And I thought I would have to use the stop, drop, and roll method way more often. And to this day I have used it a total of zero times. Hopefully I won't ever have to use it. Oh!